Hello everyone, welcome to What If Luffy Got Lost in My Hero Academia World Part 2. Before we start please go support Andriuha for writing that awesome fanfic, now let's begin. Chapter 4. Meeting Class 1A, Quirk Test and Battle. Congratulations, kids I did not doubt in my mind that you could do it said Momo's father while at dinner. It has been a couple of weeks since they received the acceptance letter to UA, and starting tomorrow, they will officially be UA high school students. Her parents and the majority of the staff were overjoyed at the news. Most of the maids and butlers who watched her grow up were the ones the happiest. I'm so proud of you, sugar. Now, don't go thinking that you're scot-free, being in an elite school just means having to work harder, and I expect your grades only to improve. Said Mrs. Yeoi Rozu to her daughter. She is one of the reasons Momo studies so much. In her mind, her daughter should repay them for the rich life she has led, and she found that one way Momo could pay her back was by doing the best she could in school. She was lucky to have such a nerd as a daughter. Of course, mother, I don't plan to stop my study soon. Momo was also overjoyed, after getting over her initial shock, she began skipping in her step. She learned that she shouldn't have any emotion in public besides politeness. She still couldn't help herself but be happy. The sucks. The only one who wasn't happy at the moment was a depressed Luffy, for the simple fact that he didn't get the party that he thinks he so righteously deserves. Come on just one cake and some music, that's all I'm asking. Please, we are not having a party the day before your first day of school. Said Mr. Yaoi Rozu with an annoyed expression. And I told you countless times that this discussion is over he said again, only for the threat to fall on deaf ears. I'll never emotionally recover from this. Said Luffy as if his whole family died. What was just one party? It's not like anybody is going to die from it. Okay, this is my last deal, I can't go any further below this. Said Luffy for the fifth time that day. I already told you the discussion was over. Now just let me eat in peace. Said Mr. Yaoi Rozu as he was eating as much rice as possible, before the rubber man could come to his senses and begin his eating spree again. Just one cake with music and I go to sleep at 11pm. I mean, come on, it doesn't get any better than that. Said Luffy like he was bargaining for a reduced price on a used car. Luffy learned what a sleeping pattern was, and oh boy was that a tough learning experience. Him being used to sleeping whenever he felt like it. Now having to sleep at a specific time. It was torture for him. For the final time, no he said, hoping this would shut Luffy up, even though he knew it wouldn't. Come on, father, I think you are being a little too mean to Luffy. He just wants to celebrate this achievement. Said Momo in an attempt to defend Luffy. In these last two weeks, she found out that she grew considerably close to Luffy, this being from all the time spent together or the incident at the mall, she couldn't tell you. It was like Luffy had his orbiting field, making people like him. Having tried to oppose it at first, she now found out that she enjoyed Luffy's dumb, happy-go-lucky personality. Since when have you and Luffy been such good friends? I thought you hated his guts. Said the father with a raised eyebrow. Him being so busy running a huge company made him stop by his mansion at a rare event, often having to eat cup noodles in his office, wishing he could be home. I never said that we've always been good friends. Said Momo while remembering her first thoughts and words about Luffy, being mostly hateful. If you say so. He said while returning his gaze to his plate, quickly looking at a depressed Luffy. In his opinion, Luffy was overdramatic. Anyway, it's starting to get late, and you both have a big day tomorrow. Why don't you kids go to sleep? Said the mother, not wanting Momo's first day to be ruined because of Luffy's childlike personality. As you say, mother. Momo said as she finished her plate of rice and stood up. No. Said a pouting Luffy. What do you mean no? Said the father wondering what antic is he going to show now. I mean no, you should have taken my offer and now I won't go to sleep. That's right, I'm going on stride said Luffy, while plopping down on his chair, cross-legged, with his eyes closed. Do you mean strike? That's what I said. Said Luffy while still looking away with his eyes closed. Damn it, Luffy. It's too late for this. Said Mr. Yaoi Rozu while pinching the nose of his bridge. Wait, I know how to handle this. Said the mother while approaching Luffy's chair. Having read some books on how to deal with problem children, now has some idea of how to deal with situations like this. Luffy, look, I know you are proud of what you achieved, we are proud too. But you have to understand that we have very important jobs to do, and you and Momo also have very big days ahead. So what do you say? Let's go to bed so that in the morning we will be all full of energy. Said Mrs. Yeoi Rozu to Luffy with a kind voice, like she was trying to make a toddler why going to sleep is important. No. Said Luffy not budging an inch. Well, I tried. Do what you want with him. Said Momo's mom looking like she was at her wit's end with Luffy as she was going out of the dining room. Come on Luffy, let's go to sleep. I'll promise I'll give you meat in the morning. Said Momo after sighing also trying to persuade Luffy. Oh, okay said Luffy while getting off the chair. Wait no. Said Luffy as if he just found out his new conviction. 
Right now he was using all his willpower not to take Momo's offer. Wow, I was sure that was going to work. Said an impressed Momo while her father was massaging his temples. Bluffy look. How about this, when I have more free time in the future, we will celebrate. Okay how does that sound? He said while mentally cursing himself at the fact that Luffy's childish taunts worked on him. I'll take it said Luffy happy that now, sometime in the near future, he will have a big party. Okay I'm going to eat. What? No now you're going to bed. That was the deal said the frustrated CEO, while his daughter was giggling behind her hand. Eh? But I didn't eat anything. Said Luffy lying, even though he ate way less than any other time. He still ate half the whole meal. That's a blatant lie he said very close to snapping. You ate more than half the food. There was barely any food in the first place said Luffy also getting angry at not being able to eat. Meanwhile, Momo was snickering behind her hand this whole time. Okay, okay, how about this? In the morning you will eat twice as more than usual. To make up for not eating as much today. What do you say? Said Momo trying to stop a brawl between her father and her friend. That sounds agreeable. Said Luffy with his hand on his chin and thought, pretending to know what the word agreeable meant. Don't pretend to know what it means said a still angry Mr. Yaoi Rozu. Luffy in turn just decided to stick his tongue out and pull on his lower eyelid. And then he proceeded to quickly run to his bed. I swear, I'm going to pop a vein with that kid. Said the CEO trying to deal with his incoming headache. This is what I get for wanting a livelier house. I'm sorry about Luffy, that's just his charm at work. Said Momo before getting ready to go to sleep as well. I wish you good night father, good night sweetie. He said with a wave. The next morning at UA. Okay so, so where is our class? Said Luffy who was following after Momo. He was wearing the UA uniform, backpack and all. But his tie was messily done. Still wearing the straw hat. It should be right here. She said as they came upon a door big enough for Katakuri. Why is this door so big? Luffy proceeded to ignore her question as he opened the door to a class with about 20 desks that were all facing the chalkboard. Inside the class there were some students, but going by the number of benches, they weren't all there yet. The students consisted of a pair of floating clothes, a big guy with six arms and white hair, a small guy with balls for hair, a guy named Denki Kaminari, who Luffy had the pleasure of knowing, a pink-skinned girl, etc. The one who were missing were the kid with the glasses, the green-haired one, the spiky blonde one and the gravity girl. From now on I will refer to them by their names. I took out the guy who gets strong on sugar, cause let's be honest, nobody cares about him. Unless he does something crazy in the manga, but I didn't read it yet so it. Oh wow, if it isn't the future king of the pirates. Said Denki as he approached the straw hat. You're damn right. Said Luffy to the boy who just talked to him. We're pretty lucky to be in the same class, at least now I have someone to talk to. Said the electric boy as he checked out Momo was side by side with Luffy. Oh, I didn't know you knew somebody from our class already Luffy. Said Momo before turning to Denki. I'm Momo Yaoi Rozu, pleased to meet you. She said with a quick bow. Why why yeah, same said as he blushed at having such an attractive girl talk to him so casually. Yaoi Rozu. As in the super rich billionaire family. That Yaoi Rozu said the invisible as she and some other classmates gathered around the two of them. Ah, I guess my reputation precedes me. She said as she sheepishly rubbed the back of her head. She knew that her family status was going to attract some attention, but she hoped that she was going to make friends based on their personality and then hers. Wow it's like having a celebrity at our school were the majority of the chatter of the crowd around them. Wait, you're rich. Why didn't you ever tell me? Asked Luffy shocked. He knew she was rich, but he didn't know she was a billionaire. That's almost as much as my bounty. Seriously? You've been living with me all this time and you didn't know I was a billionaire? Asked Momo more so sarcastically than anything else. She really should have expected this type of question from Luffy. Do perverted boys had the same thought at the same moment right now? Lucky bastard. You know who they are. After everybody got over the shock of having a literal billionaire in the same class as them, they all went to their respective sites. Momo chose to sit in the far back near the windows. And Luffy chose to sit next to his only friend which was Momo. Okay time to eat he said out loud as he reached into his backpack and pulled out a bento box filled with different kinds of meat. Momo wasn't surprised by this, just a little disappointed that he couldn't take this as seriously as her. At that moment two new students walked in. Tenya and Bakugu took one look around the classroom and chose a seat that was to their liking. Old Bagkugo chose a random seat he thought only one thing. Where is Monkey D. Luffy? How dare he steal first place from me? How can you eat right now? At least wait until lunch break, you are entirely disrespecting the school guidelines, you cretin. Said Tenya to Luffy who was right now stuffing his face. But I'm hungry said Luffy with a whine. I haven't eaten since this morning. Luffy said with a mouthful. But it's still morning. Tenya said before deciding that he should start over with his nemesis. 
After all, out of all the people back with the robots, he and Midoriya were the only ones to stay behind. I think we should start over. My name is Tenya Ieda, I come from the Same Private Academy. Babukifajelo Luffy said with a mouthful of food, making everybody around him question what he just said. Translation. I'm Luffy, nice to meet you. Luffy we talked about this finish what you eat before speaking. Said Momo in a voice between scolding and kindness. Before anybody could say anything else the other two remaining people showed up at the entrance to the classroom. It's him. Said Tenya pretty loudly, which caused the whole class to look at him. Good morning my name is Tenya Ida. Ida said as he walked robotically in front of him. Um, H hi I'm Izuku Midoriya. It's s super nice to meet you. He said more so to the whole class than to the scary student while looking up. Oh hey it's the idiot said Luffy as he was packing his empty box in his backpack. He didn't say it with ill intentions, he said it more so as a fact. Ah Izuku made a squeaking noise at his new nickname. Great. Guess I'm the class idiot now. This caused Bakugu to let out a laugh. I must admit you and him are far superior to me. He said while pointing at Luffy. This caused Izuku to sweat a little bit, thinking it was unlikely that he was superior to Tenya. Is he serious? Thought Momo overhearing the blue-haired boy. Thinking that it was unlikely that Luffy was superior to anybody when it came to academics. Luffy meanwhile was spacing out, only coming back to reality when a new person dressed all in black with a scarf showed up. Right let's get to it. Put these on and meet me outside. He said with the most monotone voice possible. A few minutes later, outside at the quirk assessment test. If you really want to make the big leagues, you can't waste time on pointless ceremonies. Said the teacher as his back was facing the students. Here at UA we aren't tethered to traditions, that means I can run my class however as see fit. You've been taking standardized tests most of your lives. He said as he pulled out his phone showing different tests. But you've never used your quirks in physical exams before. This country is still trying to pretend we are all created equal by not letting those with the most power excel. It's not rational, one day the Ministry of Education will learn. He then turned to Luffy, while holding a ball. Monkey D. Luffy, you managed to score the most points on the entrance exam. What was your maxi he was cut off by an angry spiky-haired kid. Aha so it is you how dare you steal my number one spot on the leaderboard. Said Bagiku as he approached the straw hat. Every single student turned to him and Luffy. Steal? What are you talking about? I didn't steal anything said Luffy confused as to why this teenager suddenly confronted him. So you're saying I don't even deserve first place? said Bakugu, getting angrier and angrier by the second. Hey Kachin, I d don't think this is the best plaque Izuku was cut off by the angry boy. Shut the hell up Deku I'll deal with you later Bakugu said before turning to face his opponent. I bet you cheated somehow that's how you got first place. What? I didn't cheat Luffy was starting to get angry maybe the reason you didn't get first place is cause you're trash. I now the crowd started muttering between themselves saying things like are they gonna fight? And did he cheat or is the other guy just bad? Meanwhile, Azawa was just staring at them without a care in the world, thinking that if they managed to figure this out by themselves, it could prove as a good learning experience. Luffy, don't do it it's not worth it, trust me. Momo said to stop Luffy from getting into more trouble. Luffy being reminded of the lesson Shanks taught him, decided to drop it. What? Can't fight your own battles without your little girlfriend? Said Bakugu in an attempt to make Luffy riled up. We are not a coup said a slightly blushing and embarrassed Momo before being interrupted by Luffy. You're damn right she's my girlfriend said Luffy, causing everybody to stop their chattering and look at him in shock. The reason that Luffy decided to engage in battle is because Bakugu chose to go after his friend and nobody hurts Luffy's friends. There was a brief moment of silence before all hell broke loose. WWW what are you talking about Luffy said a very angry very red and very embarrassed rich girl before hitting Luffy on the head with all her strength knowing that she won't do any real damage. Was the mall thing a date I have never been on one before so I didn't know. Public display of affection is strictly prohibited on school grounds. Said Ida while chopping the air at a face planted Luffy and a very embarrassed Momo. There was a certain midget with balls for hair on the ground punching the dirt and yelling about it not being fair. And a certain electric boy not far behind him. Buuku Toru and Mina together, thinking that the couple looked cute together. Relationship drama. So you guys at the mall. That was actually a date. Said Mina Ishido, causing everybody to get even more riled up. I thought you guys were brother and sister. Said Asui while tilting her head. This is all moving way too fast. Thought a very distressed freckled boy. I didn't come to school for this. Said Todoroki who just wanted to get on with the quirk test. Wow the way you proclaimed your relationship was super mainly said Kirishima while doing a pose. Meanwhile, Luffy managed to pop back up and glare directly at Bakugu who in turn decided to glare back at him. Am I supposed to be impressed by your stupid lover? Said Bakugu which caused a straw hat to look at him confused. Lover? What are you talking about? Said Luffy genuinely confused. 
This caused everyone to stop what they were doing and look at him again with confusion. What? You got amnesia or something? You said you were a couple said Bakugou thinking that Luffy was mocking him. No I didn't said Luffy which just made everyone more confused. But you said that she is your girlfriend. Said Ichako equally as confused as everybody else. They all thought they missed something. Yeah I know, she is my girlfriend. Said Luffy again which made something in all their minds click. This guy is a complete idiot. You idiot girlfriend and girlfriend are two different things. Huh? Now, who's the idiot? You just said the same thing said Luffy thinking he just caught Bakugou saying something stupid. Meanwhile, Momo was desperately trying to make herself as little as possible and not wanting to draw any attention to herself. Everybody settled down said Azawa as his hair and scarf levitated and his eyes turned red. This whole fight was illogical and pointless. Luffy come here and Bakugou calm down. You'll solve your squabble after school is over. Said Azawa as Luffy approached him. Take this and use your power to throw it as far away as possible. Said Azawa in a monotone voice as he was getting his app ready on his phone. Meanwhile, All Might was peeking behind the corner to look at his protege. He didn't expect their fight to almost break out. Well this class sure is lively. Okay so, just use my rubber powers to throw this. Asked Luffy to confirm. Yeah that is what I just said, isn't it? Said Azawa while looking at Luffy. Meanwhile, everybody besides, a couple, thought one thing rubber powers. Okay then. Said Luffy as he threw one arm to the side, making it look like a wave hit that arm and back. Gear second. Wow he is pinkish now, and is that steam coming out of his body? Said Mina as she looked at him with some fascination. Hey pink buddy she yelled at Luffy who in turn just turned to her and gave her a massive grin. Gomu Gomu no he said as he pushed his arm back a ridiculous amount. Wow, that's very impressive for him to have such mastery over his quirk and at such a young age no less, but I do wonder. How much can he stretch? Is his entire body rubber-like or just his muscles, skin, and bones? Can he swing from building to building using his arms? And what was that gear second that he just did? Is it the only gear he has or does he have more? Each one being stronger than the last. Izuku started mutt which caused everybody around him to raise an eyebrow at the odd habit. His arms started stretching so further back it was almost hitting a corner, incidentally, it was also the corner All Might uses to spy on Class 1A, with mere inches away from his face, All Might managed to dodge the still expanding arm. That was way too close. Okay, this should be enough. Thought Luffy as he stopped his arm from stretching. Jet throw. And one second his pink arm was there, their other it suddenly disappeared, only for it to appear right next to Luffy. Everybody had their mouth gaping, besides All Might and Azawa, who was just staring at his phone with an impassive expression. He then proceeded to show everybody Luffy's score. 2222.54 km? Amazing how did you do that for I could have thrown it that far. A333.3 miles for my Americans out there. Dot. Is that good? Asked and now back to normal Luffy. He could have used Gear 4 with a Kong gun, but he wanted to keep that trump card a secret for now. Yay, it's good. Now go back to the class said Azawa. Luffy then proceeded to go back to his class with a smile on his face. He reminds me of All Might. Thought Izuku as he watched Luffy go back to his original spot. In his mate he made a comparison between the two of them, they both had huge smiles, and they were both strong. Even if All Might is taller than him, he just can't help but compare the two of them. Wow dude that was super mainly how did you that that second gear or whatever? Asked a now shirtless Kirishima, with basically stars in his eyes. Oh that... I use my rubberiness to force blood to go extra fast through my entire body. Said Luffy with a grin. That's pretty smart I didn't expect this from you Luffy. Said Momo to Luffy as praise, but accidentally turned it into a backhanded compliment. You know, that's not a very nice thing to say to your boyfriend. Said Mina with a smirk. She didn't want to be mean to the rich girl, but she just couldn't help but tease her. HHHH he is not my boyfriend said a now red Momo. Please God, don't let this be a thing from now on she silently prayed to every deity she could think of. So you're single? Said Mineta thinking he had a shot with the gorgeous girl. He didn't. Everybody settled down I will not be repeating myself one more time. Said Azawa already getting a headache with this new class. We will be using tests like these to figure out your potential as a pro hero. It is the most rational way of doing things. I want to try that looks like fun. We're finally able to use our quirks as much as we want. So this looks fun, huh? You have three years to become heroes. Do you think it's gonna be all games and playtime? Yes. Said Luffy not realizing the question is rhetorical. Idiots, today you will be competing in eight physical tests to gauge your potential. Whoever comes in last has none and he will be expelled immediately. Said Azawa with a small grin. By this point, Luffy started spacing out not being good with information drops. Let the games begin. Said Azawa as he was preparing for the 50 meter dash test. The first two runners were Luffy and Tenya. Each one of them gets ready in their own way. 
This means that Luffy was eating a sandwich was Iida was doing some warm-up exercises. Hey so we gotta run to that line as fast as we can. Luffy asked Tenya not paying attention to the instruction. That is correct, but we may also use our quirks. Iida reached out a hand to Luffy, which he grabbed and started to shake. Let's have a good race, sure said Luffy happily. Hey, you know, you're not such a bad guy after all. Just maybe a little uptight. D thank you very much, I will try to work on my shortcomings. He said with 90 degrees bow, before turning to the face with the finishing line. Everybody get set said a robotic voice from the camera. This caused Iida to get into a runner's position. Ready Luffy threw one arm to the side saying gear second, this caused several students to pay closer attention. Though as soon as the robot said go Iida started running at full speed. I'm 0.94 seconds Luffy suddenly materialized out of thin air right in front of the finishing line while turning back to his usual skin color. I'm 3.04 seconds Iida finished a little annoyed that he got only to gear third. Wow what was that? I thought his quirk was rubber. Congratulations, you defeated me in the one test that should have been mine to conquer Iida said, more than a little annoyed at the fact that he lost on the one test where he should have gotten first place. Ah, don't worry you still got room to grow, Luffy said giving him his D smile, weirdly enough it helped Iida feel less annoyed, both his comment and his smile. Luffy, you put in your registration form that your quirk is rubber man, can you explain what was the just now? Or do you have more than one quirk? Azawa asked a little annoyed at the fact that the kid seemed to have more than one quirk, he of all people, should know stuff like this. Nah, I only got my rubber body. And hockey I guess. Luffy said, causing Momo to perk up at the mention of hockey. Hockey, but what I used just now was a technique I stole. It's called shave. I have never heard of such a technique before. Said Azawa thoughtfully. Right now every student was paying close attention. Luffy seemed to pull techniques out of his ass. Yeah, it's pretty nifty and handy in battles. So what I do is that I make 10 steps a second. Everybody was looking at Luffy like he just grew another head. That's not possible. Said Azawa, wondering why would Luffy lie to him. But it is look I'll do it again, but it's slower in base gear. As soon as he finished saying he suddenly appear right next to Mina which caused her to scream a bit. Amazing said Izuku with stars in his eyes. You got any more techniques or is that all of them? Asked Ichako, wondering if she could use shave or if that's a Luffy only thing. The other ones, you need to have a rubber body like mine so, sorry, but I guess not. Said Luffy which caused some people to perk up. Does that mean everybody can use shave? Was pretty much all of their thoughts. If I managed to learn to shave, in addition to my engine quirk. I could go even faster than Luffy did just now. Thought Tenya Iida, already making plans to learn this technique. Alright enough muttering, on to the next test. Said Azawa while his mind was thinking something else entirely. He said he copied this technique, but I've never seen or heard of such a technique being used before. The next test being grip strength, Luffy managed to achieve a whapping broken grip tester. Whoops, dude how strong are you? Asked Enki, who was in a mix of admiration and terror. That is pretty much how every test was for Luffy, now he was waiting for Izuku to throw the ball, and by waiting I mean he was looking on the ground for bugs. Hey guys I think I found a rhino beetle he said back to the group who were watching Midoriya think of throwing a ball. The responses he got varied from simply ignoring, rolling eyes, you and, really dude. Those are super rare lem see lem see wow, I know right. It's awesome. He then turned his head a full 180 degrees to where Izuku just threw the ball, breaking a finger in the process. Dude that's creepy said Ciro not sounding creeped out at all by his neck turning into an owl. What the? Luffy said as he sensed an aura spark with excitement and proud feelings. He always sensed this aura but, still getting used to all the auras of his classmates, he didn't really bother paying attention. Now looking at where the aura is supposed to be, he sees a muscular man in a yellow suit looking at Izuku with stars in his overshadowed eyes. They're making brief eye contact for half a second, caused the muscular man to hide behind the corner, hoping the team didn't just see him. Did he see me? Thought a panicking All Might while hugging the wall. Hey isn't that All Night? Luffy asked the boys near him. This caused them to look at the same corner as Luffy, only to see nothing there. Boo. Asked Kirishima wondering who the hell All Night is. Or almost, or something like that Luffy said as he stopped looking at the corner and turned back to face the crowd. You mean All Might? Asked Denki. There is no way he would get All Might's name wrong of all people. Yeah that's the one. I thought I saw him for a sec. Luffy said as he began walking back to his other classmates. Bro, how do you get All Might's name wrong? He's like the most famous person in Japan. Said Kirishima slightly offended that one of his favorite heroes is getting disrespected. Um. Sorry. Said Luffy not knowing what to say, which just caused the boys to sigh. What's happening now with Bakugou? Asked Siro, confused as to why the angry boy is getting restrained by Azawa. He tried to attack Midoriya for some reason. Said Asui wondering if there is bad blood between them. After the rest of the tests. 
All right time to give you your results, I've ranked you from best to worst, you should probably have a good idea of your standing already. I'll just pull out the whole list, it's not worth going over everybody individually. Said Azawa as he pressed a button and a hologram-like list appeared. First place. Monkey D. Luffy. Second place. Momo Yaoi Rozu. TBH I'm surprised that she is even in the top 10, a lot more that she takes first place in the anime. Third place. Shota Todoroki. Fourth place. Katsuki Bakugou. Fifth place. Tenya Iida. Congratulations Luffy, looks like you stole first place from me. Said Momo with a smile on her face, happy that her friend got first place. Eh? I didn't steal anything I swear said Luffy panicked, which just caused everybody to get a feeling of deja vu. And I was lying, no one's going home. Said Azawa which caused several students to look at him in disbelief. That was just a rational deception, to make sure you all gave it your all. Said Azawa with a weird smile making several students completely shocked at this piece of news. I'm surprised the rest of you didn't figure that out, I'm sorry, I guess I probably should have said something. Said Momo with her hands on her hips. That's it we're done for the day. Said Azawa which caused whatever else he said to not enter Luffy's ears. As they were leaving the school grounds. Luffy felt a pad on his shoulder, which caused him to turn around to see Ida. I just wanted to say that I must sincerely apologize for how I acted in the auditorium. I made assumptions based on our first encounter, and having spent some time with you today, I realized that my assumptions were wrong. I hope that we can bury the hatchet and have a brand new friendship. Said Ida genuinely to Luffy. Hoping he would agree and that their friendship would begin anew. Well, I don't know what hatchet you're talking about, but thanks for the apology. I also want to be friends with you. Said Luffy giving Eid an ear-to-ear -ear grin. I'm glad to hear it. I'll see you tomorrow morning then. Goodbye Luffy, goodbye Momo. He said with a bow before running towards Izuku. Huh, what a nice guy said Luffy walking to the limousine side by side with Momo. You have a gift, you know. Momo said with a smile to Luffy which caused the straw hat to quirk an eyebrow at her. Yeah, you have a knack for making friends wherever you go, even with Ida, who was an enemy of sorts to you, now he considers you to be his friend after spending just one day with him. Thanks Luffy said not knowing how to respond to that. Well if his friends were happy then he was happy. The next day, in English class. Now, which one of you can tell me which one of these is incorrect? Said the voice hero, who was the English teacher also. This is so boring. Thought every person in the class. Except for Todoroki, Tenya, Momo and Luffy. The reason they were the exception is that the first three wanted to learn, while the fourth was sleeping probably dreaming of meat, his crew or some party. Oh come on everybody grammar rules he set in an attempt to get his class fired up. Spoiler alert, it didn't work. Once class ended, everybody went to the cafeteria to eat while Luffy was still passed out. Luffy come on, wake up. Momo gently shook Luffy trying to wake him up, but it didn't work. Come on we'll miss the food. She said knowing that food is in Luffy's top three favorite things of all time. Food. Luffy suddenly jolted awake, startling Momo. Why didn't you wake me before we're gonna miss it let's go he said as he grabbed Momo's hand and rushed out of the classroom. Luffy wait you're going to dislocate my shoulder unfortunately for her, Luffy was too far away and in too much of a hurry for him to hear her. Once they arrived at the cafeteria they noticed everybody started eating, so Momo grabbed a plastic tray and went to order. Luffy, if you also want to order, you have to take one of these. And order here, okay. Said Momo while pointing at a plastic tray. Gosh just wait for me. He said as he went off running so that he wouldn't be left behind. After Momo ordered today's special and Luffy ordered everything he possibly could, they needed a place to sit. Who cares where we sit? Let's just go there. He said while pointing at a random table. If you don't have a place to sit, we have plenty of space. Said Iida while weaving his arms robotically towards Luffy and Momo. I I mean, if that is alright with you. He asked Izuku and Ichako. Yeah the more the merrier. Sure, why not? Unfortunately for them, that was the biggest mistake they made that day. Because as soon as Luffy finished his meal, which they guessed was a record time worldwide. He started stealing from them food. Hey I paid for that said a slightly annoyed Ichako. I thought you brought your own food to school. Said Iida thoughtfully as he watched helplessly Luffy steal his plate of food. I did, but I already ate it. Said Luffy with a mouthful. So that's why Momo was inhaling her plate of food. Thought Izuku as Luffy ate his plate, chopsticks and all. Is the reason why you are so hungry something related to your quirk, huh? Oh, yeah one time I almost died after not eating the entire day. Said Luffy as he finished everybody else's food. Oh, that must be horrible, I'm sorry. Said Izuku now thinking that his quirk may not have the worst drawback in the world. Don't worry about it, plus I was super tired from having to fight like an army of guys. Everybody at the table thought he exaggerated, little did they know, Luffy had to fight most of Big Mom's forces, almost by himself. I never knew this, I thought you were just a glutton, no offense. 
said Momo while looking at him with pity in her eyes. It's fine though, cause I love food. Said Luffy with a happy expression on his face. I suppose it's not that horrible then. Said Ida while pushing up his glasses. But you should at least have some manners in the afternoon. Everybody was waiting in the classroom for their hero training lesson to begin. Then all of a sudden the door slid open. I am here coming through the door like a hero said All Might as he entered the room very heroically. Wow it's really him and various other statements similar were said when All Might appeared, accompanied by Wuos and Oz. Meanwhile, Luffy was just staring intently at him like he was trying to pry into his soul, but what he was really doing was figuring out if that was the same guy as yesterday. Is looking good he said as he pointed at a wall with one hand and pressed a button with the other. These were designed based on the quirk registration forms and the request you sent in before school started, while he was explaining all of this, cases with numbers on them came out of the wall. Then all of a sudden Luffy jumped up from his seat. You're totally the guy from yesterday aren't you? He said loudly as he pointed a finger at him. You're the guy I saw it's your suit that's different. Everybody looked between Luffy and All Might, wondering if he was the guy he thinks he is. Crap he did see me All Might started sweating a bit. And then no, you see I just happened to be there when you saw me it's not like I was stalking this class or something. Ha 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 ha. He let out a very forced. Wait All Might was watching our fitness test. Why? Said Kirishima puzzled. Are you some sort of stalker All Might? Asked Asui bluntly. Several questions like these were thrown at the number one hero in all of Japan. All Might was watching our fitness test. Is it because of me? Izuku couldn't help by question himself. You are all idiots, it's obvious, isn't it? Why he was watching us? Said Bakugou getting tired of these pointless questions. In his mind, it was very obvious why. It's because our class has the most potential out of all the classes in this trash school. Said it is more as a matter of fact than anything else. Clear his throat. Young Bakugou, the reason I have stayed to watch your class is because. He said before taking a deep breath in. I'm a huge nerd when it comes to quirks, and I loved watching all of your quirks in action, isn't that funny? Ha 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 now suit up and meet me at ground beta. He said sweating bullets, before running full speed out of the classroom. The whole class just felt a bead of sweat roll down their foreheads. While everybody was taking their suits, Luffy was looking at his case. Flashback. So I can draw anything here and they'll make it. Asked Luffy as he was filling out his request for his hero costume. But in reason, yes. Responded Momo as she was drawing her heroine costume. Can I make it so that I can shoot beams from my hands, or that it has infinite meat? Asked Luffy already imagining what he would look like with bolts of light shooting from his fingertips. I don't think that's realistic or possible. She said which caused Luffy to pout. I think that you should pick an outfit that best represents you. Best represents me, huh? Luffy said as he looked at his piece of paper. It means to show people who you are. Explained Momo thinking that Luffy didn't understand what represent meant. I knew that he didn't, well if it's like that then I only need one thing. End of flashback. Wow awesome costume, glasses. Said Luffy to Ida, referring to his robotic costume. I'm surprised you could tell it was me underneath all this armor Ida said, slightly shocked at the fact that somehow Luffy managed to see who it was under the Transformer-like costume. I appreciate the compliment, and I must say yours isn't too shabby either. Luffy was wearing the costume that he wore in his fight against Kaido, Aka the red unbuttoned shirt, purple belt, brown shorts and the black coat that was hanging around his shoulders. With one addition this coat had the straw hat pirate's flag displayed on the back, in honor of his pirate crew. To be honest, it was a miracle the people who drew the pirate flag were able to get it correctly, because what Luffy had sent was nothing short of an abomination. I chose this fit cause I like it as simple as that. Wow dude that's a huge ass scar on your chest, it's super manly said Kirishima who came into the discussion. It makes you look like a baddest plus the coat. I actually always wanted to ask, but I thought it would be a privacy breach, but since we are all talking about it, how did you get that scar? Asked Momo who was dying to know where he could have gotten a scar that big. Same here I also want to know said Mina as she approached the quickly growing crowd around Luffy. I got this scar when my brother died. Said Luffy seriously. Oh. Was pretty much everybody's response. Shouldn't have asked him that. I'm sorry. They said what was pretty much the only thing you could say in a situation like that. And as quickly as it formed, it disbanded. I'm sorry Luffy, I should have just kept my mouth shut, I didn't know it would bring up such an unpleasant memory. Said Momo feeling terrible for basically having forced Luffy to relive a tragedy. It's fine, I got over it. Let's just not talk about it, okay? Luffy asked Momo. As much as it pained him, he went through the grieving process and made peace with Ace's death. The scar on his chest was a reminder of everything he lost in the War of the Best, and it's also a promise that he will never lose anyone ever again. Well this is awkward. Thought All Might, thinking that he should relieve the tense air that settled with everybody, he decided to explain the combat training. After he was done he revealed the teams that will be fighting. Luffy is in Team I with the Invisible Girl. 
They were on the same team said a pair of floating gloves. Luffy just stared at the gloves. How can you talk? You don't have a mouth. Said Luffy, thinking that the feminine voice came from the gloves. What? Of course I have a mouth, it's just that it's invisible so you can't see it. Said Toru, which caused Luffy to just nod sagely. Of course, it's so simple. It's a mystery ability he said it like he solved the greatest mystery known to man. It's not a mister unfortunately Toru was caught off by All Might. I declare that the teams who fight first will be these guys. Said All Might as he took two balls from two boxes, the balls having the letters A and D. As the battle between the hero and villain team raged on, Luffy took some reserved food he got with him and proceeded to watch the fight like a movie. The hero team wins bellowed All Might into the very small microphone while looking at camera footage of Achako puking her guts out and Midoriya being carried away on a stretcher. What a weird way for this to end, the team who won is on the ground while the losers are basically untouched. Said Siro with a hand over his mouth. How does the old saying go? Many have lost the battle, but they won the war. Said the bird-headed student. This class is intense. Said the Asui, as she watched Izuku getting carried away on a stretcher. That was awesome said Luffy with stars in his eyes, as he watched the amount of destructive power being shown, nothing crazy of course, or even normal by his standards. But still cool. After everybody came back to the viewing room, besides Izuku, All Might proceeded with his lesson. Despite the villains losing this battle, the MVP is actually young Ida. This caused Ida to be incredibly confused huh, shouldn't it be one of the heroes? Since they are the winners. Said Asui also confused. MMH valid question, why didn't I chose one of the winners? Ask All Might the class. Who can give us a guess? I know why sir, I can tell you why. Said Luffy and Momo at the same time. Which caused both of them to look at each other at the same time. Um, young Yeoi Rozu, I would like to hear your answer. Said All Might, picking one of the hands at random. She then goes on to explain why Ida is the MVP. Technically the hero team won, yes, but they took advantage of this being an exercise and didn't respect the spirit of the trial. All Might didn't expect her to say this much. Well yes, you did overlook a few things, like how Ida could have relaxed a bit, but otherwise you nailed it. Is there something you wanted to add young Luffy? Nah, I was pretty much going to say the same thing. He was going to say that Ida had the coolest costume. Somehow, I find that hard to believe. Said Asui bluntly. Now then, time to move on to our next match. Team I will be our villains and Team B will be our heroes. A couple of minutes later. Okay, I'm gonna get serious Luffy, you should too. Said Toru as she was taking off what little clothes she had left. This is gonna be fun said Luffy already pumped up. Don't look. Said Toru embarrassed at being completely naked in a room with a boy her age. But what? Over with the rest of the class. They were all looking at the screen with anticipation. So do you think the ice guy has any chance? Asked Kirishima, not believing for a second that Luffy could lose. Do you think that he doesn't? We haven't seen his quirk in action yet. Retorted Asui, not knowing who could win the battle. I mean it's true, but come on, he would need to have a super strong quirk to beat Luffy, I mean you saw how he threw that ball. Teacher, back me up here. He said remembering that all might watch their fitness tests. The truth is young Kirishima we will never know unless we see them in combat, you'll be able to make a more accurate decision after this battle. Said All Might as he prepared to start the battle. I hope you win Luffy. Thought Momo, hoping her friend would win even though she was sure he was going to win. Look alive kids, show us what you can do, let's go he said as he started the match. Okay, so what's our plan? Toru asked Luffy hoping that he would have at least an idea in his mind. The plan? The plan is to beat them said Luffy, as if it were the most obvious thing in the world, well it was at least an idea. Well duh but we need Toru was cut off by Luffy. Wait a sec, something is coming. Tori yelped a bit when Luffy picked her up bridal style. Causing her to very heavily blush, even though nobody would see it. Luffy what are you doing she was cut off again. Wait it's almost here, I just gotta time it. He said as he used his future sight to see when he should jump to avoid getting stuck in the ice. Wait, 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 and now he finished saying as he jumped at the perfect moment, now landing back down on the ice and putting the invisible girl down. Wow, how did you do that? She said as she started shivering. At this, it's a mystery ability. Said Luffy not phased by the cold with a grin on his face. Of course it is. Toru said with a sigh. So what do we do? He'll almost be here. I have a plan he said as he put his black coat with a straw hat logo on her shoulders. Can you help me? Why yes she said still blushing, not cold anymore. But Todoroki, still searching for the fake bomb. This is the last room, so they should be in here. He thought as he entered the room but stopping at beneath, only to see a black coat floating in midair. Oh hey, look who it is said Toru while doing her best to attract his attention. Where's Straw Hat? He asked as he was getting his arm ready to blast ice, just in case. I don't know, he left poor, little, old me alone here, in this cold. She said as she started moving around the room. K 
can you believe it, how are you not frozen? He asked as he took a step into the room, which would prove to be his downfall. Gomu Gomu no Todoroki looked where the noise was coming from, which was the ceiling to see a grinning Luffy, looking down at him. Surprise attack. Todoroki didn't get the chance to do anything as he was now tackled to the ground, with a palm pushing his face into the ground. Luffy the capture tape tour reminded Luffy that the plan was to tackle the ice guy and wrap the tape around him. Right Luffy said as he used 90% of the capture tape to completely immobilize Todoroki. Gotcha. Yay yeah, we got one Luffy she held out a palm high up. High five. Luffy proceeded to slap, not her hand, but her face, causing her to fall to the ground. Oh crap, you alright? Luffy said as he ran towards where he could only guess she was. You okay? He asked again as he proceeded to poke what he could only guess was her forehead. Yay, it happens more often than you think. Toru was very glad she was invisible right now. Stop poking me, that's not my head. Hey, Todoroki, what's taking so long? Shoji said as he walked into the room wondering why he hasn't touched the bomb. What the? Gomu Gomu no pistol Luffy quickly punched him in the gut, causing the dupli arms quirk user to fall to the ground on his knees while clutching his stomach. And gotcha Luffy said as he used the remaining capture tape on Shoji. Yay we once said Luffy and Toru at the same time. The VV villains T team win, good J job said a shivering all might. Todoroki, using his other side burned the tape that was holding him and defrost the entire building. I can't believe I lost. But the rest of the students, they were all happy that now they were able to not freeze in place. See what did I tell you? My boy Luffy had no chance of losing. Said Kirishima happy that Luffy won and he wasn't made a fool of in front of the whole class. But you do have to wonder, how did he know that the ice was coming? Asked Asui. The only ways I can think of is if he somehow sensed the cold or he saw the future. Doesn't Sir Knight I already have that quirk? Asked Mineta as he was trying to warm up. Oh yeah, I forgot that he has that quirk. Responded Asui to Mineta's question. I can't believe Luffy beat the guy that got in on recommendation. Said Denki, wondering just how strong Luffy is. Was that also hockey? Thought Momo while looking at a footage camera of Luffy entering the building where the rest of the students were. I can't beat them, I wouldn't even know how to deal with the ice guy's quirk, and that rubber brain beat him. Thought a shell shocked Bakugu. Now that we are all here, can somebody guess who the MVP of this match was? Asked All Might even though he was pretty sure they all knew the answer. Luffy was staring so intently at Momo that she was pretty sure that if she didn't respond, things could get ugly. I know, sir. Responded Momo for the fear of not getting two holes in the back of her head. I believe the MVP was Monkey D. Luffy, not only for him managing to dodge the ice attack, but also for formulating a plan successful enough that it managed to subdue both heroes. Additionally Toru Hakagur played an integral part in managing to bait and distract her opponent. While Shota Todoroki was too ignorant, if he had been more careful, he would have noticed earlier that Luffy was gone only for Toru Hakagur remaining, and thus he would have created a plan accordingly to deal with the situation. In the same way, Mizo Shoji was too overconfident in his teammate's skill, which inevitably led to their downfall, said Momo before clearing her throat for having to speak so much. Yep, that's about the gist of it great job everyone said All Might, giving a thumbs up to the whole class. Oh, you didn't have to say that much you could've just stopped talking when you said how great I was. Said Luffy with a happy expression on his face, and Momo under one arm hug, while the other was scratching the back of his neck. Momo already knowing this would happen just decided to go with it, while also turning red. Alright young heroes on to the next matches. And so on it went, each team either losing or winning to the other, and the students watching the other's battles. Luffy was already snoring off in some corner with a sandwich in his hand. And that's a wrap said All Might in front of every class won a student besides Izuku who was at the nurse's office. Super work you really stepped out to the plate, nobody had any major injuries, except for Midoriya. You should be proud excellent first day of training all around. Luffy was already spacing out, ready to get home and fill his belly. I want home. Luffy said with a whine. We still have afternoon classes you know that right? Momo said to him in a whisper. Ugh Luffy wanted to sleep and eat, not like he doesn't already do that. At the end of classes. Okay Momo, time to go home. Luffy said to Momo with a yawn, he was getting very tired. Aren't you gonna wait for Midoriya? Momo asked Luffy, thinking that if anybody would wait for him, it would be Luffy. Why? Nothing's gonna change with me here, you? Luffy asked the same question as Momo. No, truth be told, I am tired. Momo said as they were leaving the classroom. You know, they're going to choose a class president next week Momo told Luffy, more so to make conversation. What's that? Um, how do I explain it? Momo thought with a hand on her chin for a second, before knowing how to put it so that Luffy will understand. It's like a pirate captain. Oh well, that's me, I'm the captain. Said Luffy with a frown. Well, I guess we will see won't we? Said Momo with a giggle, imagining Luffy becoming class president. Chapter 5. 
class rep and USJ. Luffy and Momo were getting out of the limousine as they arrived at UA. Nothing of note happened between this day and the one before. They were surprised when they saw a bunch of reporters blocking the UA entrance gate, they were confused as to why the reporters chose to block their path. Huh? What's going on? Said a confused Luffy which caused every reporter to do a 180 and look at the two of them. Reporters. Wondered Momo out loud. Are you two students in the hero course? Said one female reporter while holding a microphone to both of their faces. Hero course. Yes, we are. Said Luffy and Momo at the same time. When they finished saying this, all of the reporters' faces lit up like they were Christmas trees. Can you tell us what's it like to study under All Might? Um, he's super loud and bigger than me. Said Luffy, not helping the reporters at all. Is there anything else? Said Momo in a hurry, wanting to get to classes as soon as possible. No, you can go. Said the female reporter extremely disappointed by the lack of information they just got. Yosh let's go I'm starving. Said Luffy with the only thing on his mind being the cafeteria's food. When are you not starving? Thought Momo in amusement. Luffy? What's wrong? Momo said when she noticed Luffy suddenly stopping in his tracks and turning around like somebody just shouted his name. She then decided to also look in the same direction as Luffy only see the people walking on the sideway. Nothing, I thought I just felt something. Luffy said as he continued to walk through the gate. He was sure he felt something, something like hate and killing intent, but when he turned to where all this bloodlust was coming from, he saw nothing but regular citizens walking. He continued walking to his class, but something nagged at him in the back of his mind. Deciding to push it deep down, he focused on eating his giant piece of meat in the classroom. Soon after, the first lesson started. Decent work on yesterday's training, you guys. I saw the footage and went over each and all of your team's results. Said a very tired Azawa addressing the whole class. Bakugou you're talented, so don't sulk over your loss like a child. DSK, yeah whatever. Said a mildly annoyed Bakugou at being treated with kid gloves. Midoriya. Said Izawa, causing Izuku to straighten in his seat quickly. I see the only way you won the match is by messing up your arm again. Work harder and don't give me the excuse that you don't have control over your quirk. That line is already getting old, Luffy. Said Izawa causing Luffy to come back to reality. I saw you won your match, which I give you props for, but you treated it like a game, if you don't take this more seriously, it will be your downfall, eh? But I once said a confused Luffy, wondering why is he getting scolded for winning. Winning isn't everything, and in a real battle, your opponents won't be so cocky. As Awa lectured Luffy and the whole class. Anyway, let's get down to business, this lesson will affect your whole future. As Awa said, causing a tense atmosphere to settle in the whole classroom. You all need to pick a class representative. Oh, okay just normal school stuff. Thought the majority of the class. Hey Momo. What's that? The class thing. Luffy whispered to Momo, which caused her to turn to him. We talked about this yesterday. It's the pirate captain of the class. Momo said hoping the metaphor will work a second time. While they were having their little discussion, various students stood up in their chairs, proclaiming that they should be the class rep and why. Not really giving good arguments. Oh, I have to be the captain. Hey guys I'm the class rep Tinji said Luffy also standing up and saying it as loudly as he could, unfortunately, his voice drowned out in all the commotion. Silence everyone please. Iida suddenly said as he stood up, causing everybody to shut up and look at him. The class representative's duty is to lead others, it's not something that just anyone can do. I can do what Luffy said only for him to be ignored. You must first have the trust of everyone in the classroom, therefore the most logical way to fill this position is democratically, we will hold an election to choose our leader. He said, very clearly wanting to be the class representative. This doesn't feel like the best idea. Said Denki, slightly sweating. We've barely known each other a few days, how do we know who we can trust? Said Asui with a finger on her chin. Yeah, plus everybody will just vote for themselves. Said Kirishima also not thinking this is the best idea. Most people would yes, but that only means that the person who gets chosen is truly the one who deserves the spot. Said Iida in an attempt to convince everybody. It's the best way, right sir? Iida asked his homeroom teacher who was already in a yellow sleeping bag. Do what you want, just decide before my nap is over. He said as he closed his sleeping bag and dropped to the ground. Thank you for your trust sir said Iida, getting ready to hand everybody their piece of paper so that they can choose. A while later, the election result was shown on a screen. First place. Monkey D. Luffy with four votes. Second place. Midoriya Izuku with three votes. Third place. Momo Yeoi Rozu with two votes. Yahoo I won I told you I could do it, Luffy said pointing to Momo while putting a leg on a desk. Causing the girl in question to wonder why she was getting attacked. Well, I guess it's better than a stranger thought Momo. Alright who voted for Rubber Brain and the Nerd? Asked Bakugou angrily. 
This caused a certain invisible girl and a gravity girl to whistle while looking off to the side. Did you honestly think that anybody was going to vote for you? Asked Denki which only made Bakugou matter. I get why people would vote for Midoriya, but Luffy? Really? Asked a disbelieving Asui. Which made Kirishima turn to her. Well, you saw his quirk and how he used it, he's super strong said Kirishima trying to defend Luffy and by extension himself, him being one of the ones who voted for Luffy. You done choosing? Asked Azawa as he got to the ground. Taking one look at the screen he called the two boys to the front of the class. Luffy, Midoriya come here. Luffy was standing at the front of the class with a huge smile on his face, while Midoriya was trembling. They are we sure it's not some sort of mistake? Izuku asked referring to himself. Boy calm down. Said Luffy as he slapped Izuku's back, almost making him face plant into the ground. This is not how a first mate should act. Oh, and you have a lot of experience in how he should act, Captain. Asked Denki, mockingly very evident in his tone. Yeah, he's supposed to be super strong and always acting cool he said the things that made Zoro, well Zoro. This whole election reminded him of his crew and it made him homesick, plus Izuku and Zoro having green hair didn't help the situation. That doesn't sound right. So that means that we are the crew? There's no way in hell I'll take orders from you. And several other comments like these were made. Alright, now we need a boat and we can set off on our adventure, he was cut off by the bell going off indicating that the lunch period started. Before anyone could even begin to get out of their seats, Luffy was already gone. Now with Luffy, Momo, Iida, Izuku, and Ichako were seated at a table, each desperately trying to stop Luffy from eating. This rice is super good, said Ichako sarcastically. That is what I would have said if I were able to eat. Um, what do you mean? Asked Luffy, wondering why everyone is so guarded. I mean stop stealing my food, said Ichako loudly, which just caused Luffy to laugh. So hey guys, I don't think I fit the role of class deputy said Izuku to his friends. Truth be told he was never one to take leadership positions. Nonsense, the quick thinking and critical thinking you demonstrated are the true values of any leader. Said Iida in an attempt to console his friend while trying to eat his meal. He was still disappointed at the fact that he didn't get chosen to be the class rep, but he wasn't going to argue with his vote. Yeah plus the way you blew up that building, it was very cool. Said Luffy already having finished his meal. I don't think blowing up buildings is a great qualifier for being the deputy. Said Izuku wondering what blowing up buildings has to do with taking charge. What he means? Said Momo also done with her meal. Having lived with Luffy for almost a full month now, she was forced to learn to eat fast. Is that, being strong is also necessary of any capable leaders, which is why I chose to vote for you. Said Iida in an attempt to further comfort his friend. You voted for me? Izuku asked surprised and receiving a nod in response. To be honest, I'm more worried about you Luffy. Said Ichako to the rubber man. I mean no offense, you are strong and the way you use your quirk means that you have at least some brain power. But have you ever taken leadership roles before? Obviously I am a pirate captain for about two and something years now Luffy said a bit offended. I don't think that's true. In any case, observing the Eida family agency has taught me that a leader should be able to analyze and compile a plan under stress and you both have shown clear proof of that. Eida explained further. Oh, thanks said Luffy as he scratched the back of his plan, not really understanding what he was praised for, but happy that he was. Agency? Said everybody else at the table, having caught Iida's slip up. Hold on, what does your family do Iida? Asked Izuku. You uh, it's nothing said Iida sweating a bit. You know I've been wondering something about you Iida. Said Ichako as she was getting in his personal space. Admitted, you're filthy rich. Ah, I was afraid people would treat me differently if they knew about my family. Said Iida while closing his eyes. Yes, I know how you feel. Said Momo, being able to sympathize with Iida at the fact that people only care about your money, although she hopes this school will be different. You see, the Iida family have been heroes for generations now. It runs in our blood. Said Iida after caving in from being stared at by three different people. Are you four familiar with the turbo hero, Ingenium, who is that? Asked Luffy with a frown on his eyebrows. Oh I know all about him he's a super popular pro working alongside 65 sidekicks at his Tokyo agency wait, don't tell me. Said Izuku wondering if what he thought was true. He's my elder brother said Iida while looking very proud. Wow cool said Luffy, still not knowing who he is. I can't believe it said Izuku with admiration in his voice. Your family is super famous gushed Ichako. I knew your family name sounded familiar. Said Momo, wondering how she didn't realize it until now. Ingenium is a masked hero that protects the innocents. As his little brother, I strive to be just like him. Said Iida still proud at having such an awesome brother with a smile on his face. Yeah I know what that's like, ever since I was with Ace I could never beat him in a fight, I wanted to be as strong as he was. Said Luffy happily reminiscing the times when he, Ace, and Sabo would fight all day, and Luffy not winning once. 
Wow, your brother must have been really strong if he could beat you in a fight. Said Izuku wondering what type of quirk Luffy's late brother had. And that was all before he got his da, he was cut off from saying that Ace ate the fire loja fruit when an alarm sounded. What's that noise? Level 3 security breach. Iida asked out loud when he heard a voice saying that a level 3 security breach has been issued. What does that mean? It means someone trespassed on school property. Said a calm and collected Momo, while on the inside she was slightly panicking. The rules say to evacuate the building in an orderly fashion. Alright, let's go then said Iida always following the rules, hurrying everybody else around him. Let's hurry. Hey stop pushing me said an annoyed Luffy at being pushed on from all sides. He was in the hallway, with his other friends, not being able to move around in the big crowd that formed from all of the other students being in a panic. You guys okay back there? I can't breathe said Izuku as he was getting pushed from all sides. Ah Luffy your neck said Izuku when he noticed Luffy's neck being extended way more than humanly possible. Everyone is so quick to react as expected of UA student said Iida, while also having a very hard time moving around. Who in the world could be trespassing on the school grounds? He said as he was approaching the window to look outside. Hey, what are we looking at? Said Luffy's head who was also looking outside the window side by side with Iida. Those are the guys from before. It's the reporters from this morning he said in disbelief at all the commotion they were causing. We have to warn them. This caused Luffy to take the hint and say as loudly as he could. Oh I it's the guys from this morning so just relax. Unfortunately for him, everyone was too focused on running ahead to notice the overextended head shouting at them. The only people to pick up on his announcement were the students in his class. I have a plan said Iida after getting an idea of how to help everyone. While he was making him through the panicked crowd to Ichako. Yuraka activate your quirk on me. As they barely touched, Iida started floating over the crowd. Hey what are you doing? That looks fun said Luffy also wanting to fly. This is no time for games I just need to get in front of everyone and deliver a quick and precise message to stop the panic. Iida said as he was getting ready to his quirk to somehow fly over the crowd, but he stopped when he felt a hand on his back. Huh, I'll help you then after all, it's a captain's job to help his crew. Luffy's head said as he pushed Iida to the front of everyone. Thank you Iida thanked Luffy as he got his announcement ready. Okay I need to be clear and concise and make an impact. Listen up everything is okay it's just the media outside there is no reason to panic, Iida shouted at the top of his lungs, while balancing himself on the exit sign above the doorway. We are UA students we need to keep calm and prove that we are the best of the best. Luffy not knowing what to do in this situation, decided to give a thumbs up with his overextended hand. His announcement proved to be effective as it managed to calm everyone down when the police arrived. Now that the new lesson started, Luffy was standing at the front of the class with a smile on his face, while Izuku was shaking in his boots. Why are we here? Said Luffy slightly confused as to why he was at the front of the class. WW wait Luffy, before we begin, I want to make an announcement. Said Izuku while trying to calm his nerves. I thought a lot about this, and I think the Tenya Iida should be our class deputy. I know it's not exactly class rep, and that I don't exactly have the right to give my role to him. But, he managed to get everyone's attention during the panic and calm everyone down. So I believe that he should have the role of class deputy Izuku said finishing his speech with a look of admiration on his face, before suddenly realizing that he needed to ask permission. I I mean if that's alright with you Luffy. Sure, Iida is a good guy plus his costume makes him even cooler, Luffy said while digging through his nose. I'm fine with that, he totally manned up during the whole panic today, Kirishima said as he looked at him, with approval. Yeah plus didn't he look like the emergency exit sign guy while he made his speech. It was hilarious Denki also gave his sign of approval. This is a waste of time. Said a tired Azawa from his sleeping bag. I don't care who the deputy is, just hurry up. He said as he was going back to sleep. If Midoriya is nominating me for this job, then I humbly accept he said as he stood up with his arm raised. I shall do my best to do this job to the very best of my abilities. Don't let us down man Kirishima said with a thumbs up. Yeah emergency exit Iida Denki also commented. Oh come on, I got two more votes than him. Momo whined at not being picked. Okay so, now what? Luffy asked his first mate not knowing why they were called to the front of the class. Now we must pick a class treasurer. Iida informed his class rep with respect. He was slightly annoyed and offended at a class rep not knowing what to do, but him being the way that he is, he wasn't going to show any form of disrespect to someone with a higher ranking than himself. Okay who wants to be the treasurer? Luffy asked his classmates who let a bead of sweat roll down their forehead at Luffy mispronouncing treasure. If I didn't get the first two places, I guess I'll settle for third. Momo thought as she raised a hand. Her not being the only hand up. Okay, Momo you're the treasure Luffy said while pointing at his friend, which caused the other classmates with their hands up to mutter something about biases. Yes, I also agree. Momo Yayoi Rozu would make a fine addition to the class's administrative roster. 
Iida said also agreeing with Luffy, thinking he made a good decision, unbeknownst to him Luffy just picked her because she was his closest friend in the classroom. Thank you. Momo said as she was also coming to the front of the class. Yeye Oirozu is very smart. I got no problems with her being the treasure. Ribbit said Asui giving her opinion to the rest of the class. I agree. Agreed Mineta for the wrong reasons. Anything else? Asked Luffy his two other friends. No, this concludes our first class meeting said Iida as he was getting back to his seat. A couple of days later. It was 12.50 and Azawa was addressing his classroom. Today's training will be a little different. Me, All Might, and another faculty member will be keeping tabs on you. This caused the class to wonder why three teachers instead of the usual two will be at their lesson. Three pros. Is that because of the break-in? Thought Izuku just as surprised as the rest of the class, well the class besides Luffy who was too busy at the moment with eating his third packed lunch. The teachers and Iida reprimanded him multiple times for eating or sleeping in class, but seeing as how nothing they did changed his bad habits, they decided to drop it and just hoped that somehow he was paying attention. Sir what training will we do today? Asked Ciro from the back of the class with his hand up. Rescue training. Shipwrecks, accidents, natural disasters stuff like that. Responded Azawa. At this news, everybody in the class got excited about the fun day they were going to have. That sounds like fun said an excited Denki Kaminari. Yeah totally agreed Mina and several other comments like those were said with pure excitement from the other students. Eyes, I'm not finished yet. Wear what you want to wear, and this special training is at an off-site campus facility, and we will be taking a bus to go there. That's it, start getting ready. He said as he was getting out of the classroom. Who adventure Luffy said as he was already running out of the class his case in hand. Class representative Wade Iida said as he was walking very quickly behind Luffy trying his best not to run. No running in the hallways. Outside, at the bus parking lot, they were waiting for the bus to get ready. Hey, Momo so, where are we going? Luffy asked the girl who was staring offended at a Mineta who in turn was drooling over the girl's hero costumes. With a sigh, she turned to Luffy. We are going to train, why do you even ask? You usually never care where we are going. I don't know, I just can't shake this bad feeling I'm having Luffy asked with an annoyed expression. Iida then used his whistle to get everyone's attention. Alright classes 1A, using your students' numbers, form two lines so we can enter the bus efficiently he said before using his whistle some more. But Luffy already got on the bus. Said the martial arts student with a bead of sweat rolling down his forehead, which caused Iida to look at the window where Luffy was poking his head through in shock. As they were on their way to the training grounds, Iida was sulking at his plan being a total bust because of the seating arrangement, and Luffy was with his head out the window with his tongue out flapping in the wind like a dog. Iida you're taking things way too seriously. Said Mina who was seating next to Luffy and Iida on the bus. If we are pointing out the obvious then I want to say something about you actually. Asui said while looking at Izuku. Me? He said surprised that another girl was suddenly talking to him. That quirk of yours, isn't it a lot like All Might's? Asked Asui which caused the boy in question to start sweating buckets. Wait, you're forgetting something, Sue. Kirishima interrupted their chat. All Might doesn't hurt himself when he punches, that makes a huge difference. I guess you're right. Responded Asui which made Izuku give out a sigh of relief. Actually, I wanted to ask you something. Luffy said as he was getting his head back on the bus. Why yeah? Said Izuku who started sweating again. Luffy's questions are always random, so this could be nothing he tried to reassure himself. Whenever I use my hockey to feel you, I like, feel eight other people in you. Said Luffy which made Izuku almost have a heart attack. What's up with that? WWWW well, why why you see? Izuku started stammering profusely, wondering what's the best lie he could come up with. Wait, you mentioned hockey before, what's that? Asked a confused Denki. It's a mystery ability said Luffy thinking he eased everyone's question. Should have expected that. Said Mina while also listening to the conversation. He explained it to me once. Piped in Momo who was seating next to Mina. This caused the people near her to turn their attention to her. He said that he uses willpower to sense other people and do all sorts of things. Wow that's amazing Luffy how do you do that? That sounds like it's some kind of quirk, but I've never known any Izuku went into his muttering spree, already forgetting that All Might's secret was one sentence away from being found out. That does sound like another quirk, do you have multiple quirk or something? Piped in Mineta from further back. What's a quirk? Luffy said confused, which just caused everyone around him to sigh. Anyway, you can become a super popular hero with an ability and quirk like that, my quirk just makes my skin harden, which is super useful in a fight, but not very flashy. Kirishima said as he hardened his hand to demonstrate, which made Luffy look at him with stars in his eyes. No way, you can totally become a pro hero with a quirk like that, Izuku said with a face of admiration, not on the same level as Luffy but pretty close. You think so? 
Kirishima said while scratching the back of his head well if any of our classmates have pro quirks, then it's definitely Bakugou and Todoroki. Sure, but Bakugou is always angry, so he'll never be that popular. Said Asui bluntly which caused Bakugou to snap at her and Luffy to laugh his heart out. See, what did I tell you? Said Asui in response to Bakugou's aggressive reaction. This made some other students tease the angry boy while Izuku was questioning what is life right now. Hey, hey, stop messing around, we are already here. Said Izawa from the front of the bus. Wow, it's the space hero 13 who specializes in saving people from natural disaster. Informed Izuku his other classmates who were staring at the hero in awe, they were now in front of the USJ, which is a building with a massive dome for a roof. You look like a marshmallow. Said Luffy who was digging through his ear. How dare you said you're Raka, offended at the fact that Luffy wasn't impressed with her favorite hero. I can't wait to show you what's inside. Said 13 while pointing her hand at the USJ. Wow, I didn't know we were going to an amusement park. Said Luffy while looking at the giant training facility that looked oddly similar to an amusement park. After all that is what a hero is all about, ensuring the safety of others. That's all I had to say. She finished her little speech with a bow. Hey wait I didn't tell you what we were going to do yet. She said when she noticed Luffy go past her and approach the beginning of the staircase. Rap. What are you Dimina asked Luffy when she noticed that he wasn't moving from his spot only to be interrupted by him. Something's coming. He said seriously, after this all the lights began to shut down and a weird purple portal appeared in front of a fountain. A guy with hands for masks poked his head through, soon after dozens and dozens of villains began popping up. Luffy and everybody else stayed back as Awa said seriously, although Luffy did not step back. 13 stay with the kids and protect them, what's happening? Asked a slightly scared Toru. Is this part of the exercise? Asked an agitated Kirishima. I said stay back said Azawa when he noticed Midoriya about to step forward. This is real, those are villains. He said while putting on his yellow glasses. This caused every student to put their guard up. You bastards used a press to sneak in and find out about our schedule. Azawa retorted to the villains, who looked slightly disappointed. What? No way how could so many villains summon such a secure facility, Kirishima asked hoping this was some kind of prank. No those are real alright, especially the guy covered in hands. Luffy said pointing at the person in question, this caused the teachers and several students to look where he was pointing. I can feel his hate, even from here, but it doesn't make any sense, why are the alarms not going off? Asked Momo who was doing her best to keep calm. That's a good question. Said 13 while looking up to where the alarms are. Maybe they have some sort of quirk that disrupts electronic devices. And they must have a concrete objective in mind with their location and timing, there's no doubt about that. Said a calm and collected Todoroki. It doesn't matter what their objective is. 13 try to keep the student safe. Kaminari use your quirk to contact the school. He said receiving a yes sir while looking down at the approaching villains. What are you going to do? You can't fight them on yo Izuku stopped his question when he heard Luffy. Beer second he said while activating his second gear. This caused every person to look at him in bewilderment. What the hell are you doing? Said a very stressed Azawa. This isn't some game, those are real villains. I can't just sit here and let you guys have all the fun. He said before showing everyone the ear-to-ear -ear smile he had. Luffy no said a very scared Momo for his friend's life. Unfortunately for her Luffy already jumped, Azawa's scarf not fast enough to catch him from behind. Hey where do you think you're going rubber brain? Said Bakugou as he also jumped after him. Hey Kakin said Izuku scared for his friend's life and a little for the villains. Damn it. Make sure nobody does something stupid again. Azawa told 13 as he also jumped. I'll take care of them. Gomu Gomu no Luffy said at the top of his lungs as he coated his arm in armament hockey and threw it way back. This caused every villain and student to look at him in surprise as his arm slowly became engulfed in fire. Red Hawk the poor villains who were at the epicenter of Luffy's massive fiery explosion couldn't do anything besides just drop to the ground while looking at the straw hat with what looked like a sun behind him. Wow was pretty much every student's reaction to what they just witnessed. Don't think you're the only one that has fancy tricks said Bakugou who was quickly approaching the villains on his part. Oh it's her he said as he began quickly spinning in mid-air becoming engulfed in smoke. Impact he said as he released a massive explosion on a big group of villains, it was now Bakugou's turn to receive the wows. Nice one boom boy Luffy said as he was giving a thumbs up with a grin to Bakugou. What did you just call me? Said a pissed off Bakugou, who was getting attacked by a bunch of villains. Don't interrupt me, these kids are gonna be the death of me. As Awa thought as he too joined the battle. Ugh how annoying, I hate it when a pro lives up to their hype. Said the masked man, refereeing to erase her head. I didn't think this class would have brats this strong. Wow, I guess they're stronger than we thought. Said Kirishima with a look of confidence and admiration. Momo was next to him with a look of worry. 
this may not be so bad. This is no time to be admiring Iida said to Kirishima getting him to go with the rest of the class. Our teacher is with them, I'm sure they will be fine. Said Iida trying to get the class's treasurers back to her senses. Now, let's go. Unfortunately, they were stopped when a purple smoke-like villain appeared in front of the entrance, causing Kirishima to blame himself for jinxing the class. Gomu Gomu no Gatling Gun Luffy said as he rained punches on a small group of villains before looking at his other classmates, who were engulfed in purple smoke. Damn it, this is no time to curse yourself for stuff you could not predict, as always said as he was battling three villains at once. You chose to enter the battle, now act like it. Gosh Luffy said as he got his mind back on defeating the low-level villains. After about five minutes, Izuku, Asui, and Mineta were coming to shore after defeating the small group of water villains. I think we should stick to the other zones and avoid the plaza entirely. Said Midoriya while holding his two broken fingers. I still can't believe that Luffy and Bakugou were the first to join the battle, I mean I know they're strong and everything, but they're still just kids. Said Mineta who was amazed by their and Izuku's resolve to fight. I am worried about them, those are real villains out there, not dummies. Said Asui who was walking through the water. Yeah, I know what you mean, they could be in real danger. Worried Izuku as he was getting out of the water. They were indeed strong, but they were outnumbered massively. Is this it? I thought I was going to fight villains not target practices trash talked Bakugou while blasting away a four-armed villain. Boohoo him having fun said Luffy as he unleashed a Gomu Gomu no whip, knocking down several villains at once. Idiots this is not a game reprimanded as Awa the students who were looking like they were enjoying themselves too much. We just have to hope that they will be fine after all this is said and done. Said Izuku trying to comfort the other two as they were making their way toward the plaza to see if they need other help. Remember we are just here to see how they are doing, no need to get involved. Said Mineta as he, Izuku, and Asui poked their hands above a ledge to see how the fight was going on. Looks like they are winning. Ribbit. Said Asui while looking at the two boys in question kick pure ass and their sensei going in for the masked man. Oh no said Izuku as he noticed the villain catches Awa's elbow and disintegrate the skin, leaving only muscle. Sunglasses Luffy yelled when he felt the teacher's aura oozing with pain. That your shit stained hands off our sensei Bakugu said as he delivered a massive right hook to the masked villain's face, making him fall to the ground. Bakugu protect yourself. I don't need your help, as Awa harshly told the angry boy who was now facing a large crowd of low-level thugs. Tell your elbow that said Bakugu who was grinning madly at the crowd in front of him. I can protect you and myself now die Bakugu yelled when he threw a blast at the villains who were coming to them. You really are cool eraser head you didn't hesitate to jump in after the brats to protect them, but sadly, I am not the final boss. As Awa wondered what he meant when a massive villain the size of All Might, with an exposed brain and purple skin, appeared near him and Bakugu. Knocking Bakugu to the side before managing to do anything, he then proceeded to pummel as Awa mercilessly. Sunglasses Luffy yelled as he was getting ambushed and tied up by about 30 villains all at once. Get off of me. What do you think about him eraser head? He is the bio-engineered anti-symbol of peace, but you can call him Nomu. The masked villain said while looking at a beaten down as Awa. Why you bastard? Bakugu said as he was cradling his broken arm. Die he yelled as he blasted the villain with a beak-like mouth, only for him to be completely ignored. He's not even phased. Soon after the mist-like villain appeared, he informed the masked villain that one of the students managed to escape which angered him. He decided since the heroes are soon gonna come and save the teenagers, he might as well kill a few of them. Let's wreck his pride let's make this hurt he said as he was seconds away from putting his hands on the frog-like girl, but stopping inches away from her face. You bread he said as he looked at Luffy who was now holding his hand and who was in second gear. Alkai. Unfortunately for him, he wasn't able to say anything else as Luffy blackened his hand and broke his arm in a grip who was now screaming for having a now useless arm. I did it because I saw a horrible future. Luffy said to the villain who was now screaming in pain. Yeah I know he already said it in Wayno, but it's such a cool line, I just had to use it. After barely dodging the Nomu's fist that was aimed at Luffy's side profile, he stared at the villain and blasted him with Conqueror's hockey. But because the Nomu doesn't have the will to overpower he just threw another haymaker at him. S you're tougher than these other guys. Luffy said to the Nomu as his face slowly turned into a grin before smashing his fist into his open palm. We are going to have some fun. Chapter 6. USJ Part 2. Luffy what are you talking about Izuku said loudly as he felt his heart drop into his stomach. Why you can't possibly want to beat that thing. Yeah that monster was made to kill All Might yelled at tearing Mineta. He admired his will to fight and everything, but this was too far in his opinion. Eyes, don't worry, I'm a monster too. Now take sunglasses and boom boy to the others while I deal with this guy. Luffy confidently instructed the others while giving them a reassuring grin. You stupid brat you really think you? Have a chance against my Nomu? Yelled the hand-covered villain, whose arm still felt like a sledgehammer had hit it. Doesn't matter what I think, just watch what I do. 
Luffy said eerily calm as he began dodging punches from the Nomu, punches that were so fast that you needed a slow motion camera to even begin knowing where they were going to hit. And he dodged every single punch. Irasu I mean Tsu, hold on to Mr. Azawa for me while I get Kakin. Izuku said, worry clearly evident in his voice as he came to a stop near Bakugu. Okay Kakin, easy does it, don't treat me like a baby Kakin bellowed as Izuku flinched in fear. And I don't need your help or anybody's help I can still fight just fine. See come on Kakin don't be like that, we just want to help you. Said Izuku as he approached the tired but still angry boy who was now standing up. Oh really, you can fight. Then what happens when I do this? Asui said as she poked Bakugu in the ribs which caused him to fall to the ground helplessly. Asui. Don't hurt him more, Izuku said as he crouched to where Bakugu's limp body stood. Come on, I know you want to fight, but right now you are too hurt to even walk properly. Don't you dare patronize me, Deku. I can walk just fine. Bakugu said as he slowly but surely got up and began to walk back to the rest of the group. You could just feel the tenseness of the situation just by walking with them, neither of them daring to utter something as they carried a broken and bleeding Azawa who was very hoarsely breathing. I blasted him with all the remaining strength I had left. Now everyone turned to Bakugu surprised that out of everyone, he would be the one to break the silence. I attacked him and he didn't even as much as flinch. The rubber brain signed his death warrant the second he entered the fight with that thing. You know it says a lot when even Bakugu admitted he wasn't strong enough. Omu Gomu no Hawk Gatling Luffy screamed as he blackened the end of his arms and attacked the Nomu relentlessly. Damn, your skin sure is though. That's not his skin that's the problem, it's his quirk the hateful villain proudly proclaimed as the missed villain was tending to his arm. That's right, super strength isn't the only quirk the Nomu has, shock absorption is also one of them. The only one that has a chance to defeat my final boss is All Might, not one of his brats. I didn't really get any of that, but what you said is that normal punches won't work, right? Then let's see how you handle this. He said as he was weaving from the barrage of punches. Gear third. Omu Gomu no Luffy said as he put his finger in his mouth before shaving away from the Nomu. Elephant Gun Luffy shouted as he thrust his ginormous fist towards the Nomu, who in turn decided to challenge it by also punching it as hard as he could. You're gonna need a stronger attack to stop my fist, Luffy excitedly said as he saw the Nomu crash into the stairs, as if he was just hit by a giant. That was impressive, are you one of All Might's special brats? No matter this is far from over. The boss villain told the pirate as a makeshift sling was supporting his arm. We're villains so we don't exactly play fair. Luffy before he could even begin to wonder what he said, felt as if he was falling, only to look down and see a familiar purple portal stopping at about his waist. Crap, I let my guard down when I punched the big guy. I don't exactly like having guts and blood making a mess in my portals, so I'll just hold you in place. The mist villain politely said as he was waiting for the Nomu to rip the kid's head off. Damn that was all Luffy managed to say before a massive Nomu punched the pirate's head so hard that it started flying backward. Omu Gomu no Luffy's voice was heard yelling from a whole different zone, as he was yelling his body began turning pinkish. Dead Bell with a little bit of armament hockey on his forehead and breakneck speeds, he delivered a massive headbutt to the Nomu's exposed brain, which caused him to fall on his back. Gosh now get this purple thing away from me, Luffy said as he sucked in his belly and put his hands on the portal's edges. This thing's not budging an inch. You simpleton, I am the only one who can affect my po weight, how are you doing that? The mist villain broke his facade for a moment when he saw Luffy's hockey-infused hand start to make the portals wider. Should've known hockey would work on you, Luffy said with a smile as he got out of the portal and pulled his fist back to strike the purple villain. Okay so for clarification, hockey attacks a person's soul, their will, right? So it's only logical that it would work on Kurajiri, even though he is not a loja. You again? You sure do recover fast. Luffy said slightly annoyed at being interrupted from his attack by the big creature. Two on one? It's not very fair. Luffy despite saying something whiny, he said it with excitement like a kid nearing the water park. Then how about two on three? Does that sound better? Kirishima said as he dropped his heart and fist on the mist-like villain, only for his punch to go through it again, making the villain step back. You know we figured your little trick. You still have a body, you just cover it with mist. Said Todoroki in a blood-chilling cold voice from behind the villain with a hand on the villain's metal brace. Don't try anything, I don't know what this metal brace is supposed to do, but my guess is that it's not supposed to be frozen. He finished saying as he face-planted the villain. Spiky hair ice guy Luffy said as he was trading blows with the oversized villain. What are you guys doing here Luffy more so said than asked. Well you said it, it's not very fair for these guys to gang up on you, so we thought we'd help out, at least lighten up your load, Kirishima said as he was getting in on a battle-ready stance. No you don't get it Luffy as soon as he finished saying this, activated gear second, no time to say it. Ice guy. Before Todoroki could even wonder what he meant by that he soon saw the straw hat standing in front of him, and soon after the Nomu in front of the pirate. 
Goma Goma no Balan as soon as he said this, Luffy quickly inflated his whole body with air, knocking him, Todoroki, and the Nomu away. Representative Todoroki you guys okay? Said Kirishima as he barely saw Luffy come in front of the Nomu and become a giant balloon. We're fine now go away this is my fight, Luffy angrily said as he punched the mist villain next to him, knocking him out for a short time. Alright, you bastard time to end this. As soon as Luffy said that, he jumped towards the Nomu who was prepared to block the incoming attack, only to have Luffy use him as a stepladder to jump high into the air. The earth heard Luffy said as he put both fingers in his mouth and used hockey to his now gigantic fists. Which caused the two boys who were still at the battle site to look at him with gaped mouths. Gomu Gomu no elephant Luffy said as he threw one massive fist at the Nomu and then brought it backward. Battling and then throwing the other one down and bringing that one upwards and again and again each time faster than the last. D there's no way said Kirishima now kneeling next to a Todoroki who was watching in pure amazement at the absolute beatdown the Nomu was receiving, each fist hitting the ground, made small earthquakes, making any low level thug drop down to the ground as they too watched in pure fear the monster that was Luffy. A couple of seconds earlier. Hey help us out would you yelled a Mineta as he felt like his legs were turning to noodles from having to carry Azawa. Our sensei and Bakugu need help. No I don't, you bald headed imp retorted Bakugu to a now scared Mineta. We're coming right and Yuraka stopped herself when she felt the ground beginning to shake. Earthquake. At a time like this. Wait I don't think it's an earthquake said Mina while crutching on Yuraka to not fall down from the unstable ground. Look it's the rep. I I impossible Izuku said as he looked at what looked like Luffy throwing small meteorites. This was pretty much everyone's reaction, students and villains alike, even a short-circuited Denki was looking with horror in those fried eyes of his at the natural disaster that Luffy was creating. After 20 more seconds of Luffy raining fists and creating earthquakes, he began to slow down until coming to a stop and falling to the ground. Representative Rep you okay? Asuka still shell-shocked Kirishima who was kneeling next to Luffy's body. Luffy say something. He said Luffy while still laying on the ground. Me? Asked a now confused Kirishima. What about you? Me 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 Luffy suddenly yelled as he sprang back to life which caused the two students to face vault on the ground. I'm hungry. Well, he's still the same. Asked Kirishima now getting back up. And then no this can't be it the masked man said as he scratched his neck and looked at the crater that Nomu was now staying in. HH he must be defective, there's no way a brad is stronger than all might, he totally cheated. It doesn't matter what he did, it only matters what we are going to do with you now. Said Todoroki as he approached the villain. Sadly for you, it's over. Don't lose hope, sir, the mist villain said as he came back to his senses, soon after they heard a blood-curdling roar echoing from the crater. It's not over yet. He's coming back said Luffy while getting into a battle stance. What? How is he not dead? Asked a now terrified Kirishima since he thought that Luffy had hit him with his most powerful punch, there was nothing he can do now. Ah, yes I nearly forgotten. You see another one of our beloved Nomu's quirk is high speed regeneration. He said as Nomu jumped back at the top, now looking like nothing had happened to it. He can just come back again and again and again, there is nothing you can do, it's game over. Game over? Idiot. Luffy chuckled as he began running full speed to the Nomu. You know I may not be the smartest guy, but I think I finally learned something at this school. Gomu Gomu no Luffy said as he coated his arm in not only armament hockey, but also Ryu Conqueror's hockey, giving his arm a golden glow. I think I finally understand what that saying means, to go beyond. Plus Ultra as soon as his uppercut made contact with the Nomu's chest, well let's just say that if it were nighttime and you were near the USJ, you would think that a massive rave party was going on. Luffy's hit made the whole USJ be engulfed in such a bright yellow light that it would put 50 light quirk users to shame. And soon after, a small section of the dome broke, leaving behind a Nomu-shaped hole in its place. Oh no what's with that light? I need to hurry said All Might as he began running even faster toward the USJ. DT that was absolutely insane Kirishima said while rubbing his eyes from being hit with such a bright light. That was super mainly, also I'm kinda blind right now. I can't believe it, not even my father can make a light that strong. Todoroki said shell shocked. I eyes that really our class rep? Or is he some sort of demon monster? Asked Siro the question which was pretty much on everybody's mind right now. Monkey D. Luffy. Just who the hell are you? Azawa questioned himself, barely hanging on to consciousness. Luffy don't tell me that was also hockey said Momo as she rushed to Luffy's side, leaving behind an unconscious villain, a shell-shocked Jiru, and a terrified Denki. Why 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 you brat what kind of cheat code was that? I'll kill you he said as he started running full speed at a standing Luffy who was not moving from his spot. Only for him to stop running as soon as he heard the door burst open. Have no fear students because I am here said a pissed off all might. No with our weapon gone, we have no hope in winning this turn the villain said as he quickly turned to his partner. Kurajiri time to go to the lobby. Yes sir the villain apparently named Kurajiri, very quickly acted in opening up a portal. 
Not while I am here All Might said running as fast as he could toward the portal. Oh don't you worry All Might we'll meet again the masked man said with All Might's hand seconds away from grabbing his face. Only for the portal to close up and leave behind a frustrated hero. Luffy Momo yelled as she slid on the floor to catch Luffy's falling head on her thighs. Luffy are you okay? Luffy. The answer she got was in form of a snore. Damn it, Luffy. You had me worried there. Young students is everything alright? All Might asked the three students, one who wasn't listening to him, one who was watching the passed out pirate with pure admiration, and a still shell-shocked one. All Might the no point one hero turned to see Izuku running at him, with tears in his eyes. Wow, calm down young Midoriya and tell me everything that happened. All Might tried to calm the crying child, not really work. The the villains came and t they separated us, and Luffy, Kakin and Mr. Izawa fought them, and Mr. Izawa Bajalkabuya whatever Izuku tried to say after that was completely incomprehensible by the amount of crying he was doing. He truly hated this pair of jeans he got from his mother. Young Midoriya, I thought we talked about the waterwork said All Might, which did manage to calm down the crying student a little bit. And have no fear about Izawa, the ambulance is already on its way. Awesome so that means we won you who celebrated Kirishima, almost forgetting about the other's injuries. Meet. Murmured Luffy in his sleep as he began to drool all over Momo. Unfortunately young Kirishima, this has been a loss. Said All Might which caused every student to turn to him. They managed to steal valuable information from the school and attacked a class in order to get to me, while inflicting major injuries to other students and faculty members, we barely managed to hold them off this time, and we won't know when they will attack again, said All Might before quickly realizing what he said. Crap they're only kids they don't need to hear this, but don't sweat it, I'm sure they won't do it again said All Might hoping he calmed the students' nerves, but he didn't. Anyway I must go to check on Izawa in 13. Until next time, bye. Hey, how's Luffy? Izuku asked after getting slight second-hand embarrassment from the pro. Oh, he'll be fine. Momo said as she put Luffy down and created a cloth to clean herself. I think he's just hungry. Hey have you seen how he took out that Nomu guy? It was insane he went like this. Said Kirishima as he started mimicking Luffy's mavisits. Yeah I saw him, it was amazing Izuku said before stopping himself from going into another muttering spree. But it does make you wonder, how is he that strong? But Shigaraki at his hideout. I can't believe this, those brats were so strong how can we hope to defeat the final boss if we can't even defeat his henchmen? Asked Shikaragi as he stood at a bar with a drink in hand. Their hideout didn't really look like a hideout, more like a small bar giving off that 80s jazz atmosphere. The only exception there being the TV which displayed sound only and nothing else. And that Nomu you sent was definitely defective if a kindergartner could defeat it, Shikaragi said harshly to his master and the doctor. Speaking of which, where is the Nomu your master and I created? Responded the doctor on the TV. Yes, why is he not with you? Repeated the master. It was blown away. Responded to Kurajiri after seeing that Shigaraki didn't want to respond. This received a surprising response. It was all that straw hat kid's doing, he defeated it before even All Might showed up. Explained Kurajiri further. This is a tragedy and after all the work we put in to make it as strong as All Might. The doctor said furiously. That brat that brat if it wasn't for him All Might would be dead right now said Shigaraki as he pounded the desk like a child throwing a tantrum. He even broke my arm. Well, the silver lining is that this was not a futile mission, we have learned a lot of useful information. Next time we will be better prepared said the master hoping to inspire his own protege some more. Next time gather up your elites and build your troops. Next time Tamura Shigaraki, you will show everybody why they should be afraid. Now back with class 1A. Everyone seems to be alright besides that boy who took on a full hit from the Nomu and the boy with the broken fingers said a policeman to the class 1A students who were now outside the USJ. After the other faculty members arrived Principal Nezu asked them something strange. Half an hour ago. Even though Luffy did beat the Nomu, I do not want any of you to tell the police just yet, I have a few personal contacts in the police who I trust with sensitive information. But until everything begins to get a little clearer, I want you all to say that All Might defeated the Nomu. Said Nezu who was now at the entrance to the USJ with a sleeping Luffy. But why sir? I can't imagine All Might being okay with this. Said Izuku not believing that his number one hero would want to steal someone else's spotlight. Yeah plus I also have a few questions of my own said Yuraka slightly annoyed at not getting answers, which caused a few of the other students to agree with her loudly. And they will all be answered in due time, and as for the reason All Might is getting the credit meant for Luffy, is because Luffy doesn't have a license to use his quirk in combat yet, even though it was self-defense. Said Nezu with his chipper voice as usual. Lying is never ethical, but I suppose that protecting a classmate is ethical. So for the sake of our class representative I will lie. Said a very uncomfortable Ieda, clearly not liking the fact that he has to lie. Thank you very much said Nezu as he was leaving the group. 
And I assure you, I will give you the answers you deserve. Present time. I still can't believe the amount of power Luffy displayed. Said Tokoyami as he was talking to a small group of boys from his class. Yeah man you should have seen him all close and personal. I'm still seeing Kinda Blurry. Said Kirishima in response. Yay but don't forget about Bakugou, he totally saved Mr. Azawa when he went in after the hands guy. Said Mineta praising Bakugou. I didn't forget about him, he also manned up and jumped in without hesitation. It was super mainly. Alright time to get these kids onto the main campus for now. Said the policeman while getting the bus ready to send them to UA. But sir, what about Mr. Azawa? Said Asui as she hopped in front of him. Nothing too serious besides a couple of broken cones and a crack in the skull. He was lucky for All Might to appear when he did or he could have suffered severe brain damage. Said the policeman while pretending that All Might saved Azawa, him knowing it was actually Luffy. What about Luffy? Momo asked worried if something had actually happened that she wasn't aware of. Luffy? Oh you mean the boy with the straw hat he doesn't seem to have any injuries besides being little tired and hungry. He said which made everyone release a sigh of relief. Okay time to go back to campus everybody he said this caused every student to the bus. But Nezu and Midnight. It is frightening to know that a group of villains could have so much power and resources. Said Nezu referring to Nomu and Kurajiri. What's more frightening is the fact that a bioengineered monster designed to kill All Might was defeated by a single boy. Care to explain? Midnight asked the animal who in turn just looked at her. I promise I will give every bit of information I have from this student, but after this whole mess is sorted out. After that I will reveal everything. Nezu said with confidence, hoping that his explanation would be good enough. I hope it can explain that then. She said while pointing to the crater in the middle of the plaza. Yeah, me too. Said Nezu. Chapter 7. The calm before the storm. Most of the UA teachers and the police officer from yesterday were seated in a conference room. Right now they were discussing everything that happened at the USJ. I think it's safe to say that our security needs an improvement. Especially after this incident. Nezu started off the meeting. I agree. The policeman continued his train of thought. From what little camera footage we have and the eyewitnesses, it's safe to say that this won't be the last time they attack. Most of the thugs were low-level villains who resorted to mugging people in back alleys. But yesterday they were all under the leadership of the masked man. Unfortunately we don't have too much information on him, based on the other students, only a couple coming into close contact with him. If only I could have our skeletal man with blonde hair stopped himself for a brief second, sweat rolling down his forehead. I I mean if All Might could have arrived there earlier, we could have put a more in-depth psychological profile on the villain, and that is why we are here. Nezu said as he looked at the student who was in the middle of the conference room. Or better said. That is why you are here, Mr. Luffy. Luffy right now was eating some biscuits given to him by the little bear. As usual, he had no idea why he was in a room full of heroes and a normal guy. Huh, Luffy you are here to tell us what you know about the guy with the hands covering his face and the Nomu. Now get on with it, I don't have all day. Azawa hurried Luffy. He right now was wearing two splints on both arms, and his head and chest were covered in bandages. Azawa felt as if he could fall asleep at any second right now, even though his entire body itched, and he felt like one wrong move, and he would feel unimaginable pain. Every teacher begged him to get some more rest. But he would not budge, he would be at this meeting as if his life depended on it. Truth be told, the only reason he was there was Luffy. Ooh, those guys well, let's see. Luffy said as he plopped on the floor, concentrating hard to think right now. Oh, okay, there was this guy, he was covered in hands, he kept saying the bird guy was his, and he was really weak. That's it. Said Midnight surprised that such a huge crowd of villains could be led by the guy Luffy just described. Yeah I didn't even break a sweat when I broke his arm, Luffy said it like he was bragging to his parents about a good grade. Huh? Wait you broke his arm? Said a surprised Vlad King. Well, uh. He was going to kill the frog girl Luffy said which just made everyone question who frog girl was. He means Sayu Asui, a student in my classroom with a frog-like quirk. Said Azawa as he tried to scratch his temples. I know you did it to protect a fellow classmate and that he is a villain. But next time, choose a less drastic approach. Now continue. There was also this smoky purple guy, he made a bunch of portals. He was also weak. Luffy said as he munched on some delicious cookies. The villain with the warp quirk. Very rare to see, which makes him extremely valuable to the League of Villains. Anything else about him? Asked Snipe. The purple guy. Not really, but he was polite. Said Luffy which did not help the others. And then there was the bird guy. Honestly, not that tough. As far as strong people go, he wasn't that strong, but he gave me a little workout, even fell asleep. Guess I've been slacking off from training, huh? Luffy said while thinking that he should get back to training, to at least last longer in battles. Training. What kind of training do you do? Azawa thought with a raised eyebrow. You call making a crater and blowing a hole in the dome a little workout. 
said Midnight. She thought that the kid was putting on a brave face, but then again, he did manage to get out of that battle unscathed. We need more of a personal background. Things he said how he talked, how he responded to events. Stuff like that. Said the detective with a notepad and pen at the ready. Um, he didn't say anything or really did anything besides attack me or whoever attacked those two other guys. Said Luffy which just made matters worse. So you're saying that he doesn't have a personality? Asked the cement hero. Besides protecting his bosses. Well I don't know about that, but it's more like hug, like, like. Luffy said as he thought of a way to make them understand. It's more like he doesn't have a will. Will? Said as Awa to the excited kid. Yeah when I blasted him with my hockey to knock him out, it was like I was hitting a brick. Luffy said unbeknownst to him that he just made everyone more confused. Hockey? Asked Snipe. Hold on, Professor Snipe, we will get around to that in today's meeting, now let's focus on the task at hand. I agree, from what I can tell you mean to say that he is a mindless drone? Asked a skeletal man, only to receive a stare with a frown. Mr. Luffy? Asked Nezu as he was getting his cup of tea ready. Can I help why? Hey, do you know all night or something? Luffy asked the man who in turn proceeded to have an almost heart attack. WWW what do you mean by that? The skeletal man at this point was sweating buckets while every other person thought two things. Can you be any more obvious? And how did he knew? Well, whenever I feel your aura, it feels like all night's just way weaker. Said Luffy who in turn caused a sweating skeletal man to look at him in pure horror. Admitted. A hey, admit what why young man? I mean man just man he said as his arms were starting to get heavier by the second and his knees to tremble. Just say it, it's pretty obvious. He somehow managed to figure it out. Said ectoplasm with a couple of the other teachers nodding. Is he some sort of genius? Asked a detective, completely surprised at Luffy figuring out one of the greatest secrets in Japan. It's so obvious now said Luffy to a skeletal man. You're all night's brother this caused most of the teachers and a detective to face vault. Am I right Luffy more so said than ask thinking he had it right. Never mind. The detective said. I should have expected this. As Awa really wanted to get these splints off so that he could pinch the bridge of his nose in pure frustration. Why why yes, that's it Yan M man. All Might thanked his lucky stars that somebody with such an ability can be this much of a dumbass. B but it's a secret so you can't go telling anyone about this. This is gonna cause some confusion when Luffy inevitably blurts it out. As Awa said to the other teachers, who responded with a nod. It's better than the actual secret. Yeah, dig. Yamada loudly said in his seat, next to Azawa. Stop yelling. It's way too late for this kind of noise. As Azawa said, planning to get an aspirin for his headache later. Well yes, I agree. It is getting late. Nezu said as he looked at the starry night sky. I hope the answers you received were to your liking. I admit, I have been hoping for more. But this will do for now. The detective said as he got his coat on. If there is nothing more then I will take my leave. A time to go home I'm so hungry. Luffy said as he ran leaving behind a startled detective. By everyone. But before he could exit the room. Wait, I think you should know this too. Nezu stopped him. Alright, I know I have promised some of you some answers and I am here to give it. So there is no need to snoop around. Nezu said as he looked at Azawa who in turn just scoffed and looked the other way. The reason that Luffy has such a low IQ and the reason that Luffy looks like he has multiple quirks is because. Nezu said as every teacher in the room was looking at him. Experimentation. Yep, that's the route I'm going with, if y'all don't like it, then idk. I spent way too much time thinking of this and experimentation just makes the most sense. This caused the room to feel a sense of pity and even a few slight gasps from some of the more heart-kind heroes. Experimentation. Are you serious? Asked a disbelieving Azawa, one of the ones who did not gasp. That topic is one I wouldn't lie about so casually. Nezu said, lying through his teeth. Okay then, how can you explain his combat experience? Azawa said trying to find holes in this story. He did jump without hesitation into battle. Not even gonna say anything about his gears, the facility where he grew up, he was forced to fight by the people he was experimented on. Gradually becoming more and more skilled in the usage of his quirks. Nezu explained, hoping this story is believable enough. Okay, I guess that explains that. But what are his quirks exactly? Azawa kept up his interrogation. Well besides from the obvious. He has a quirk called hockey as he said before. Nezu said which caused All Might to pipe up. He did say he sensed my weaker aura and my buffed up forms being one and the same. All Might reminded everyone. Is that what Haki does? Let you sense other people? Asked Vlad King, becoming more and more interested in classes 1 a rep. From the little that I know, it also lets the user predict incoming attacks. Nezu said, based purely on the reports he has read of Luffy in battle. What about the quirks, where he can make his hands a shiny black, or the one where he emits light from his punch? As Awa kept asking. I'm afraid that's all I know, if you want any more information, you can just simply ask him. 
But I advise against that. Nezu warned them. Oh? And why is that? As I was said, which caused a few teachers to facip him. I speak from experience when I say that it's not nice to ask about such an event. Nezu said in his usual happy manner, but the way he emphasized that word sent some shivers down the teacher's spine. I'm sorry, but there are still some holes left to fill. Why is he so obsessed with pirates? And if he had no schooling before UA, how did he manage to pass the written exam? Azawa kept pushing, hoping that something would crack. I theorize that the reason he admires pirates to this extent is because of an event in his childhood where a pirate somehow managed to help him in some way, shape or form. Nezu kept saying, not breaking under Azawa's questions. You theorize, huh? Azawa retorted, but it did not stop the animal from continuing. And as for the reason he passed UA, I admit that I have taken a liking to Mr. Luffy since we have shared such an experience. And since UA was the perfect way to oversee him as he re-enters civilized society. I decided to help him in the written portion of the exam as a way to keep him on school grounds. This caused a few eyebrows to be raised at the principal, not quite believing what they just heard. I know what you may think, but do not think that I would accept a person who could be in an emotional unstable place or who I don't think could be a pro hero. Nezu finished his explanation, awaiting the responses from his staff. I will say this, I am surprised to see that the principal would break his own rule. But this young man, who is purely a victim of circumstance, should have every chance as any other student, besides I also believe that he would make a great pro one day. All Might said as he was thinking back to the entrance exam, seeing Luffy's goofy smile never disappearing for more than 10 seconds off his face. Well, from what I've heard, he was chosen democratically as the class representative, which means that if he is getting treatment, then it's clearly working. Said the school's psychiatric counselor. Your decisions have never led us astray before, so I will trust your judgment. Midnight said, soon to be followed by every other teacher saying something similar, well almost everyone. Thank you all very much for your trust, I hope I won't let you down. Nezu said as he did a slight bow. Azawa, your story is plausible, and I have no reason to doubt you. So for that I won't have any objections against Luffy staying in UA. Azawa said as he was nearing the door. But do not misunderstand, if I find that he has ill intentions or is hiding something. Then I will not hesitate to expel him. Feel free to do so, Nezu said to Azawa who already left detective. Ah, he was startled at being addressed all of a sudden. Why, yes. I am not a part of UA so I cannot have any objections. But I will keep this secret that you can depend on. Thank you very much, and that concludes our meeting Nezu said as he and everyone else got out of their chairs. But Luffy, after the meeting. Momo oi, Momo Luffy called her name as he exited the building oh, Momo there you are. Here I am, now let's go the car is waiting on us. She said with a troubled expression on her face as they neared the limousine. Get in. The car ride was nothing special, the street sparkled with lights, even though it was nearing 7 pm, the limousine was quiet with the only sounds coming from the radio, since this luxurious car was soundproof, the radio was the only thing you could hear. After a couple of minutes of silence, Luffy was tired of the boring jazz music playing on the radio, so he decided to start a conversation. Oi Momo, check this out. Luffy said as he put two small sticks in his mouth, making him look like a walrus. I'm a walrus. That's disgusting. Momo said looking up from her phone where she was browsing the news. You don't know where those could have been. Ah, you just don't know how to have fun. Luffy said as he crossed his arms and spit out the sticks. In response, Momo gave a slight chuckle. Oh yeah? Then maybe you should teach me. Momo said, after a second of thought she realized what she had just said and instantly regretted those words. Wait wah. That's an awesome idea Luffy said already bouncing with excitement. Let's have a party. Me and my big mouth. Momo scolded herself under her breath before turning her full attention to Luffy. Luffy look, it's not that I don't want to have a party, but there are other things to consider, huh? Like what Luffy's face held a surprise, he thought that if there was ever a time to have a party, then it would be now. Like the fact that my father won't allow it. Even the way she said it betrayed the fact that it was a poor excuse, eh? But didn't he say that he'll let me hold a party whenever I wanted? Luffy said the thing that Momo feared. Well he actually said it in the near future. Momo tried to continue this reason of why he wouldn't be allowed to have a party. Same thing. This caused Momo to sigh. Her shoulders were stiff and her posture was rigid, maybe she needed some sort of break, especially after the USJ. How about the fact that this is not the best time? Momo said thinking she got one on Luffy. Truth be told she never knew when was the best time for a party besides birthdays, holidays and important business transactions at her family's company. What are you talking about? This is the perfect time for a party Luffy said it as a fact. Oh really? And why is that? Momo asked genuinely curious to see what the rubber man would answer. Because after a battle we need to have a party to cool off for a bit. Luffy responded to Momo, who was genuinely shocked at the fact that Luffy actually gave some good advice. 
it's just common sense. Well maybe, but who are we going to invite? Just us, Tenya, Midori and Yuraka. I don't think that's enough for a party. Momo said well subconsciously, she was starting to like the idea of having a party. What are you talking about? Are you stupid or something? Luffy asked as if Momo just said that meat is not delicious. You're the last person that gets to say that Momo snapped half-heartedly at Luffy. But what do you mean? It should be obvious, we're inviting everybody, Luffy said as he spread his arms as much as he could in the limo. You mean the whole class? She asked only to receive a nod in response. Well, it's still not going to work. You still need to ask my father for permission, and I doubt that he'll give it to you, we'll see about that. Luffy said as if he accepted a challenge, only for Momo to scoff in return. Did he honestly think that her father will allow a bunch of children at a party led by Luffy? Not possible. Yeah, I have no problem with it. Momo's dad said as he was going to his office with a newspaper in hand and a coffee in the other, leaving behind a completely shocked Momo and a celebrating Luffy. Yahoo see? I told you Luffy said as he laughed triumphantly at the fact that he was right and Momo wasn't. F father you cannot be serious, didn't you deny Luffy's parties for about two weeks in a row? Momo tried to find the method to the madness. I did say that he will have a party in the near future, and that future is now present, so congratulations Luffy. It seems you got your end of the deal. Momo said which made Luffy beam with happiness. Plus, I thought you said you wanted guests, did something happen? Trust me, Luffy is more than any guest I'll ever need. Momo said as she began massaging her temples. I suppose there is no stopping it now. When will we do it? Momo started asking Luffy different questions to which he had almost no answers, she should have guessed it. At school. Did you guys see the news last night? Asked Hakaga her classmates in hopes of passing the time. Right now they were in their classroom waiting for the teacher to come in. Yeah, what about it? Responded Ajiro, the one seated next to the invisible girl. We totally got a few seconds of screen time, although I doubt anybody noticed me. Said a now sat in Toru. Probably not. Agreed Shoji, the duply arms quirk user. This only made the invisible girl sadder. We're totally big deals. Said a proud Denki. The news channels love us. Bet over yourself. Said Jiro in an annoyed tone. They only care about the hero course, not the students. Who knows what would have happened to us if the rep wasn't there. Siro said while looking at an eating Luffy. Probably All Might would have saved us. Tokoyami assured the other students. But to be able to stop the monster that was meant for All Might, I only shudder at what his other gears look like. I think you're being overdramatic. Said Siro who was also looking at Luffy. But you gotta wonder. How can a student be so strong? Before anybody else could say anything, Iida was heard scolding the class for not being seated as he entered the classroom. But you're the only one who isn't seated. Said Ajiro to the class deputy. Yeah, we are all seated. Said a snickering Denki. Bang it said Iida in embarrassment as he took a seat, which caused a reassuring comment from Yuraka and a hearty laugh from Luffy. Oh man this never gets old. Luffy laughed as if he heard the greatest joke ever, even though he heard it every morning since Iida became his right hand man. Soon after the door was opened as a mummified Azawa walked in. Good morning class. His voice was muffled by the bandages. Who lay mummy Luffy said which caused a few snickers from his classmates and an eye roll from Jiro and Momo, although Momo's more from fondness than anything. Sir I'm glad you are feeling well said Iida with a raised hand. Is that really feeling well? Questioned Yuraka from behind Iida with a look of worry. My well-being is irrelevant, if you want to worry about anyone then worry about Bakugou. He said as everyone turned to their explosive friend who now was wearing a simple sling and a couple of bandages courtesy of Recovery Girl. Don't you dare. Bakugou growled as much as he could without getting in trouble. Anyway, these bandages are unnecessary, seeing as how I'll be removing them after this lesson. As always said to reassure the class, which mostly worked. What's more important is the school sports festival. As always supplied the topic of this lesson. The outlet's G. Kirishima was about to finish his cheer when a certain electric user stopped him. Wait a sec, is it really a good idea to hold this event so soon after what happened? Denki along with most of the class shared his worry. That means you better not slack off on your training. That's it. As soon as Luffy heard these words he was out of the class already running to the cafeteria. I swear, our class rep doesn't have anything but food on his mind. Mina said as she and everyone else was getting ready to leave for a recess. Actually hold on, I guess this is as good as time as any to tell you guys, so nobody leaves yet. As always said which caused every student to plop back into their own seats. But what about Luffy, shouldn't he hear this? Toru asked, concerned that Luffy was missing out on possibly important information. Do you honestly think he pays a lick of attention to any classes? Ever. Said Jiru which caused a lot of the other students to agree with her. Actually, this is about Luffy. As soon as As always said this everyone in the room quieted down and a tense atmosphere enveloped everyone. Okay, I'll just keep it short and sweet. 
You see, Luffy has been experimented on as a child to have multiple quirks and was forced to fight by them, that's why he is so strong. Nothing was said, you could hear a pin drop in the classroom as each student looked at their teacher with a variety of shocked faces. That's it. Class dismissed. Hold on was what pretty much everyone said when their teacher tried to leave. You can't just drop a bomb on us like that and then peace out, Kirishima said as he almost got out of his seat. Um? More like a noob Denki said as he turned to his red-haired friend. What do you mean the rep was experiment on? Mina asked in a face with a mix of shock and pity for the pirate. El Luffy? Momo uttered under her breath, with eyes as wide as the sea. You never told me. She felt pity and betrayal at the same time. Look, I don't have all the details, if you want you can ask him. As always said as he looked at everyone's faces of worry. But you shouldn't do it, eh? And why not? Bakugou said a bit annoyed at the fact that the reason Luffy was ahead of him was because he basically cheated by having multiple quirks. Of course you shouldn't ask him, you idiot Jiru said as she lightly yelled at him. Can you even imagine what he's been through? In response, Bakugou only scoffed instead of insulting her back. And Izuku's head. And I thought I had it rough, I bet my life was a dream compared to his. Then he is truly worthy of being class representative. Iida said as he stood up in an attempt to defend his superior. To be able to smile even after everything that had happened to him, he is a true hero. The ones who smiles are the biggest are the ones who hide the most pain. Tokoyami sagely chimed in. Out of everyone here, Luffy may be the only one who can understand what I went through. Todoroki thought as he looked at his desk. Technically it's not wrong. Be but, isn't he like a danger to society? Said Mineta what some other students were too afraid to say. How can you honestly say that? At the USJ he jumped so that he could take on all the villains by himself. Said Toru in Luffy's defense. I would probably be dead if it weren't for him. Ribbit. Asui said as she remembered being inches away from an agonizing death. Yue wouldn't have allowed him in if he were crazy, we are not that stupid. Azawa said putting all thoughts of Luffy being a serial killer to rest. Now if that's all, I have to get these stupid bandages off me. Oh, and I think it goes but try to act natural around him. Now the students watched as their teacher left the classroom leaving behind a quiet class. Okay guys just be natural and don't bring up any unwanted trauma, Kirishima said as they all waited for Luffy to come back and begin their second lesson. Yeah but you can bring the wanted trauma if you want Denki said which caused a few laughs to break out. It helped relieve the tension, but it came all back when they heard the door opening. Ah man, that was good, Luffy said as he walked back to his seat with his eyes closed and hands behind the back of his head. Apparently, the whole class failed theater class as they all stared at Luffy like he would disappear if he wasn't watched. What? Luffy asked as he watched every eye in the room look at him. Do I have something on me? Luffy, why didn't you ever tell me? Momo asked in a whisper that could be heard in any close proximity. You know, I would have never laughed at you or anything. What are you talking about? Luffy was getting more confused by the second. You know, we don't think any less of you. Now or ever. Yuraka said in an attempt to comfort her friend. Yeah you are just as manly as always, Kirishima said as he flexed his biceps and gave Luffy a toothy grin. Huh? Luffy started to get angry too. He used his hockey, but all he could feel was pity from the other auras. You are just as magnifique as always, Manami. Aoyama decided to pipe in. His French accent was very clear. I admire the way you hide all that pain behind your smile. Izuku also tried to comfort his class rep. It reminds me of All Might. What pain? What are you guys talking about? Luffy was a couple of sentences away from marching out of the classroom. Fortunately for him, the teacher came in. What's popping? Little listeners he yelled thinking the class would be dead bored for upcoming the English lesson. Only to find everybody looking at Luffy with a look of pity and an angry Luffy. What? We found out about Luffy being ex Mineta winced from the pain of having an earphone jack stuck in his arm, not being able to finish his sentence. What he means is that we found out about, you know. Jiru said as she tilted her head at Luffy. Found out about what? Luffy was nearing dangerous levels of anger. And present Mick, being the pro that he was, quickly found out about what they meant, and he responded in a way to calm Luffy down and start the next lesson. Luffy look, as a part of the hero agency, I say that we are sorry for not being able to help you when you needed it. Actually what he did is purely fan the flames. The class could swear that they saw Luffy's hair becoming white for a split second before Bakugo came in and somehow managed to save the day. You idiots, as always said to act normal, but what your dumbasses are doing is just making him angry, so stop coddling him. Rubber brain, don't you gotta eat or something. This made Luffy forget all the anger he felt as he reached into his backpack to get a big sandwich. Wow Bakugou, never expected this from you. Said Asui genuinely impressed. Only to have him snap back at the frog girl for the backhanded compliment. Alright, alright, let's get this English business on the road Yamada said which reminded everyone what lesson they had. Almost all of them proceeded to slump in their seats. At lunch hour. 
Biraka, Ida, Ezuku, Momo, and Luffy were all going to the cafeteria to eat. Well for most it was the first time that day, for Luffy it was the third time, and that's not counting the packed lunches. Come on let's go let's go let's go Luffy said in quick succession in an attempt to hurry his friends. We're gonna miss it, I doubt that. Izuku said with an amused smile on his face. He was still amazed by the fact that still with all that trauma, Luffy could still keep his goofy self. Technically not wrong. Anyway Yuraka, I wanted to ask you something, um? What is it Deku? Responded Yuraka. Why do you want to become a pro? Izuku asked, which in turn caused Yuraka to shudder. Well, you see Yuraka tried to draw it out as long as possible, hoping someone would come to save her. It's the money. Nobody came. The money? Momo found herself repeating the question. I had no idea middle class families live so badly that the only way to make money is by becoming a pro. No 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 no, it's not like that. Yuraka quickly tried to take out the thought that she was broken from their friend's mind. I just want to get a license to be able to help my family with their construction company. That's all. Oh I see, with you being able to use your quirk in public, you could do the work of dozens of heavy machinery. That's not a bad idea. Izuku found himself admiring Yuraka again. With your ability to float you spend way less money. Oh yeah you can make people fly, Luffy said as he remembered Ida flying out of the crowd. Make me fly, please. Are you sure? Is this even legal? Yuraka asked her friends. I don't see why not, we are on school grounds so that means that we can use our quirks in public. Momo chimed in, who was standing next to Luffy who was nodding aggressively. Sure, if you want. She said as she touched Luffy's arm, making him float. But if something happens to you, then it's not my fault. Wow this is so awesome I feel like I don't have any weight. Luffy said only for him to reach the ceiling and be stuck there. He then proceeded to shoot his arm to reach for Momo's suit. What the? Luffy Momo scolded the boy for making her clothes wrinkled. Shishishi, sorry. Luffy laughed as he proceeded to float right above Momo. Anyway, don't you guys think my goals are too greedy? Yuraka got back on track as she asked her friends. While holding her face in embarrassment at having such a greedy goal. No way, you'll still be a hero, that's all that matters. Izuku reassured his crush. Exactly your goal is to support your well-being, which is a perfectly fine ambition to have Iido also reassured her, well various robotic poses with his arms. Money is important, if you have an ambition that follows that statement, then it's nothing wrong with that. Momo gave her a nugget of wisdom. She had a good understanding when it came to the value of money, since she comes from a business focused on making money. Thank you all very much. Then she looked at the floating Luffy, wondering what he is gonna say. I don't care. Luffy said which made Yuraka sad and a little angry from not getting the validation she wanted, the mood also intensified. What do you mean you don't care? Yuraka asked trying to keep her calm facade on. I mean that making money, it's not that big of a dream. Luffy said which just caused the gravity girl to get angrier. Oh, so what? My dream not good enough for you? Mr. King of the Pirates. Yuraka said as she glared daggers at the class rep. I didn't say that. Luffy said with a blank expression at a now confused gravity girl. If making money makes you happy, then I'm happy. D thanks. Yuraka was slightly taken aback by the fact that Luffy said something so wise. Ha 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 ha, young Midoriya is here, All Might said as he turned a corner. Hey All Might. What are you doing here? Izuku said slightly taken aback by the fact that All Might appeared out of seemingly nowhere. Lunch you want to eat with me? All Might said as he showed a packed lunch in front of everyone. I want it, Luffy said as he reached for the packed lunch only for All Might to dodge out of the way. Oh come on. I'm sorry, young Luffy, but this is my lunch. I want to eat it All Might said to the flying Luffy, who in turn just stuck his tongue out and pulled on his eyelid. Don't think you're all high and mighty. Cause I know your secret as soon as Luffy said this, all the color from Izuku drained away. Leaving only a husk. Oh no 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 no, if Luffy knows then everybody knows Izuku was desperately trying to get his racing mind under control. But secret said all the other students. I I doesn't matter Izuku said as he was waving his arms. Let's just go All Might. This is for sure going to create some confusion. All Might thought with a sigh as he and Izuku went to his office. The last lesson of the day. Eyes wait Luffy said as soon as everyone got out of their seats, ready to go home. I gotta tell you something. Oh no, is this about before? Or is it because we know his past? That was pretty much everyone's thoughts, despite the smile on his face. Yeah rep. What's up? Siro asked, hoping it was not what he thinks it is. We are having a huge party at my house Luffy said, only to be interrupted by Momo. He means my house. Momo explained, but Luffy did not stop. It's gonna be super fun, we'll have food and music and all sorts of cool stuff, it's gonna be all night Luffy continued hyping this party. That's not true. And it's captain's orders that means you gotta come, Luffy said as he finished his little speech, leaving behind a surprise class. The party at the Yayoi Rozu mansion. 
Iman said Mina and Tor are not missing a beat. Wait a second. Don't get us wrong guys or anything. Ciro said. But is this really the best time? Uh, obviously we just had a battle, so now we gotta celebrate Luffy said it as if it were nothing but the obvious. After every battle we celebrate. Those are the rules. He's right after the eventful week we had, we deserve a break so that we can rest Ida commented. This could also prove to be a great bonding experience. He finished with a robotic wave. Well, you're not wrong. It could be fun. Ribbit.Asui agreed with most of the class. Yeah I can't wait to go Kirishima said, already excited. Yeah man, I'm gonna bring my video games Denki was not far behind. The party at the Yayoi Rozu's. Mineta asked himself as he looked at Momo. Definitely, I could bring my Karaik set. Jiru said as she fidgeted with her ears Jack. That could be fun. My dazzling self will also make a plus grand entrance at Aoyama. I, I've never been to a party before so I don't really know what to do. Izuku said as he stared at his desk sheepishly. There is nothing to do, besides have fun your Raka encouraged him. It's gonna be great. Good, then it seems like Ev Luffy was about to finish. Hell no. When Bakugu interrupted him. I'm not going to some nerds with a ponytail house just to be around a bunch of losers and other nerds. As for Luffy, he looked completely taken aback like somebody stole the last meat from the fridge. Yeah, sorry guys, I'm also not coming. Todoroki agreed with Bakugu. It's not my sort of thing. He said as he got his backpack and got ready to leave. No way I said it's captain's order, so you gotta come said Luffy as he stood in front of Todoroki's way, not allowing him to leave. You're not my captain Bakugu snapped at Luffy while also getting ready to leave. You can't order me around. Oh come on guys, it's gonna be fun Mina said trying to convince the two of them. Don't be such buzzkills. I really am sorry. Todoroki said as he vaulted over the desk to be on the other row. But I'm not coming. As for Luffy, he looked like someone just curb stomped his dog. It's fine Luffy, they'll just ruin the fun anyway, so it's not a huge loss. Yuraka tried to comfort him. Who in turn just received a whimper. Who are you? Todoroki said as he looked at the hallway being filled with people not letting them go. Now everyone in the classroom turned to the new commotion that was being caused. What business do you have with our classroom? Iida said as he got into his deputy role. Why are you blocking our doorway? We will not be held hostages, Mineta said as he pumped a fist into the air. They're scouting out the competition you idiots. Said Bakugu as he walked past a scared Mineta. We are the class that survived a real villain attack, they want to see it with their own eyes. At least now you know what a future pro looks like, now move it extras, Bakugu said as he glared at them, Izuku and Yuraka were freaking out at a potential war happening, while Iida was waving his arm at Bakugu to stop calling people extras. So this is class 1A, I heard you guys were impressive, but you just sound like an ass. Said a new arrival, he had purple eyes and purple hair. Is everyone in the hero course delusional? Or is it just you? This caused Bakugu to look irritated, most of the class to shake their head rapidly, and for Luffy to come near Bakugu. If any of us do well at the sports festival, the teachers can decide to replace a student in any of the hero courses. So you want to steal a spot in my crew? Is that it? Luffy asked the new arrival dead in the face, which caused a lot of muttering from both outside the class as well as inside. Your crew? The student said with a chuckle. That's a cute way of saying it, and yes I will take a spot from here. Consider this a declaration of war. You think you know what war is? In war, brothers die. This is just jealousy, if you'd have been good enough you would have already started here, but I guess you're not. Luffy said in an even tone which caused a very massive tick mark over the student's head. Now hold on the entrance X the student said only to be cut off. It doesn't matter what you think, the truth is you weren't good enough. You think you are now. I wanna see it, but don't think we'll just slack off so you better bring everything you got, because the day you take a spot here without my permission is the day I failed. Luffy said before he left everyone in silence. T that was Sue Manly Kirishima said as he wiped a tear from his eye. Yeah, no kidding. Denki was not far behind. Soon after everyone left with a variety of different emotions and feelings about what just transpired and the way Luffy defended his class. Luffy's comeback only served to further motivate not only his classmates but also the other classes. And soon word spread out throughout the entire school. At the Aoi Rozu mansion. Five minutes before the party. Oh my goodness, this place is huge, Midoriya said as he looked at the mansion. Even though he was outside the gate, it was still impressive. Good afternoon Midoriya said Iida as he slightly startled the shorter teen. I hope your days of training have been well. Yeah, I mean my muscles feel sore all over, but this little break is just what I need. Izuku said while rubbing his arms. It was two days after the two training weeks have started, each student doing their utmost to live up to Luffy's speech and their school's reputation. Hey guys Yuraka said loudly as she ran at the two of them like they were going to disappear. We what do you have there? Oh this. Izuku said as he looked at his gift. My mom said it's custom to bring a gift at a house invitation. So I packed something from my room. 
How about you guys? Oh, it's nothing. Just a phone case. Yuraka said as she presented them the phone case with the Hero 13 on its back. I, of course, have brought a homemade salad perfectly rich in vitamins needed for our training, Iida said as he waved his arms at what looked like a packed lunch. Oh. That's, practical. Yuraka said slightly confused at the weird gift. Thank you very much Iida responded with a slight bow. Oh great, what are you nerds doing here? The trio turned to see a familiar spiky-haired blonde boy with anger issues. Akigu. What are you doing here? Iida asked as he put his hand on his chin and thought. Yeah, I thought you said that this is a nerd's party. Said Yuraka with a teasing smirk. Does this mean you're a nerd? The hell it does Bakugu snapped which made Izuku flinch. After my old hag checked the group chats behind my back, she forced me to go. Oh, I guess Aunt Mitsuki hasn't changed. Izuku said which made the explosive boy glare at him. Anyway, what are you extras doing here? Waiting Bakugu said as he tried to not look impressed by the giant house. Actually we have all just arrived, we were getting ready to approach the intercom. Iida said which made Bakugu approach it himself. So? Just do it. Bakugu said as he pressed the button. We are here for the shitty party, now let us in. I don't think that's how you're supposed to say it. Izuku thought with a bead of sweat rolling down his forehead. Name? The intercom said back. Bakugu Katsuki. He gave his name with a slight glare. Which one is that? The one with the green hair? The intercom said back with a slightly teasing tone. I'll blow your ass to bits Bakugu said very angrily, while Izuku just yelped. Ahaha, I'm just kidding. Don't get your panties in a twist. The intercom said as the gates opened. In you go. But the TSK from Bakugu, they all started to walk towards the secondary gate. So Kaken, what did you get? Izuku asked in hopes of making conversation. It's called Ask Me. Bakugu said while staring ahead. Ask me? Yuraka repeated, confused. Ask me again and I'll shove my hand up your ass. Bakugu said while getting slightly ahead of everyone. Should have expected that. Yuraka said with a slight shudder from the visual Bakugu provided. Classic Kaken. Izuku said with a slight smile. As they reached the front door, they rang the bell and waited to see who would open the door. Apparent that someone was a grey-haired butler. I take it you are friends of Ms. Yeoi Rozu and Mr. Luffy. He said only to receive two yeses and a no. Very well, follow me. Meanwhile, Yuraka was thinking something completely different. Oh my gosh, an actual butler with a suit and monocle and everything. Wow, it's bigger on the inside Izuku said with a look of fascination. In fact, everybody had this look, even Bakugu had a hard time hiding his admiration. That's everyone's reaction. Now if you'll follow me to the party hall. The butler said as he guided them to a living room with a lot of food, snacks, drinks, and music. This room is literally bigger than my entire house. Yuraka said as she looked astonished. Oh look who showed up Dinky said as he greeted the four new arrivals, but really only talking to one person. Guess you joined the nerds call too, huh? I'll kill you Bakugu said as he started running after the electric boy, who in turn was screaming with a mix of happiness and horror. Hey guys Luffy greeted the now trio. Glad you guys could make it. I am happy to be here, class rep Iida said as he did a small bow and gave Luffy the salad, who in turn ate it instantly. No that was meant for the whole class Iida said, as if he had just lost a huge bet. To be honest I'm surprised you gave food to Luffy and expected him to no eat it. Yuraka said this only caused Iida to fall into greater depression. Lem show you guys around Luffy said as he pointed at different spots in the room. There is the TV, Calamari got some of his games, and now some of the other guys are playing there. He said as he pointed at a couch with a giant 4K TV, where, Siro, Ajiro, and Tokoyami were playing a fighting game against each other. Then we got the music place, earphones got something called karaoke or something, where you can sing to music. It's awesome he said while pointing at Amina and Toru doing a duet in front of Jiru, Aoyama, Koda, and Mineta. I like singing, but sometimes they cover their ears, I don't know why. Then we got my favorite place, the food table. You go there, you eat and you talk. I love it. He said while pointing at a table with little to no food left, courtesy of Luffy. At the table Kirishima and Shoji were having an arm wrestling competition, nearly breaking the table. And then we have the book's corner. Nothing interesting happens there. Luffy said as he pointed at a corner bookshelf with a couple of bean bags. Only Momo and Sue were there, playing chess. Oi Luffy come on, we said whoever wins gets to arm wrestle with you, Kirishima said as Shoji was grumpily walking away. That's it, now go do whatever you want Luffy said before turning to Kirishima. I'm coming spiky hair. Wow, is this how all parties are? Izuku said as he was eyeing the TV, already wanting to go play the All Might fighting game. They are a lot more separated than I thought. Yuraka said while looking at the music place, always wanting to try her hand at music, she hasn't been to a lot of parties, but she guessed it would have been more connected. Yes, this is truly the best way to form closer bonds, Iida said while gazing at the book's corner, wanting to try his intellectual might against Yeoi Rozu. 
Soon after they all quickly dispersed, each going to the place they felt like they belonged the most to. Oh, come on man it didn't even budge an inch Kirishima said, salty about his loss. Heh, next time you need to be way stronger, Luffy said clearly enjoying his win. Hey what are you guys doing? Are you guys wrestling? I wanna join Luffy said as he jumped into what was Bakugou kicking Denki's ass. Don't you dare rubber brain unfortunately, Bakugou's threat was too late seeing as how he jumped right on Bakugou. I wanna do it too, Kirishima said as he quickly jumped on top of Luffy, who was on top of Bakugou, who was on top of Kaminari. Iicc can't be be breath Denki said as he struggled for breath. Ugh, boys are such barbarians, not having even a lick of culture. Momo said as she watched the quickly forming group pile. Anyway, I win. Arnidi Ida said angrily, mad that he lost in only a couple of moves. Is this the new All Might Ultimate Symbol of Peace 3 game that just came out? Izuku said as he took a seat on the couch. It's so hard to get a copy that even I'm struggling. Yeah, you can play as All Might versus all the villains he faced. Ajiro said as he watched Tokoyami and Siro beat each other, one using All Might and the other best genist. You can also play as the other heroes. Damn it, of course you're gonna win with All Might, it basically says it in the name of the game, you were just lucky too that you picked first. Siro said as he almost threw the controller. How does the ancient saying go? Don't hate the player, hate the game. Tokoyami said which just made Siro angrier. That's not even ancient Siro then looked at the new arrival. Oh wasp man wanna play? Yes, please. He said as he took the controller and picked All Might. Of course. Siro said with a sigh. Never gonna say a lie and hurt you Toru sang as she, along with Mina, finished their song. If you know, you know. Woo man, I'm exhausted, my throat hurts. Mina said as she got on the armchair and opened a bottle of water. You said it, I've never singed that long and loud before. She said as she got on the round couch. Who's next? Can I try? Yuraka said as she got up from her seat. Sure solo or duet. Toru asked, but before she could respond she heard another voice. You guys done? I wanna sing Luffy said as he ran towards the Karaik station. No no, wait Wamineta couldn't even finish before being interrupted by Yuraka. Sure, Luffy. Yuraka said as she gave him the other mic. No, trust me you do not want to do this, Jiru said so more in a whisper, so that Luffy couldn't hear her. Oh come on, how bad can he be? Yuraka said as she picked a song she liked. Well, don't blame us if your ears start bleeding. Jiru said as she got ready, physically speaking. One song later. Woo man that was fun not as good as Brooke's songs, but I liked it gonna go check on Momo, see you guys later. I apologize, I know what I did wrong, and I hope you guys can forgive me. Yuraka said as she massaged her ears. Not really helping. Ah it's fine, it's actually our fault, we should have insisted on it more. Said Toru as she took her invisible fingers out of her invisible ears. Next time I'm asking Momo for a pair of earplugs. Mina said which caused a round of agreement to go around the group. Alright, you guys time for dare a truth, Luffy said as he caught everyone's attention. And after a quick elbow in the side. I mean truth or dare. Okay so, how does this work? Luffy asked around the group. Right now they were all seated in a circle on a rug. I believe that the objective is to ask a question and based on the answer, you either give them a question or a challenge. Iida said as he did various poses with his arms. Yeah, but this time with a twist, Mina said as she got a glass bottle, seemingly out of nowhere. The bottle does the choosing. So who goes first? Oh Mimi Luffy said as he grabbed the bottle right from Mina's hands and placed it in the middle of the circle. So now I just spin it, right? After receiving a nod he spun the bottle, which landed on Momo. Now what? Now you ask me truth or dare. Momo answered his question while sweating a bit. Okay, truth or dare. Truth. Responded Momo, no way am I ever going to give Luffy a chance for him to make me do something. Now ask me a question. Okay, what's your favorite type of meat? Luffy asked the only question he could think of. No no no, you're supposed to ask her some juicy question, like who do you love? And is he here? Stuff like that. Toru informed Luffy, only for him to look at her like a white piece of sheet. Um, I guess Kobe beef. I think. Momo gave her answer which made everyone look at her like really. Oh wow, what a surprise, the rich girl like rich food. Bakugu said which made a couple of people glare at him. Oh you better pray you don't fall on me. Jiru said with an evil grin. DSK, am I supposed to be scared? Bakugu retorted. Oh you will be. Jiru said in response. So now what? Now Momo spins. Said Asui, which she did just so only for her to fall on Mina. Truth or dare? Asked Momo. Hmm, I'm feeling adventurous. Dare. Responded Mina only to get a slightly panicked Momo. Um, I don't really know what to say. She said and after thinking over it for about a sec. Break dance. Okay Mina said more excited than Momo thought anyone would be. Wait, Mina you can break dance. I never knew this. Said Yuraka in slight surprise, while Mina was picking a quick song. Yes, she told me once that she breakdances in casual conversation. 
Momo commented, then proceeded to watch as Mina did the windmill, the head spin, the bigger windmill, and all sorts of other tricks, it quit it's called. Woo, I haven't breaked inst in front of so many people in a while. I was a little nervous. Mina admitted as she came back to her place. Nonsense, you were tres bien. Mon cheery. Aoyama said with a twinkle in his eye. Yes, very impressive Ida also commented. Okay, now my turn. One bottle spin later. Everyone looked at the man in question. Midoriya truth or dare this caused Midoriya to slightly panic. I can't choose truth cause then my secret may be found out so I guess. Dare. The whole class proceeded to comment on him on his bravery and say things like he will not be forgotten. I dare you Mina said as she looked at an explosive boy. To make your best impression of Bakugu, huh? Don't you dare Deku Bakugu said as he nearly got up and marched to the green-haired boy. Oh come on, don't be such a buzzkill. Denki said while snickering. Yeah, just do it dude, we'll hold off Bakugu from killing you. Kirishima said this did not help Izuku in this situation, but since this is a bonding experience. I'll kill you, Izuku said doing his best to keep his hair spiky and make the angriest harsh voice he could. I'll kill you this caused the real Bakugu to respond in the same way, which made half the class roll on the ground laughing, while the others were trying to keep Bakugu away from committing manslaughter, while also laughing. After a couple more spins Jiru finally landed on Bakugu. Truth or dare? There, I ain't a coward. Bakugu replied with a small growl. That's just what I wanted to hear. Now the dare is to call the last person you texted and say meow. Jiru's dare made a lot of people laugh, not thinking Bakugu would actually do it. You are gonna do it right. After all, you ain't a coward, right? I'm not scared of shit. Bakugu said as he picked up his mom and dialed his mom. Meow. I said meow you old hag, who did you call? Ask Asui the question on everybody's minds. My mom. This made everyone laugh wholeheartedly, while others kept calling Catboy. I'll kill every last one of you, I swear to all might. After a couple more spins, the last dare came around. Can you give us a tour of the house? Asked Yuraka. Really wanting to see where she would end up, hopefully. Don't bother, there's nothing interesting in this whole mansion. Said Luffy reminiscing the first day he came here. That can't be true, in this whole mansion. Asked a skeptical Dinky. It's true, the only places even remotely interesting are the garage and my gym. Said Momo which just got everyone more riled up. Of course you have a private gym. Thought you're Raka and a couple of the other students. Let's go Kirishima said as he jumped into the air. At the garage. Wow no way. Amazing. Is that an actual Rolls Royce? And several other comments like these were made when they entered the garage. These are some nice cars. Sai said as she looked at a Ferrari. I need my phone just imagine the amount of likes I'll get Mina said as she opened the door to a Lamborghini. These cars have some impressive engines. Iida said as he looked at a Porsche's engine. But why is that car set apart from the others? Siro asked when he looked at a very expensive car that was in a corner. Oh, that one. Luffy would you mind explaining Momo asked the straw hat, who only gave a toothy grin. Oh, I lift that car. Luffy said it as if he lifts cinder blocks, not cars worth more than 10 of the students' houses combined. The weights in the gym are too light for me. You're telling me you build muscle by lifting a Bugatti Divo? Asked Kirishima, who was slack-jawed. I don't know what's crazier, the fact that you build muscle by lifting cars, or the fact that that car is literally in the top 10 most expensive cars in the world. Asked Denki, it was probably both. The gym. Ooh, very nice it's perfect for a handful of people, Izuku said as he eyed the weights. I have these kinds of weights, so this is Yerozu's gym. Mineta said as he looked everywhere. Very interesting. Your gym has better equipment than most gyms I've been at. Kirishima said as he looked at the treadmill. And the ring. You take lessons with somebody. Ajiro said as he looked at the slightly tattered ring. Oh, yeah. Me and Luffy have been sparring from time to time. Momo said which caused a couple to gasp like she just admitted to fighting bears in her spare time. And you're still alive. Asked a non-believing Mina. Of course, I'm still alive, Momo said in a bit of a surprise that no one was believing her, then yet again, she can't really blame them. Back at the party hall. After a couple of more games and mingling with everybody, they all said goodbye to one another, already feeling their bond strengthen. They were all happy at the least. I'm dead tired. Said Momo with a sigh as she plopped on a beanbag. I feel like I could fall asleep at any second. That means the party worked, Luffy said from his place on the couch. Hey Momo, I wanted to say thanks. Thanks for helping me and going through this whole party. After not receiving anything in return he continued. Thank you for always being in my corner and having my back. You know if I wanted to see Luffy was cut off by a light snore. When he looked over at where Momo was, she saw her snoring away like a little baby. Deciding that he should at least do this much, he picked her up, bridal style, and brought her to her room. 
After gently placing her down in her bed he left, but not before hearing a very slightly welcome, but a grin on his face, he decided that this would be a good time to go to eat and sleep, after all, in two weeks the sports festival starts. Chapter 8. Obstacle race and cavalry battle. I'll take one order to go please. Said Mount Lady in as a seductive tone as she could while her mouth was salivating like she was seeing food for the first time in months. Her Kamui Woods and Death Arms were hired by UA to be security regarding the last events that happened at USJ. Wow, Mountain Lady is it really you? Said the shopkeeper to the heroine. The sports festival attracted a large audience both at home as well as in person, so the principal took advantage of that and allowed vendors to come and sell their products. And keep the salt, please. She said as she was holding a finger. At the same time, a certain straw hat wearing teenager was looking at all the shops with drool coming out of his mouth. Of course, that will be 10 bucks the shopkeeper said as he tried his best not to look at her curves. Um, oh no my money is in another costume. She lied while leaning on one foot, looking at the ground and playing with her hair, which also managed to rock her breasts, making her look very desirable. So hot the poor shopkeeper said while trying very hard not to pull a sanji and nosebleed. This is one is on the house. Aren't you a dear mount lady said as she very quickly and graciously accepted his offer. Oh hey can I get one too, Luffy said as he suddenly appeared near the heroine, slightly startling her and the other heroes. I also don't have money. Uh. No way. The shopkeeper said as he looked over the teen. His chance of getting food was next to zero, seeing as how he wasn't a girl. Uh. But you gave her Luffy said in protest while the heroine was devilishly smirking. After not receiving an answer. Ugh you're just like Sanji. Sorry kid, guess you're just not good enough. Mount Lady said as she began to turn around and walk away. Then give me yours, Luffy said as he reached and grabbed Mount Lady's food, but before he could eat it, Mount Lady grabbed the hand that was holding her stolen food. Don't you dare Mount Lady said as she began a tug of war over her free given food. This is my food I paid for it. That's a blatant lie. Kamui Wood said as he watched with a slight smirk under his mask. Imit, Luffy said as he almost got the food to his mouth, only for Mount Lady to close Luffy's jaw, making him bite his tongue and let go of the food. Ow, ow, ow hey, you're supposed to share your food, says who? Mountain Lady said as she got back to eating her food, only to find it completely mushed. Look what you did now nobody can eat it. I'll still eat it, Luffy said with a smile on his face, while an irritated Momo was searching for him. No way I'd rather throw it than let you have it, Mount Lady said as she began an intense glaring daggers competition with Luffy. What are you? 5. Just let it be. Wood said as he began going back to his post with death arms. Come back when you grow up, okay? Finally, Luffy come back the games are about to start, Momo said as she sighted Luffy from afar. When she got in closer, she noticed the intense staring competition between the two of them. What now? Momo she messed up my food Luffy said not taking his eyes off hers. Some would say this would be a romantic moment, but the teeth gritting and slight growl made that impossible. It was my food Mount Lady could feel the blood veins on her forehead become more and more accentuated. Look, I am sorry for whatever he did, but we are in a hurry, Momo said as she grabbed Luffy's collar and began dragging him away. Looking like a light bulb went off in his head, Luffy turned his sour expression into one of slight surprise. Hey hero lady you gotta teach me how to make people give me free food. Huh, in your dreams, you brat. Mount Lady said as she did a very exaggerated turn. Luffy, you can't go five minutes without getting into trouble, can you? Momo said as she let go of Luffy and began pacing faster toward the stadium. You do realize we are running late because of you, right? Shishishishi, sorry Luffy said looking slightly apologetic. Hey, I have an idea. What are you Tom Momo was cut off by Luffy putting her on his shoulder like a bag of potatoes. W what are you doing? Don't worry, just hold very tight. Before she could even comprehend what he meant by that she heard. Gomu Gomu no. Crap Momo decided not to question it and she held it tight as she could while getting into a piggyback position. Luffy now jumping with full force and at the same time pulling on his arms that were holding onto two lamp posts, yelled. Rocket. Ah Momo was doing her best to 1. Not have a heart attack. 2. Not fall off Luffy. 3. Not kill Luffy. Luffy she yelled only to receive a laugh. In the waiting room for class 1A. Hey guys, do you think they're gonna make it? Nina asked her classmates as they anxiously waited for them to come back. I mean, we only have like 5 minutes left and they're still not back. I'm sure they'll be fine. I mean what's the worst that could happen? Ajiro asked as he started pacing around the room. Exactly have no fear I am sure our class rep will make it in time, Ida said, desperately hoping he was right. I wanted to say this to Luffy too, but since he's not here. With a sigh Todoroki approached Midoriya, while also managing to get everyone's attention. Midoriya. H hey Todoroki, what's up? Izuku said, slightly startled at having the quiet boy, who rarely said anything, all of a sudden approach him so publicly. From an objective standpoint, I think it's fairly clear that I am stronger than you. 
Todoroki said with an ice-cold expression. Um ah, yeah. He was also startled by having Todoroki just brag about it so casually. However, you've got All Might in your corner helping you out. I'm not here to pry about what's going on with you two. But know this, I will beat you. Todoroki said as he finished his own declaration of war. Wow, what's with all the declarations of war lately? Denki said in an attempt to elevate the tense atmosphere. Yeah, what's the big deal? Why are you picking a fight all of a sudden? Kirishima said as he got up from his sit and put a hand on Todoroki's shoulder. And right before we got started, Koda, being the closest to the window, saw two very conspicuous flying objects or people. He couldn't tell. But him being the shy boy that he is, was having a hard time announcing it to the class. We're not here to make fry Todoroki was interrupted all of a sudden by two voices from outside. Open the window open up Koda being the closest open the window, only to have Luffy and Momo miss the window completely, break through the wall and land on the three boys. Shushi shushi aw man that was fun Luffy laughed as he was deactivating his hockey on his arms. Let's do it again. Wow you guys are crazy, Mineta said as he looked in terror at the hole in the wall. Don't lump me in with him, Momo said as she got back up and tried her best to keep her racing heart still. You idiot you could have killed us. Sorry Luffy said with a slight giggle before stopping and looking at the student beneath him. Ice guy. What are you doing there? What do you think? Todoroki said loudly as he pushed Luffy off of him while trying to maintain as much dignity as he could. Glad you guys could make it. Izuku said as he was also getting up. But maybe next time, try to use the door. I said I was sorry Luffy defended himself only to have the whole class let a bead of sweat roll down their foreheads. But before anyone could say anything, they heard an alarm which signified that the sports began. What are you guys still doing here? Let's go Luffy said as he got out of the classroom and run in a different direction. But a very audible sigh. I'll go after him and meet you guys outside. Momo said as she began running after the straw hat, a stadium. That's right it's the students who survived the USJ attack class 1 a present, Mick said as he finished introducing class 1A. Some of the students were feeling anxious because they were in front of such a big crowd. Yay thank you all Luffy was not one of them, he waved his hands in the air at all the cheering spectators. Why are you thanking them for? Izuku asked as he tried his best not to shiver from being in front of such a huge crowd. For cheering for me. Luffy said it as if it was obvious, which made Izuku sweat drop. I don't think they are cheering for you. Izuku thought but decided not to ruin Luffy's good mood. Present Mick sure did talk us all a bunch, makes me feel kinda nervous. Kirishima said as he looked at the huge crowd surrounding him. How you feeling man? Oh, I'm not worried. Said Bakugou with an evil grin. Makes me want to win this thing even more. Now that all the students rounded up they waited for the hero to come to kickstart this whole festival. Turns out that, that hero was the R-rated hero in Midnight. Who, like usual, was wearing a very tight and thin bodysuit. Silence everyone she said as she whipped her whip. And for the student pledge, we have Monkey D. Luffy. Oh no, are you serious? Mineta said as he looked at Luffy going near midnight. He's totally gonna bomb it in the teacher's booth. I still don't think it was a good idea to have young Luffy do this year's student's pledge. All Might said with increasing levels of worry. We didn't really have a choice. We always use the top of the entrance exam leaderboards for this speech. Ectoplasm tried to comfort the NR. One hero. Still don't think it's a good idea. All Might confessed. Ah, don't worry All Might. I gave him a rough idea of what he should say. Nezu said which did not help in the slightest. Back on the stadium, as Luffy slowly got on the platform he came face to face with a microphone and with a deep breath, he said. I forgot what I had to say. I'm not even surprised. Thought the whole of class 1 and the teachers. I knew it. Said All Might as he fascipumed, but Nezu's smile never went off his face. Midnight trying to salvage the situation whispered. Just say something about yourself and give an inspirational speech. Oh, okay I'm Monkey D. Luffy the man who's gonna become the Pirate King unfortunately, nobody knew what he was talking about. But to become the Pirate King, the little bear said I had to win this thing. So, good luck with second place Luffy finished saying. This caused all hell to break loose, all the other classes booed Luffy, majority of Luffy's classmates looked completely shocked at Luffy for basically declaring the first spot for himself and some of the other classmates to stop Bakugou from not going to kill Luffy right then and there. Why do I feel like you, sir, are getting more and more comfortable with lying? All Might said to Nezu. I've never had a problem with lying before. This is just the first time so many of my lies have been discovered. Nezu said while smiling at Luffy. What the heck Luffy? Momo said as he shook him multiple times. Now they are all gonna come for us said a scared Mineta. They were already going to do that. Luffy said after Momo stopped shaking him. Besides, I have no problem with that. Well, it's not like anything has actually changed. Said Yuraka trying to find the silver lining. Without further ado, it's time to get started midnight said as a giant TV popped up behind her. Yue isn't really letting us catch a breath, is it? 
Yuraka said slightly surprised at the fact that they were jumping straight into the trials. The first fateful game of the festival Midnight said as the giant TV showed it randomly choosing the game. What could it be? The obstacle course in this game, your goal is to complete the circle around the stadium as quickly as possible, Midnight said as she pointed to the entrance to the race. As long as you are in the course you are free to do whatever your heart desires. Now then take your place as contestants everybody quickly scrambled to the narrow hallway. As everybody put their own game faces on as they waited for the countdown, Luffy's face held a toothy grin. As soon as the third light turned off and Midnight said Began, everybody ran as fast as they could to get out of the narrow hallway. Bug stop pushing me Luffy said as he was getting pushed from all sides, quickly realizing what to do, he just started climbing on people and walked on them as fast as he could. What the? Hey that's not fair and several other comments like these were said by the people whom Luffy stepped on. This is the first obstacle. Luffy heard Todoroki's voice before a giant ice wave hit the entire hallway, freezing most of the people inside. Apologies. Hey not bad ice guy Luffy, unfortunately for Todoroki, said as he started running on the frozen ground side by side with Todoroki. But you kinda froze some of our friends inside, they are not my friends. Todoroki said as he released an ice wall in Luffy's path, stopping him momentarily. And neither are you. I didn't expect so many people to dodge that. Todoroki said as he looked behind at most of his classmates and a couple of others leaving the hallway. Nice one you guys Luffy cheered his crew. Wow it's those big robots. So the others had to fight these robots, huh? Todoroki said as he looked at about five giant zero pointers, coming in as an obstacle. They obviously went through a lot of trouble, but I wish they prepared something a little more difficult. As soon as Todoroki finished his sentence, one zero pointer who was closing in on him was hit by a giant ice wave attack, freezing at mid-step. Wow it's like that one admiral's ice attack from before Luffy said, in his mind thinking of the ice age the admiral used. Careful now. I froze them while they were off their balance. When Todoroki said this the giant frozen robot started to fall on the other students. On purpose. Ooh very nice Luffy said as he once again appeared side by side with Todoroki and received an annoyed TSK. Now let me show you one of mine. Gear third. Now Luffy with two giant sized fists started spinning them and pushing them back while jumping face to face with a zero pointer. Gomu Gomu no. Grizzly corkscrew magnum and with full force he brought down his two rotating giant fists on the robot's face, destroying it in the process. For those wondering, rifle plus giant pistol plus hockey plus bazooka. He only used this move in the anime against Katakuri. Impressive. Todoroki said as he glanced at the falling robot. But that's only to be expected. Wow with an impressive display of power, Luffy and Todoroki take the lead with a destructive start with Luffy being slightly behind. Truly impressive of the classes won a rep and the recommendation student present make commented on them taking down the zero pointers with little to no problem. They are true forces of nature thoughts. Todoroki's attack was both offensive and defensive, while Luffy's attack was destructive. Both of them managed to seriously slow down the other opponents. As always said from the commentator's booth. Present Mick having dragged him in there. Looks like Bakugou is finally starting to catch up. Todoroki said as he slid across the ropes of the next obstacle which is the fall. The fall is a giant pit with many islands connected by ropes. Took you long enough Luffy said as he was jumping from island to island, using his rubber body to make springs and hockey to harden them, the technique learned from Bellamy. I hate you, Bakugou said as he tried to blast Luffy out of the sky, only for Luffy to push him behind him, in midair. Stop pushing me, in the crowd. The dudes in the first two places are so far ahead. Said a random spectator. The guy in front has a very powerful quirk, but is his natural athletic talent and keen thinking that is keeping him in the first place. Said a guy with three eyes. But the other one behind him, his quirk doesn't seem that powerful, but the creative way he uses it puts him above the others. Well, I'm not surprised about the first one, his father is Endeavor. But the other guy, I have no idea who he is, but his smile reminds me of All Might. A red hair extra said as the screen focused on both Luffy and Todoroki, Luffy wearing an ear-to-ear -ear smile, and Todoroki having an ice-cold expression. Yeah I bet a ton of agencies will want to get their hands on those two said someone. Back with Luffy and Todoroki. Okay, last one this is E. Luffy was cut off when an explosion went off under his feet. Huh, mines. As much as I hate it, I can't take it fast without giving others a path. At least I'll be able to deal with Lou, his thoughts were cut off when he saw a certain straw hat running full speed ahead without a care in the world. What the hell? Are the mines not activating? No, he isn't stepping on a single one. True enough, Luffy with his future sight was able to pinpoint the sweet spot of where he needed to step. And just like that, Luffy takes the lead running full speed ahead without touching a single mine, does he know where they are? Or is he just lucky present Mick said as the whole crowd watched a gap between Todoroki and Luffy widen. So this is what hockey can do. Thought every teacher and a couple of his classmates who were just now catching up. 
you icy hot bastard your declaration of war was to the wrong person, Bakugu said as he threw an explosion at Todoroki, making him stumble back and put some ice on the ground to not set off any mines. Leaving him behind. Rubber brain you're next. Wow, wow what's this? Todoroki now fell to third place. And Bakugu is gunning after Luffy now. What a turn of events present Mick said as he watched Bakugu quickly fly over to where Luffy was now. Sorry, can't let you have first place. Todoroki said as he started running on ice towards Luffy, with Bakugu side by side. Hey, what or why Luffy was cut off by having to dodge an explosion to the back of the neck and breaking the ice wall in front of him. What the hell guys, you said the first place was yours. I'd like to see you try Bakugu said as all three of them started throwing hands, explosions, and ice at each other. But before any one of them could actually do any real damage they stopped when they saw and heard a giant pink explosion at the start of the minefield. What the? Bastard Greeny they all said at the same time as Izuku was coming at them from the sky on a piece of metal. And just as he surpassed them, Izuku was seen flying over them, taking the lead. Uhuye Go Luffy was cheering Izuku on as he, Todoroki, and Bakugu stopped their fighting and went to catch up with Izuku. Don't you dare Deku Bakugu yelled as he and the others were neck and neck with Izuku. Izuku proceeded to use his momentum to stomp on both Bakugu and Todoroki's backs, and then using what strength he had, he slammed the piece of metal into the landmines. Huh? Unfortunately for Izuku, nothing happened because the piece of metal never hit the landmines, the only thing it hit was Luffy's hand. Before he could even think of what happened, he hit the ground detonating several mines all at once. While Luffy said as they were all blown up, making each of them in the lead as they left the minefield. I don't even know what happened, but it looks like there are now four people in the first place who is gonna be the first to arrive. It's not much now present Mick said as he shouted near Azawa's ear, making the other hero groan in frustration. Don't you losers dare Bakugu said as he began using more and more power with each of his blasts. I can't lose here. Todoroki thought as he began skiing on the ice. Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap Izuku thought as he strained every muscle in his body to be as powerful as possible. Beer second Luffy said as his skin now turned a slight pink with steam coming out of his body. And the winner is present Mick said as he waited as patiently as he could for the first person to go through the finish line. Monkey D. Luffy. And soon after the other participants came in, with Todoroki getting second place, Bakugu for third, and unfortunately, Izuku getting fourth. The whole crowd burst into cheers, and Luffy was happily eating it up. At entrance to the stadium. Oh, hey look it's the kid from earlier Death Arm said when he noticed Luffy's goofy face getting plastered on the TVs on the outside. Yeah, he destroyed Mount Lady's food. Wood said as he looked at the other contestants walking in. I still have to thank him for that. The SK Mount Lady made a very irritated expression on her face for a split second before turning back to the paparazzi. Back at the stadium, Buhuye I won Luffy said as he bounced up and down. Soon after all the other students started to pour in. Oi Momo I W. He stopped talking when he saw Mineta on her back, clinging as if his life depended on it. Anyway, you see. I won Luffy said to Momo who was looking in slight horror and mostly gratitude at a knocked out Mineta on the floor. I saw nicely done Luffy Momo said as she was doing her best to keep her breathing under control. Listen up only the top 42 can continue to participate, but don't worry the others can do all sorts of different stuff. Midnight said that last part with a bit of a seductive tone and a lick of her lips. Now the real fun is about to begin, let's see what else we have in store for you. As soon as she finished, the TV behind her finally showed the next upcoming game, which was a cavalry battle. What's that? Luffy asked the people around him. It's a bit hard to explain. Momo said, but before she could proceed Midnight did it for her. Yep, like that. The last place has only 5 points, and with each place, 5 points are added. Midnight said as a leaderboard was shown. Which means that the first place has 10 million points. What? Luffy said as he started feeling predatory vibes from the auras around him, besides Momo and a few others. That sucks. Momo said thinking that teaming up with Luffy may have a bit of a disadvantage. Wow, so that's what it means to be at the top. Izuku thought as he looked at Luffy scratching his ear while all the people around him were looking at him like a lion looking at a piece of steak. So those are the rules. This is going to be rough, but you can use your quirks as much as you like, but be warned, if you make a team full you will be immediately disqualified, Midnight said as she finished the rules of the game. Now you got 15 minutes to build your team I recommend you get started. Okay so, Momo Luffy said as he got face to face with Momo. Let's make a team. I was afraid you were going to ask me that. Momo said after she thought about it for about a minute. Sure. A Luffy said as he looked at people getting into their own groups. Now, who else? So I am sorry Midoriya, but think of me as a full-fledged rival from now on. Iida said, refusing Izuku's invitation to the team. Hey, glasses wanna join. Luffy said slightly startling the boy. I am sorry class representative, but just like I told Midoriya, I still am in your shadow. 
I will join a decent group and become the winner. Consider this a declaration of war. Iida said as he began looking for other teams and walking away. Good luck Luffy said in a carefree way while Momo's heart was beginning to pound. Now, who is going to join our team? Momo said with a finger on her chin. This was troubling, sure Luffy was strong, but 10 million points puts a giant mark on your back. Spiky hair, wanna join us? Luffy said to Kirishima who was standing near a couple of people. Um, look guys, it's not that I don't wanna join you. Kirishima said as he was trying very hard to look for an excuse. B but I already joined Bakugu's team, huh? Since when Bakugu said with a tick mark above his eyebrows. Come on man, think of the team we'll make. I won't get hurt by your explosion. Kirishima whispered to Bakugu with his back turned to Luffy. We'll be unstoppable. Yeah Bakugu said with a demonic grin on his face. Thinking that he will be able to blast as much as he wanted. SC guys I'm sorry. Kirishima said while scratching the back of his neck. Maybe next year. It seems nobody wants to team up with us. Momo said in frustration, unbeknownst to her another participant was approaching them. Hey Mr. Captain. Want to team up? The purple hair student asked the team of two. Shinso? I believe that is your name. Momo said to do the purple haired student while Luffy was thinking it over. I'm surprised, I thought you hated our class. I don't hate your class, I hate the system which picks and chooses candidates for the hero course. Shinso reasoned. Plus, if I win the cavalry battle with a team that has 10 million points, it's bound to put me in the teacher's crosshairs for choosing a student to your crew, as you called it. Hey Momo, this isn't the last game is it? Luffy asked his partner while looking at Shinso. No, after this, there is usually a tournament between the winners. Momo answered his question while looking at Luffy. I see. After thinking about it for a second. I don't want you to replace one of my crew or the others, so no. Shinso expected this to happen, in truth he had very low hopes of joining the captain's team. I see, good luck finding another teammate. It's getting pretty late. Wait for a second Momo said before Shinso could run off. Luffy come here for a sec. Yeah, Momo. Luffy said as they turned their backs to Shinso. Do you have some meat? No no, listen. I think we should let him on our team. Momo said which caused Luffy to gasp. Look I know what you are going to say, but, we don't have a choice, if we don't find at least one more teammate we will be disqualified. Luffy didn't budge an inch, so Momo reassured him. After this, we will have a tournament battle, so you can always beat him and make sure he doesn't join our class. Seeing that Luffy began to think it over she decided to go in for the final push. I don't like it too, but we need at least one more, and then you'll never see him again. Ugh, fine. Luffy said his turn to Shinso. Congrats you are on our team. Try not to slow us down. I'll do my best captain. Shinso said as he drew closer. Now, what do we do? I think we start talking strategy. Momo offered her input. I don't think anybody else will want to team up with us. So with that in mind, let's talk quirks. While Luffy's team was formulating a strategy. More like Momo and Shinso. A certain pink haired girl was looking for the 10 million points boy. Hey we met earlier remember? Yuraka said to the support core student. I meet a lot of people. I don't remember all of them. The pink-haired girl said as she didn't even turn to Yuraka. Now I gotta find the guy in the first place. Look, I saw all your gadgets and stuff. I bet we will be an awesome team if we partner up. Yuraka said as she put a hand on her shoulder and pointed toward Izuku and Tokoyami. I don't want to win this festival. The girl said which confused the gravity girl. I just want to advertise my babies and the team with 10 million points is gonna get the most attention, so I have to team up with them. Um. Yuraka was slightly taken aback by her reasoning, but nonetheless, she persevered. Why yeah, but imagine how much spotlight we are going to get if we manage to get the lead, everybody will know our name. That is, if we get it, how can you be so sure? The support student said as she thought about joining Izuku's team more and more. Oh don't worry, we have a plan. She said with a slightly demonic smile on her face, but before she could make any decision the timer reached zero. That's it, the 15 minute timer is up now, ladies and gentlemen, each team has 5 minutes to prepare and put on their respective headband, Midnight said into her microphone. Don't let us down. Crap I didn't find Mr. 10 million she said in a slight panic before turning to the gravity girl. Fine, but you better have a good plan. About 20 seconds before the cavalry battle started. Alright, we each know what to do. Right Luffy. Momo asked the rubber man who was on her right shoulder. She had zero to no hopes of Luffy actually knowing what to do. Yeah, I gotta just steal their headbands, Luffy said in a happy tone which made the others sigh. The plan is to run away. Shinso said to the straw hatter on his left shoulder. We will be targeted and we have enough points. We just need to stall for time, eh? Only cowards to that Luffy rebutted. But before anyone could even start to argue they heard midnight. Alright, the countdown is over time for the battle to start, as soon as she finished saying this everybody started going toward Luffy and his headband. You're way lighter than I thought you would be. 
said Momo genuinely surprised at the fact that Luffy didn't weigh about 300 pounds from the amount of food he eats. This made Shinso raise an eyebrow, thinking. This is light for you? Shinso wasn't as bolt up as the rest of the hero course. You rubber brain bastard how dare you steal first place from me again, Bakugou said as his team went full force for Luffy's team. I'll kill you, you really don't have any manners do you? Shinso said to Bakugou trying to get a response. Probably why you are never going to win, huh? But the Bakugou stopped talking, only looking straight ahead with a blank expression. Now, why don't you give me your headband? Shinso said, making Bakugou remove his headband and start handing it over. Wow, how did you do that purply? Luffy asked a person to his right making him a little irritated at the nickname. I have a name that was my quirk, whenever somebody responds to my question I can brainwash them. Shinso said making Luffy widen his eyes a bit. Wow that's awesome Luffy said while stretching his hand for the headband, only to be cut off by Todoroki's team, which consisted of Aoyama, Todoroki, Denki, and Iida. Bakugou snap out of it, Kirishima said as he pinched Bakugou's leg, waking him up. What the? Bakugou looked confused for a second, looking at his headband before quickly putting it back and focusing his attention on Luffy's team. You bastards you tried to trick me. You have to be more careful about your surroundings. Said a new rival with a tone filled with smugness as he snatched Bakugou's headband. You never know what could happen. As Bakugou's team was fighting with Monomoas. Luffy was face to face with Todoroki. Luffy, we have to steer clear. We can't afford to be cocky. Momo said as she tried to rein in Luffy. Aoi Rozu huh? I would have chosen you if you weren't so attached to Luffy and the student who declared war, I don't know his quirk, but I have to be careful, especially Luffy, I don't know what kinds of other abilities he could hide. While Todoroki was having his inner monologue several teams were getting quickly disqualified. I didn't get the chance to say this before, but I also declare war on you Luffy, your physical prowess and the way you use your quirks are all just standards that I have to achieve. Todoroki said which made Shinso wonder what he meant when he said quirks. Ugh, why is everyone declaring war all of a sudden? It's starting to get really annoying. Luffy said as he lightly slammed his fist. Ow. Shinso said even though he didn't sound hurt at all. I can't believe my idea made so many copycats, can't think on your own, huh? Unfortunately for Shinso, Todoroki chose not to respond instead he said. I hope I see you in the finals, Luffy. Deciding that confronting Luffy is too much of a risk and as a parting gift, he threw an ice wall in front of Luffy. Then we can see who has better hopes of becoming the NR. One hero. I thought you said that if people respond to you, you can brainwash them. Momo asked Shinso after making sure that nobody is in their near vicinity. Only if they respond to my question. Shinso said as they were sticking to the outskirts of the arena. Trying to be as hidden as possible. About five minutes later. Hello, person in first place May's voice was heard from afar, which made the entirety of Luffy's team turn their head to recognize Izuku's team. I have come for your spotlight, who are you? Luffy said before turning his head to notice Mineta and Sayu on Shoji's back. Ah we are getting boxed in. I have come for your points rep Mineta said without having a headband. Get them, Sue. Asui threw her tongue as fast as she could to Luffy's headband. Unfortunately for her, her speed wasn't fast enough because Luffy caught her tongue in his fist. Oh no. Was the last thing Asui said before getting dragged to the ground along with her entire team. Nice one Luffy, now we got one more dot Momo said as she looked at Dark Shadow reaching for Luffy's headband. Omu Gomu no Bazooka as fast as Luffy could without being in gear second, he threw a massive two open palm hit at Dark Shadow and making it go back to his owner. Ow that hurt Dark Shadow said with a tear in his eye as he got back to Tokoyami. I apologize Dark Shadow. Tokoyami said as they tried their hardest to catch up to Luffy's team. Luffy has both offense and defense on his side, we shouldn't go after him. Plus, we already have enough headbands to reach the finals. No way birdhead I need that spotlight, Mei said as they didn't stop jazzing Luffy, making Tokoyami sweat drop at his new nickname. Wait a second Luffy said as he stopped his two horses. Why are we running? Let's get them. Luffy, we talked about this. Yes, they are alone now, but we can get quickly overwhelmed. Momo tried to reason with Luffy. Don't care. Let's go Luffy said as he stretched his hand for the other's headbands, only to be swatted away by Dark Shadow. You rubber brain bastard they heard Bakugou yell as he came at Luffy from the side, making their only escape route backward. Those points are mine. Crap, we only have one way to escape. Momo said as she looked back, only to see Todoroki come. Oh no we are trapped. We had to bail out last time, but with the headbands we have now, a spot in the finals is secured. Todoroki said as Aoyama launched a laser blast at Luffy, only for him to narrowly dodge it. Only 30 seconds left to go you better hurry it up, people present Mick said as everyone's attention were drawn to the four teams that were now boxed in a ring of ice, making Luffy's escape nay impossible. We don't have much time, but I will do something that will guarantee us that headband and make me useless for about 10 minutes. Iida said as he roared his engines. 
get ready. As Luffy tried to think of the best way to get out of this, he saw with future sight hockey what Ida was about to pull. Guys, when I say now, jump to the side. Before they could even question what he meant, they heard Ida say. Torque over. Recipro burst as Ida's exhaust pipe started to spew blue fire and the pipes themselves became red from the heat, he gained an insane speed boost that could be missed in the blink of an eye. Now Luffy said before Ida said his thing, and with one inch to spare, he managed to dodge Todoroki's hand. But because of the way Luffy's team was positioned they didn't see Izuku's team, and they crashed into each other. It was a miracle that neither Todoroki nor Izuku fell off, not the same could be said about Dark Shadow. Ha, nice dodge, but don't think that's gonna work on me, Bakugou said as he was flying in the air, using his blasts to give him momentum, he was reaching Luffy at an alarming rate. As Bakugou's hand was near inches from Luffy's headband, Luffy thought of what he could do, and what he did was stretch his head back, making Bakugou's eyes widen. And time present Mick said which caused Bakugou to drop to the ground. Look, I know this cavalry battle is absolute dog shit, you don't have to say it cause I know it, I kept putting it off, and it was a nightmare and a half to write it, but it's done and I'm not looking back. Now time to take a look at our top 5 teams present Mick said as everyone got off their horses. In first place, we have Luffy's team, yay we won Luffy said as he started cheering. That was way too close for comfort. We had too many close calls. Momo said as she held a palm on her forehead. We won, that's all that matters. Shinso said as he plopped on the ground exhausted from having to carry Luffy. In second place we have Bakugou's team present Mick said as Bakugou punched the ground in frustration. That was pretty close, if the timer hadn't gone off, Bakugou would have been disqualified. Kirishima said as he was huffing and puffing. At least it's second place that's better than nothing. Nina said as she wiped her forehead. I don't think our leader would agree with you. Siro said as they looked at a very angry Bakugou. And third, we have Todoroki's team present Mick said as Todoroki was looking at his left hand. I can't believe I used my left side in order to brace myself from Dark Shadow. Todoroki thought as he put his hand over his scar. My instincts still remember everything that bastard taught me. Arnett said he'd annoyed at the fact his special move was shown only for it to do nothing. Don't worry Monami. You did wonderfully. Aoyama said with a wink. It did not help Iida. In fourth place, we have Midoriya's team present Mick said while the team was gasping for air. Huff, I'm sorry Hatsume, you didn't get your spotlight. Izuku said as he placed his hands on his knees. Oh, that's fine I can still advertise my babies in the finales Mei said, as if she wasn't tired. I can't believe we managed to pull it off your rocka said as she sat down. And last but least, we have Kendo's team present Mick said the final team barely managed to scrape it off. Yeah that's what I'm talking about said Tetsutetsu as he was pumping a fist in the air. I thank the lord for blessing us with this win. Ibarra said as she prayed. Now let's take a break to celebrate the festivities see ya soon present Mick said as he announced the break. Hey, Eraserhead let's grab some food. No way, I'm taking a nap. Azawa said as he plopped in his sleeping bag and went to sleep without a care in the world. Chapter 9. Tournament Part 1. Ladies and gentlemen it's almost time for our final round, but before that, good news for everyone that didn't make the finals, we prepared some super fun side games that everyone can be interested in, we even brought in cheerleaders to get the blood pumping present Mick said, as almost everyone got back from their break. Nothing of note happened, Luffy ate almost as much food as there was, Izuku and Todoroki had an interesting little chat, and the girls of class 1 were tricked. Hold on, what are they doing? Said Azawa with wide eyes as he looked at his girl students. Looks like class 1 is going full on fan service present Mick said, as a lot of the boys participants were blushing at the fact that the girls were wearing cheerleader uniforms. Shishishishishishi Luffy laughed while clutching his stomach and pointing at the girls. You guys look so ridiculous shishishi. Well Luffy don't laugh, Momo said with a very heavy blush on her face. I can't believe I let myself get tricked by that little pervert again. I even used my quirk to make these outfits. Momo said as she plopped to the ground. Oh, come on. You couldn't have known. Yuraka said as she put a comforting hand on her shoulder, while also slightly glaring at a laughing Luffy. Besides, we were all tricked. She knew Azawa wouldn't have made them wear these outfits, if only she went with her gut instinct. Now now, girls I appreciate a woman trying to draw attention to herself as much as the next heroine. Midnight said on her microphone which caused a sea of denials to come from the cheerleaders. But we must make preparations to see who will be fighting whom so come closer everyone. As Midnight said this, every participant drew closer, be they cheerleaders or otherwise. Oh man, I can't wait to get this started I have always watched a sports festival on my TV, but to actually be here, Kirishima said as he was brimming with excitement. It feels surreal, what are we gonna do anyway? Luffy said as he was walking side by side with Kirishima, still recovering from the fit of laughter he had to endure earlier. Well every year is different, last year they held a foam sword competition. Siro said as he held a finger up, slightly in the back. 
but it will involve some sort of battle, that much is for sure. After some bickering about there being too many participants in Watnit, a majority of Team Kendo chose to withdraw, leaving only Ibarra Shiazaki and Tetsutetsu Tetsutetsu. After they have said their emotional goodbyes and promises of winning, Midnight proceeded with the tournament, showing who will be fighting whom. Ashido. Luffy asked himself as he saw the brackets. Unbeknownst to him, a pink-skinned girl was severely sulking. Who's that? So I'll be keeping the fights normal, I only switched Aoyama with Luffy. Damn it, I at least wanted to make it past the first round. Mina said as she dropped her pom-poms. She had no hope of winning besides pure dumb luck. Ah don't worry, I'm sure you'll do fine Toru cheered her best friend on, only for Mina to look at her like are you serious? Well you at least made it to the tournament, I didn't even get past the cavalry battle. Well, we always have next year. Mina already accepted her fate, with Tor right behind her. Now that we have decided who our duelists will be, let's enjoy the side games, Midnight said as she walked off with a little strut in her. Several minutes later, Luffy decided to check up on Momo. At the moment she was trying to think of a strategy against Tokoyami, while also putting in her bare minimum into cheerleading. Hey Momo, how you doing? Oh, hey Luffy, you gave up on your scavenger hunt. Momo said a bit surprised at seeing the straw hat approach her. Usually, he would have either gone to the buffet or tried to solve this little side game. Well, I wanted to do it. But I don't know what this thing is. Luffy said as he held up his card. If you want I can make you a smartphone. Momo said, slightly bewildered that Luffy still didn't know what a smartphone is. Nah, the prize isn't meat so I don't care. Luffy said as he plopped on the ground, Momo following closely sitting next to him. Should have expected that. Momo now sat on the ground as they watched some of the other students participate in a side game with a giant ball. Do you think I'll win? Of course Luffy said without missing a beat. Momo always appreciated that part about Luffy. Plus we trained so there isn't anything to worry about. True, but I still have a long way to go until I learn even the basics of hockey. Momo said as she recalled sparring with Luffy. You said so yourself. Everybody learns differently. He said as he started cloud gazing. If I've learned anything, is that you learn the most hockey in the heat of the battle. So who knows. Maybe you learn at this match. Maybe. Momo said as she started to go over everything Luffy taught her, which, besides a few broken bones and bruises, wasn't much. Flashback. In Momo's gym. Oi Momo. Would you call me here? Luffy said as he stood in the middle of the ring, while Momo was equipping her boxing gloves. Those small ones. I need to ask a favor of you Luffy. Momo said which caused Luffy to quirk an eyebrow. Teach me hockey. Sure Luffy said with no hesitation. I gotta say, I thought that agreeing to you to teach me would be harder. Momo said perplexed at the fact that Luffy was so nonchalant about teaching her hockey. In her mind, hockey was a super secret technique that only gifted children could learn, but calling Luffy gifted was a stretch. Why not? It's the least I can do for what you did for me. Luffy said as he started looking for something around the gym. I didn't do anything for you. If anything I'm still repaying you for saving me at the mall. Momo said as she put a hand on her chin. So anyway, how's this going to work? It's not that hard, I just need a blindfold and a big stick. Luffy said, which caused Momo to use her quirk to make just these items. Like these. Momo said as she held out a bat and a black blindfold to Luffy. Yeah where did you get these? Luffy said as he looked at the baseball bat. He had seen it before on the TV but never in person. I use my quirk. Which I told you about one million times before. Momo said with a small sigh, she wasn't surprised at this point. So, what are we doing? I'm gonna teach you observation hockey. Now, normally for the very beginning, we would need something like a giant pink elephant. Luffy said as he remembered the first part of his own hockey training. But we don't have that, so we'll just skip over that step. Everybody learns hockey differently, it took me a year and a half to learn the basics of all forms, but we have only a couple of days. Here put this on. Um, okay. Momo said with uncertainty as she grabbed the blindfold and put it around her eyes. After that, she was forced into a sitting position by Luffy. Luffy, okay, now dodge Luffy said as he prepared to strike. Dodge WH Momo couldn't say anything else, as she felt a baseball bat hit her square in the shoulder, with what must have been the strength of a freight train. What the hell? Momo said as she untangled herself from the ring's ropes. You could have broken my arm it was dislocated and slightly fractured. No way, I barely put any force into that Luffy defended himself. Plus I told you to dodge. I was blindfolded Momo retorted as she wondered how the hell was Luffy so strong. How am I supposed to dodge it if I can't see it? But Hockey Luffy said as he prepared another attack. Dodge. Washington Momo once again found herself tangled. I might actually die before the sports festival. No time for slacking off after this, we will spar old man Rayleigh always said the best way to learn is through pain. Luffy said as he prepared for another home run. So get ready, oh wait I'm not supposed to say dodge. And flashback. I still have some bruises from the hits you gave me. 
Momo said as she caressed her arm looking mad, but her tone said otherwise. I was lucky that any broken bones I had were quickly fixed by our family doctor, or you would have been in serious trouble, shishishi, sorry. Luffy said as he tried to hide his laughing mouth. But you learned something, right, I hope so. Momo said, wishing that all those broken bones and restless nights with Luffy beating her amounted to something. Tokoyami has a strong quirk, and I don't know its weakness. Maybe if I do a variety of different tests during our battle, then maybe I can figure out some sort of claw, stop it. Luffy said as he lightly punched her on the head. You're making my head hurt. Now Momo said as she rubbed the top of her head. That hurt. How many times did you do this when we fought? Luffy said which made Momo momentarily forget about her pain. I think every time. Sometimes there isn't a weakness, trust me I know. Luffy was thinking of his first fight with Kaido, Doflamingo, Katakuri, and many others. If I fought like you, I would be dead right now. Luffy said with a straight face, which was an unusual sight for Momo. Luffy was 99% of the time silly and goofy, seeing this different side of his gave her pause and goosebumps. Sometimes the only way you can win it's just by punching your enemy until he can't get back up. Don't forget that. You have been in a lot of fights, haven't you? Momo asked the obvious after about a minute of sitting in silence. She didn't mean to pry, but she hoped that maybe, with a little bit of luck, she'll be able to look into that rubber brain of his. Yeah, you can say that. Luffy didn't mind sharing, especially with somebody like Momo. More than I can count. I'm sorry, that must have been horrible. Momo didn't like the fact that someone as close to her as Luffy has seen more bloodshed than any child should see. Were you sorry? I don't regret it. You don't? Of course not. If I can't fight for the sake of my dreams, then what's the point in having them? There aren't any other ways of reaching your dream besides fighting. No, not my dream. Huh. I hope I will find a dream like yours someday. One where I would give my life to achieve it. I hope so too. Okay, okay enough chit chatting and games. Let's leave the spots area for Cementus, our resident builder, to make the arena so anybody who is still in the grass area, get to your seats, present Mick said with enthusiasm from his booth, while Eraser Heard was trying to make his headache go away. That's our cue, it's time to go to our class's 1A's area. Momo said as she got up from the ground and looked at Luffy. Let's go. Momo said with a slight smile and an extended hand. Yeah, I'm coming. Luffy said as he grabbed her hand and used it to prop himself up. Soon after they started walking back to their seats. Thanks for the talk. Momo said as she didn't look away from the path in front of her. It helped. Anytime Luffy said as he slapped Momo's back almost making her fall. Okay, he's back. Momo thought as tried to regain her balance. Momo liked Luffy's serious side, it showed that he understood the world rather than just live in it, but she preferred Luffy's sillier side more. Soon after a quick wardrobe change, they got to their viewing space. Mineta was sulking because the girls took off their cheerleader uniforms, which managed to get a tongue slap from Asui. Everybody was there, doing their own thing, besides Izuku. After some time of Luffy eating the other's popcorn and Bakugu getting frustrated at him for causing such a ruckus, Cementus finally finished. Soon after, Izuku's fight with Shinso started. For a second it looked like Shinso would win just by telling Izuku what to do, but after two broken fingers, Izuku just ran him out of the arena. After ending the match and a quick checkup at Recovery Girl, Izuku rejoined his classmates. Ekuhei said you're Raka, while also giving small flashbacks to Izuku from his days of being called that by Bakugu. I am glad you were able to secure your victory, Iida said as he pointed at the seat next to him and Luffy. Thanks, guys. Izuku said as he sat down. It was a close one. Yeah, you almost walked off. Luffy suddenly joined their conversation. Not the smartest guy, are you? And then and no I it's not like that Izuku stammered at having the class rep call him a dumbass. Thankfully he was saved by the quirk creation user. No Luffy, don't you remember? Momo said which caused Luffy to quirk an eyebrow at her. Right now she was peering over the railing to get a better view. Shinso can mind control people, that's probably what happened. Ooh Luffy made an O shape with his mouth. So you're not dumb? IT think so. Izuku was weirded out about the situation he was in. He didn't want to brag about how smart he was, but he also didn't want Luffy of all people to call him dumb. W well, you see. Shut the hell up, you damn nerds, Bakugu said which made Luffy turn to him, and Izuku almost fell out of his seat. Just watch the damn rounds or your ass is grass. Dayu understand. Before any of them could retort present Mick announced the new fighting opponents, Hanta Siro vs Shoto Todoroki. The fight itself looked like it was going into Siro's way, well until Todoroki decided to fight. Momo get down, Luffy said as he pulled Momo to her seat, the ice barely missing her face with only a couple of inches to spare. You okay? I'll be fine. Momo said as she tried to get her racing heart under control. In truth, the ice wouldn't have actually hurt her, but it would have been annoying to get her head out of the giant glacier that formed in under two seconds. 
Thanks Luffy. Wow super mainly rescue Luffy Kirishima said as he started to shiver from having such a giant iceberg in front of him. I I would h have done the same thing, Mineta said from behind Momo with a slight stutter. S sure you would. Tsayu said, who was taking this iceberg was very unwell. Oh okay it's my turn wish me good luck, Dinky said as he started going to his waiting room. Not that I needed, but luck. Jiru said with a roll of her eyes. Honestly, the guy that annoyed her the most in this class must be Kaminari followed closely by Luffy. The fight wasn't much of a fight. After Ibarra scolded present Mick for saying that she was there to cause harm, she quickly dealt with Kaminari, his electricity proving to be useless against her vines. Bessie needed the luck. Jiru said as she twirled her long earlobes. Wow, that quirk was amazing the number of uses for it, both defensive and offensive is countless. Not to mention the way she used Izuku was stopped from going into another muttering spree by the class rep knocking him to the ground. Ow that hurt so bad, you have no idea. Momo deadpanned at the amount of strength Luffy just put in that punch. Hiding before the tournament is strictly forbidden, Iida said as he waved both of his robotic arms back in front at Izuku and Luffy. You were annoying me. Luffy told Izuku why he punched him as he grabbed the torn notebook that Izuku was writing in. Shiozaki Iber eh? What this? The class gave Luffy a flat look at the fact that he had to spell it out to understand. I it's nothing give it back please. Izuku normally would have no problem sharing his passion, but he needed a couple of seconds to recollect himself. After a couple of seconds of Luffy looking at the notebook and Izuku, a mischievous smile went across his face. No way. W what? Luffy please give it back. Izuku said as he reached for the notebook, but Luffy being taller just put it above his head. No Luffy said. The way Luffy was acting, pretty much told the class that he was just teasing Izuku, not actually bullying him. What's in it? It's nothing, now please give it back, Izuku said as he accidentally pushed Luffy to the ground. Oh no eh are you okay? I think I see a light. Luffy said which managed to scare Izuku half to death, thinking he murdered Luffy, while half the class just rolled their eyes, and the other half were snickering behind their hands. I am going towards it. No Luffy don't go stay with us, Izuku's mind was going too fast from too many things happening all at once to realize this was just a prank. I'm going Luffy held a hand up, blocking the sunlight from his eyes. Tell my crew I love them. No Luffy Izuku was starting to cry crocodile tears. Guys I need help unfortunately, the only thing he got was either eye rolls or full blown laughs. W what? Oh Deku, H he's just messing with you. Your Raka managed to squeak out between her fit of laughs. This caused Izuku to look down at a now laughing Luffy who was rolling on the ground. If he could get redder then he would invent a new shade from the blushing he was doing. Oh oh Midori you never changed dude Kirishima patted him on the back as he laughed. I want to die. Izuku said as he now sank into his seat, hoping that it would somehow swallow him up. Don't say that Midori Iida said thinking he was serious. Unfortunately I am unable to help you, seeing as how my match is the next one up, but never lose hope, Iida tried to comfort Izuku who got a weak good luck for his efforts. Soon after Iida's match began. Calling Iida's fight a fight was a stretch, the better word for it being a 10-minute advertisement using Iida as an actor. May managed to use Iida as a commercial for her support items and make a name for herself in the support companies. After showing off all her items, she stepped out of bounds making Iida the victor of this round. Well, that was something. But it's your turn now Luffy. Momo said as she looked at an angry Iida making his way back. Luffy. Turns out that Luffy was so bred that he managed to fall asleep with a slight snore. Luffy there is free meat, where? Luffy instantly woke up, surprising Izuku who was providing a shoulder for Luffy to sleep on. Mon class rep, it's our fight. Let's just get this over with. Mina said while walking like her pet dog just died. Oh Luffy said, now running to catch up to Mina. I almost forgot. Good luck Mina break a leg Toru said in an attempt to make her best friend excited. It didn't work. Now at the arena, Luffy was cracking his knuckles with a big smile on his face, while Mina looked like she would rather be anywhere else. Okay, so who cares if I lose? I still need to give it my all Mina said in a successful attempt to cheer herself up. Better get ready rep cause I'm gonna win. Good luck with that Luffy said it genuinely which impressed some of the crowd with their sportsmanship. Opponents get ready begin as soon as present Mick said this Luffy extended an arm that was aiming for her face, only managing to miss her by a hair. Wow that was a close one present Mick said as Mina started using her acid to skate on the ground. Okay, I can't go in for the attack, seeing how strong Luffy is and all, so my best bet is probably to make him use ranged attacks until he gets tired. Mina said as she continued to barely dodge dozens of Luffy's punches. Luffy's attacks are quick and direct, but Ishido manages to dodge every single one, she must be in very good shape and really know how to move her body to dodge all of those attacks. Izuku said as he started writing down in his notebook. Oh man, this isn't working. Luffy said as he stopped his punches. 
Oh, I got it. Wah before Mina could even question what Luffy meant by that, she found herself being thrown on Luffy's shoulder like a bag of potatoes. Oh damn it. And Luffy managed to grab Ashido in an impressive display of speed, what will she do now? Present Mick said as Mina started struggling in Luffy's grip. Don't make me use my act Luffy didn't let her finish her sentence as she found herself being thrown out of the ring. Ow, shishishi sorry Luffy apologized even though he didn't sound like it. Does this mean I won? And we have a winner everybody give it up for Luffy present, Mick said as the crowd roared to life with cheers. Everybody was cheering for Luffy, but nobody was really surprised, after seeing what he could do in the obstacle race, it was hard to get surprised. And now on to the next, more exciting match, both coming from the same hero course, Momo Yayoi Rozu vs Fumikage Tokoyami present, Mick said as he was accompanied by cheers from Luffy. Who do you think will win? Mina asked Luffy as they were going back to their seats. I mean, I know who you want to win. But who do you think really will win? Momo for sure Luffy said without missing a beat. She trains super hard, I believe in her, I hope she'll win too. Mina said. Soon after they got to their respective seats, the match started. Though Koyami's quirk is great both offensive and defensive, if I only manage to Sama. No no, this is exactly what Luffy told me not to do, I just have to fight soon after her little monologue in her head, she created a shield and the metal bat. This is as good a weapon as any. All right, begin present Mick said which prompted Tokoyami to use his quirk to attack Momo from a distance. In response, she managed to dodge every single attack. At least those hockey lessons managed to teach me this at least. The yeah, Momo kick his ass woohoo Luffy screamed at the top of his lungs in an attempt to cheer Momo, unfortunately, the only thing it managed to do is make her uncomfortable. Yeah get him the class deadpanned at Luffy's cheers and tried to avoid his constant yelling. Okay, now it's my turn to go in for the hit Momo told herself as she saw Tokoyami start to breathe heavily, why is he getting tired? Meanwhile, with Tokoyami. Damn it, I've never had to use dark shadow so much with such bright lights before. Tokoyami said as he tried to get his breathing under control. True enough, the fireplace is on all four corners, and the fact that it was the middle of the afternoon didn't help his quirk at all. As soon as Momo got into striking range with her bat, she put all the strength into her next attack, only to have Tokoyami dodge it and call his quirk to attack her. Fortunately for her, she managed to use the momentum of the missed strike to hit Tokoyami straight in his ribsage with her hand shield. Unfortunately for her, she wasn't fast enough to dodge the incoming hit from Dark Shadow. Now they were both on the ground, one having a hard time catching his breath while the other. His attacks are like a baby's compared to Luffy, she was genuinely surprised at how much it didn't hurt, is it because she developed a high pain tolerance, or is it because his quirk was that weak? That up Momo Luffy cheered her on. Thinking his cheering worked when she started getting up. That's what I'm talking about, in the crowd. Pretty impressive, to have been hit by such an attack and get up so quickly. She must be used to it. Said someone with green hair and spiky teeth. It's adorable the way her brother cheers her on a girl with a face mask that had smiley faces on it gushed. I wish I had a brother like that, I can't imagine being her though, to have a family member cheer you up like you are a small child, it has to be pretty embarrassing. Someone in a motorcycle helmet said. The crowd was pretty split about how Luffy cheered Momo on. In the arena. This is it I just have to go for the finishing blow, Momo said as she rushed at Tokoyami who was still trying to breathe. Perfect, she fell for my trap. Tokoyami thought as she saw in the corner of his eye running Momo at him. When she was close enough, Tokoyami wanted to use Dark Shadow at full strength to uppercut Momo. As Momo was going straight into his trap, she felt something. Something like pins and needles under her chin, and she could have sworn that in her mind, she saw a glimpse of a layout Dark Shadow punching her. But she didn't know whether it was her imagination or something else. At the last possible second, she moved her head up and took a step backward, managing to just barely dodge his attack. W was that hockey. Though Koyami was staring at her wide-eyed damn, she's more agile than I thought. Let's go Momo I knew you could do it Luffy cheered his friend on at finally developing some sort of basic hockey. Momo was inches away from hitting him with a baseball bat to the face, not enough to give him a concussion, but enough that he'll remember. And as the bat was about to make contact, Tokoyami caught it in his hand, making Momo go wide-eyed this time. Dark Shadow he called. I'm on it, the quirk responded as it hit Momo straight in the gut. Who that must have hurt shall we call the medic? Present Mick commented on the last blow. Aoi Rozu, you surprise me, I thought your quirk and intelligence were your only strengths. Clearly, I was wrong. Azawa thought as he watched Momo leave behind a small flashbang. Ah the light dark shadow whimpered as he grew smaller for about a second. Sadly, that second was all that was needed because the next thing Tokoyami saw was a metal baseball bat before everything went black. Momo Yeoi Rozu, wins midnight declared Momo the winner as she called the standby doctors to check on Tokoyami. 
Ye Momo Yu one Luffy yelled as he dropped from the balcony and ran to her making his other classmates drop their jaws, thankfully he quickly got up with minor scratches on his body from four-story drop. So this must be what Rayleigh felt when he saw Luffy off at Sabati, pride. What? Is he crazy? Oh, that's adorable how is he not dead? And several other comments like these were made among the crowd when they saw the resident straw hat running to Momo, who was having a hard time standing on two feet from the last attack that Dark Shadow delivered. She was now having a harder time not blushing from being thrown into the air multiple times, with Luffy repeatedly saying hip hip hooray. Hey get off, you have to leave for the next contestant's midnight scolded Luffy, who was now scowling and a thankful Momo, thinking that Luffy would put her down. But was surprised when she felt being tossed on Luffy's shoulder for the second time that day. No, not again. Old tight Luffy said as he activated second gear and run to the spot where he fell. Gomu Gomu no. Luffy no take the stairs like a normal person, Momo already regretted her choice of words. Of course, Luffy wasn't a normal person. Jump using Bellamy's technique again, he jumped all the way to their class. Making people go wide-eyed at the impressive jump he just demonstrated. Azuku fell on his back from being startled by seeing Luffy and Momo land perfectly in front of them. Hey, guys did you see it? Momo won Luffy said as he put Momo down, who was having a hard time thinking straight. No way. Jiru said in an exaggerated tone really. Yeah it was awesome, too bad you missed it. Luffy said which just made Jiru angry and the others snicker a bit. Leaving Luffy's antics aside. That was very impressive, I had no idea you could dodge like that. Especially the uppercut that Dark Shadow was about to give you. Luffy said as he continued to write down in his notebook. Ah, it's nothing really. Momo said as she went back to her seat. You should talk to Luffy, he is the one that trained me. So that's what you meant by sparring that time we were at your mansion. Ribbit. Asui said. Yes, without Luffy, I don't think I could have won. Momo said which made Luffy very proud and happy. Aw, oh, you didn't have to say that Luffy said as he patted Momo on the back. And the way Luffy was cheering for you so adorable Mina and Toru cooed, which just made Momo want to sink into her chair from sheer embarrassment. Please don't remind me. Momo could already see the news outlets and the headlines concerning her and Luffy. But did Luffy care? No. The next match was Kirishima vs Tetsutetsu. Yuraka got ready for her match with Izuku and Iida supporting her. Luffy was sleeping. After the first five minutes of back and forth between the two boys, nobody really cared. After the fight ended in a draw, Bakugou and Yuraka were the next to fight. Luffy for his part was also sleeping, despite Jiru trying multiple times to wake him up, nothing worked. He only woke up when a blast big enough to shake the entire arena was used. Uh. What's happening? Luffy asked groggily, still half asleep on Momo's shoulder. Bakugou just hit Yuraka with a massive blast, seems like she's done. Denki responded to his question. Ah, so nothing new. Luffy said as he went back on Momo's shoulder to sleep, snoring with a snot bubble coming out of his nose. Nobody was offended by what Luffy just said since everybody with common sense knew the outcome. The next match was a tiebreaker between Kirishima and Tetsutetsu, Kirishima won and ended it wholesomely with a new friendship. Now it was time for the rollercoaster that is Midoriya vs Todoroki. Hey Luffy. Momo said trying to wake up her friend who was still sleeping. With a sigh, she said the magic words. Meet, meet. Luffy woke up instantly like he was never even asleep. Wow, it's like magic. Observed Asui from her seat. Food really is the only thing on his mind isn't it? Jiru said it more as a fact than a question. That's not true, there is also Momo. Said Mina as she started snickering at the red face Momo was making. Huh? There isn't any food. Luffy said as he now was fully awake. Would you wake me up? I'm sorry Luffy, but a new match is starting. Momo said to Luffy who was sulking at being tricked. And as the class representative, you must be a witness to all matches. Iida said as he robotically waved. Who's fighting now? Luffy asked only to be answered by the fighters themselves as they showed up in the arena. After a couple of broken fingers and multiple ice barrages, Todoroki finally decided to use his left side aka his fireside. Wow, he is on fire I didn't know he could do that. Luffy said as the whole stadium rose a couple of degrees in temperature. Just like Ace and Sabo. Yeah, you didn't know. He said he never uses it in battle. I don't know why. Kirishima said as he looked at Endeavor saying that his creation finally accepted his true self. Something to do with his dad maybe. Toru said a bit uncomfortable at the fact that Todoroki's dad referred to him as a creation. Soon the big explosion happened, debris everywhere, and hot air blasted into everyone's faces. Almost everybody fell down except Luffy who was just dodging the bits of concrete. Wow, awesome Luffy said with stars in his eyes, while well, everybody was shocked at the amount of power shown. Soon after midnight declared Todoroki to be the winner, while Izuku was passed out, outside the ring with broken hands. That was intense. Said Mineta as he tried to recollect himself from almost flying off. Tell me about it. Said Kirishima with a surprised face. 
I didn't know our classmates were capable of that kind of firepower. After about 20 minutes Uraraka, Ida, Momo, Luffy, Mineta and Asui went to check on Izuku in the nurse's office. So should we like knock or something? Asked Mineta as they approached the door. Of course, we will ask permission to be let in. Said Ida confidently. Hey, Greeny said Luffy already bursting through the door and startling everybody inside. Ah uh, what are you guys doing here? Said Izuku more so scared at the fact that All Might was in the room in his deflated form. Luffy you should have knocked first. Momo berated Izuku before turning her attention to Izuku and the skinny blonde man. Oh I'm sorry, are you a friend of Midoriya? Oh, ahem. Yes, I am. Yagi said as he got back into his role as a civilian. Oh hey it's All Night's brother said Luffy which confused the hell out of Recovery Girl and Izuku while everybody was slackjawed. What? All Might has a brother? I can't believe this said the students all at once. Young man I told you to keep it a secret Yagi scolded Luffy. Oh yeah um, sorry guys my mistake it's not All Night's brother I swear Luffy tried to cover up his lie which didn't work. That's just his cousin. Don't cover a lie with another one said Yagi while pinching the bridge of his nose. This is the last thing he wanted to deal with today. Look, please just keep it a secret. I don't want any UG villains to know. Yep, that's who I don't want to know. Toshinori wasn't that much better at lying than Luffy. All right, all right enough time for everybody to go away, I have to prepare him for surgery. Recovery girl said as she threw them out of the room, but her mentioning surgery only made things worse. The next match was Iida vs Shiazaki. Iida won no surprise there. The one after that was Luffy vs Momo. This had the crowd muttering a whole bunch when they came into the arena. Momo, let's have a good fight, Luffy said as he extended his hand to Momo for her to shake. Likewise Momo shook his hand, and with midnight starting the fight they were off. Momo already having some experience from sparring with Luffy, had a pretty basic idea of what she should expect. That is if Gear 1 is considered basic. She went with a shield like in her last battle and a sword. Even though she had no idea of how to use it besides swinging it around and sticking Luffy with a pointy end. See what I did there? She at least knew that blunt attacks are going to have no effect on Luffy so she opted for the sword. As her getting close to Luffy she started swinging it around like there was no tomorrow, and Luffy dodged it with ease every time. Come on Momo, you have no chance of slicing me if you're not faster. Luffy said as he continued to dodge her slices. Sadly, she knew that so she had a distraction prepared. Within a second, Momo managed to prepare a flashbang and threw it right in front of Luffy's face. What Momo didn't account for though, is that Luffy caught the flashbang in his bare hands and crushed it. Ladies and gentlemen, unless my eyes are deceiving me, Luffy just broke her sword in half like it was a toothpick present Mick commented, by turn. Luffy said as he broke Momo's sword in his grip and started punching her. Momo already knew his move sets, so she knew how to dodge them. You're getting better at dodging. Let's see you dodge this. Luffy put some distance between himself and her, and with an inhale of breath. Gomu Gomu no Gatling gun Luffy's hits were too fast and too many for Momo to dodge, so she opted to block them with a shield as big as her, she could definitely feel pins and needles over her body. Unfortunately, Luffy's punches were too strong for the shield to handle, so he punched her to the edge of the ring, shield and all. Wow. I can't believe it, this shield was 5 centimeters of steel and he still broke through. Momo thought as she looked at the front of her useless shield. You're not out. I'm surprised. Luffy said as he appeared right next to Momo. But this is where this ends. Gomu Gomu no Luffy stretched his hand way back, reaching outside of the ring, and then some. Bullet and with some strength, he brought forth his fist, delivering one very powerful close-up hit to Momo's chest, fracturing a few ribs in the process, and throwing her well outside of the ring. With an impressive display of strength, Luffy wins midnight said as she held up Luffy's arm while he was scratching his nose with the other. Call the doctor. She said to her walkie talkie. Chapter 10. Tournament Part 2, Code Names. Momo, oi Momo Luffy started getting louder and louder. Momo, Momo. Can you please stop yelling Momo said as she slowly woke up. For five seconds. Oops, sorry. Luffy said as he looked at her worried. Didn't mean to punch you that hard. It's nothing I haven't endured yet. Momo said as she began looking at the medical room. After her battle with Luffy ended, Midnight called some nurses to carry her to the nurse's office, and after some bickering with a relentless Luffy, they allowed him to come with them. How bad is it? It can't be that bad, when we spared I'm sure I punched you harder. Luffy said as he looked at her bandages. He started poking her. Thou stop that Momo said as she tried to swat Luffy's hand away with her non-damaged one. That's enough I allowed you to come here to keep her moral support, but if you're gonna hurt her, you might as well leave recovery girl said as she used her cane to hit Luffy's shin, although him being rubber, didn't have that great of an effect on him. Sorry Graham so, what's wrong with her? Luffy said as he looked at the screen with a green line beeping up and down. Is she gonna die? Of course not. She has nothing too serious besides a dislocated shoulder and a few small fractures. 
Recovery girl said as she brought Momo her blue gym uniform. She should be able to watch the match, but no more fighting for the next three days. Am I understood, of course. Momo said as she began to put on her clothes. It still amazed her that, even with a bra, Luffy didn't so much as turn pink at the amount of skin she was showing. Anything happened while I was out of it, Boom Boy and Spiky Hair fought. I think Boom Boy won. Luffy said as he began spinning an office chair. So that means, the match after this one is between you and Bakugou. Momo said as she got out of bed. Yeah, I can't wait, Luffy said as he opened the door for her. Recovery girl just shook her head at his enthusiasm. Hopefully, he won't send someone here again. As they were walking through the corridor, Luffy sensed another person. Somebody's here. He informed Momo, and just as they turned a corner, they bumped into Endeavor. Watch where you're going. Endeavor said with hostility. Unfortunately for him, all he got was excitement from one and nothing from the other one. Wow a fire beard, Luffy said as he expanded his legs to be as tall as the flame hero. Do you cut it? How long did it take to grow one? When you drink tea, do you drink it cold and your beard heats it up? Will Sabo grow one? Luffy kept bombarding him with questions. You idiot, this isn't a beard, it's a mask. Endeavor said as he temporarily stopped it and then turned it on. See, so that's why you always had one. Momo said as she put a hand on her chin. I thought it was a side effect of your quirk sir. It's not, now if you'll excuse me. Endeavor said as he began walking away, only for him to stop in his tracks. Straw hat, huh? Luffy said as he looked back at him. What do you want? I saw your fights. Your quirk may be a sad excuse for one Endeavor said, which made Luffy quirk an eyebrow and Momo feel insulted on Luffy's behalf. But I cannot deny what I have seen. Your strength and the way you use it make you a formidable opponent, thanks Firebeard. Luffy said thinking he was done talking. That's why I have a proposition for you. Endeavor said as he now fully turned to them. What kind of proposition? Momo said skeptically. She was happy that she was now with Luffy, if Endeavor tried to somehow use Luffy, then she'll be able to protect him. I want you to bring out my son's fire. Endeavor said which made both of the teenagers confused. His fireside. Didn't he already use it against Greeny? Luffy asked back. Yes I know he used it. Endeavor said while thinking of his talk with Shoto after the match. But I have a feeling he'll keep trying to disobey me and use only his eyes. Disobey? What do you mean by that? Asked Momo intrigued now. It's a long story, one where you do not have to trouble yourself with. Endeavor said as he looked at the straw hat. Are you gonna do it? I'll fight him if that's what you're wondering. Luffy said as he continued walking. If he uses it to win then he uses it. And just like that, they left, leaving Endeavor to his own thoughts. On the class 1 of balcony. Sup guys you feeling okay? Kirishima asked as he was looking at the bandages Momo was supporting. I'm okay, maybe a little hungry. Luffy answered, thinking that question was for him. Kirishima and Momo just stared at Luffy, who was returning to his seat. Nothing serious, I will be fine. Momo answered her question as she also went back to her seat. Woohoo's fighting now? Luffy asked as he stuffed his face with popcorn. They said Mineta as he tried to swat Luffy's hand away from his bag of popcorn. It didn't work. Bead and Todoroki. Said Izuku who was wearing a sling and was more heavily bandaged than Momo. This could be a close one, depending on the timing and Iida's speed. After what was honestly a pretty close fight, Todoroki takes home the cake and freezes Iida. That was a close one Siro said as he watched Todoroki melt Iida's eyes. Poor Aida. Said Izuku as he was barely managing to write in his notebook. Luffy, your next one is with Kachin, isn't it? Boo. Luffy asked as Bakugou began walking to the arena. Oh, you mean boom boy? I'm not worried. I'll make you eat your words, rubber brain Bakugou yelled from inside the corridor. Good luck Luffy. Momo said as she held a thumbs up for her friend. Knock him dead rep Mina cheered Luffy on. She lost, might as well be to the guy who won this festival, plus Luffy was better in her book than Bakugou. In the arena. Are the opponents ready? Midnight asked the boys, one was doing stretches while the other was digging in his nose for treasure. Hell yeah said Bakugou, slight sparkles coming out of his hands. Let's start this match Luffy said, brimming with excitement. Alright then, begin Midnight said as she whipped her whip. Your dead straw hat, Bakugou said as he began flying slightly above the arena, coming fast on Luffy who was just standing there. When he got close enough, he let out a huge blast point blank, kicking up a small dust cloud. And Bakugou opens up with the first attack, how will Luffy respond? Present Mick said as he waited for the dust to clear. Wow, that was strong, Luffy said behind the slightly panting Bakugou, who now looked at him with rage in his eyes. But not fast enough, Amit Bakugou said as he kept blasting Luffy, only for Luffy to dodge him every time. He's toying with me I'll make you use your gears if it's the last thing that I do. Gomu Gomu no Luffy decided it was time for him to throw an attack. Pistol. After Bakugou dodged a simple attack he went straight for Luffy again. He blasted right in his face, but not doing any damage besides, leaving a smokescreen. 
As he went flying around Luffy, he blasted himself into dropkicking Luffy in his side. How die like that, you bastard. Luffy was unfazed, him blocking the attack with hockey under his clothes. This made Bakugou go wide-eyed and just barely miss the backhanded punch that Luffy threw to his jaw. Damn extra quirks let's see if you can dodge this. Oh it's her Bakugou said as he quickly started spinning. Wow it's the move you used before Luffy said as he watched Bakugou spin with stars in his eyes. Oh my looks like Bakugou managed to turn himself into a human missile, isn't that something present Mick commented on Bakugou's move. Impact after enough momentum was created, Bakugou threw a massive explosion which forced some of the audience to close their eyes to avoid the shockwave and debris. Can't see him. Gomu Gomu no Bakugou quickly turns to look upwards, where he sees an unharmed Luffy. Spear Luffy putting his two feet together he quickly extended his feet downwards, similar to a spear. Bakugou manages to dodge the attack and leave behind a crater where Luffy attacked, only to have Luffy appear in front of him and, very quickly, latch onto Bakugou with all of his limbs. What the hell are you doing? Bakugou said as he tried to blast Luffy off him. Sadly, Luffy managed to get a hold of Bakugou's hand, so the only thing he will blast is himself if he ever tries. I'm finishing this, you were good, but you need to train more. Gomu Gomu no Luffy said as he threw his head a bit further back. Bell. Ow that must have hurt present Mick said as he watched Luffy headbutt Bakugou into unconsciousness. It's pretty safe to say he's not getting up after that one, and he's done, can't say I haven't seen that one coming. Kaminari said as he watched Bakugou being taken to the nurse's office. Wow, catch and lost. Izuku said as if he discovered aliens were real. To him Bakugou losing is something unheard of, he was always putting him on a pillar, and now that pillar was starting to crumble. Deep down he knew Luffy would win, he just never thought he would see it. Diego Luffy Mina cheered for Luffy, but mostly for herself being right. Never doubted you Luffy. Momo thought as she watched Luffy come back. This whole thing is just one big showcase for class 1A said Tetsutetsu, matter at the fact that Kirishima lost to Bakugou. That's the rep of class 1A isn't it? Kendo asked with a finger on her chin. Yeah, the captain. As the school has nicknamed him. Said Monomoa from the seat in front of her. That's a strange nickname. Said Kendo. I wonder how he got it, it's not any worse than the big sister. That's for sure. Said Tsuburaba. The guy that can make air solid. This made Kendo lightly punch him on the shoulder. Ow, waiting room NR.2. Oh, hey Firei said Luffy as he entered the room. What are you doing here, waiting? Todoroki said as he kept looking at his left hand, still wondering how Izuku managed to get that out of him. Okay, I'm just here to look for something to eat. Luffy said as he approached a vending machine. Hey, do you know how this thing works? Momo always did it for me. After not receiving an answer, Luffy decided to just force the door open, and he started eating some chips with no remorse. Are you gonna use your fire powers? That doesn't concern you. Todoroki said coldly, not taking his eyes off his hand. Your dad wants you to use it, you know. Luffy said, which managed to get a reaction out of Todoroki. So? Did my father pay you to make me use my fire? Todoroki said a bit angrily, although Luffy didn't notice it. I don't need money. If he gave me food then I might have. Luffy said as he began eating some chocolate bars. I can give you some tips if you want, with your fire side I mean. How would you know anything about that? Todoroki asked Luffy with narrowed eyes. My brothers are fire people, I saw them use it. Luffy said which made Todoroki feel stupid about his question. Of course, Luffy couldn't have been the only person to be experimented on. Todoroki thought with some level of sympathy. Sure, can't hurt I guess. Okay, so what you do is, you make green balls that explode into fire. Luffy said, which made no sense to Todoroki. Firefly fire. Um, thanks. Todoroki thought that this technique may be a little too advanced for him. Do you want to know why I never use my fireside? Todoroki asked Luffy after a couple of minutes in silence, well besides Luffy eating. No, don't care. Luffy said, which made Todoroki a little surprised. I don't care about your story or whatever. I care about the moment, cause that's the only thing that matters. This strangely helped Todoroki. Luffy is right, it doesn't matter what happened before it only matters what happens now. But it's still not easy to just forgive and forget. Thanks Luffy. Todoroki said, which just made the straw hat confused. For what? But before he could respond, they heard a voice over an intercom, saying that the match was about to begin. Well, looks like this is it, yes, may the best fighter win. Todoroki said coldly as he walked out of the waiting room, Luffy not far behind. The arena. Alright ladies and gentlemen it's the moment you've all been waiting for the finale midnight said, excited that this will be over. After Izuku and Todoroki, she needed a day off. This is the fight that decides it all I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. Present Mick said. Anything to add. Both fighters are very talented, one with more experience than the other. Monkey D. Luffy is a force to be reckoned with, his quirk may not look like much, but the strength and the creative way he uses it make him a great fighter. 
Shoto Todoroki is the opposite of Luffy, his quirk is very impressive, but his lack of combat experience is very visible, especially in a match against someone like Luffy. Time will tell who will be the winner. As always sagely added. Wow, so profound it nearly put me to sleep present Mick said before receiving an elbow to the face. Hey what the hell was that about? As the two opponents walked up the stairs both of them thought the same thing I can't wait for this to be over. The level of excitement varied greatly in their minds. Now, I want a nice clean game be sure to pull out all the stops, this is your last chance to be recognized. Midnight said as she began the countdown. 3, 2, 1 begin. The first thing Todoroki did was throw a giant ice glacier at Luffy, hoping it would encapsulate him in ice. It was not as big as Ciro's, but it was more concentrated. After a couple of seconds, Todoroki saw the ice quickly breaking and cracking, and soon Luffy jumped out of a hole he made with a Gatling gun. While Luffy just tunneled out of that iceberg like it was nothing said Ciro as he watched the fight with excitement. Not bad, Gomu Gomu no Bazooka Luffy said as he threw a massive two-handed open palm hit at Todoroki. Unfortunately, the only thing he hit was an ice wall, and with a little bit of observation hockey, he saw Todoroki ice skating around the debris. Impressive quick thinking of Todoroki. Said Izuku as he watched the match with growing curiosity. I'll need to rewatch this fight later on the internet. What do you mean? Asked Uraraka with confusion. He just skated around Luffy, yeah, but he made the ice wall knowing that it would get destroyed, and he used the debris to cover himself. Izuku elaborated, which caught the attention of Momo. It doesn't matter, Luffy still knows where he is at. Momo said as she remembered using a smoke bomb once in a sparring match to try and get the jump on Luffy, a cracked bone taught her that making a smoke screen around Luffy only hurt herself. He always knows, Todoroki just made the situation worse for himself. Todoroki, now behind Luffy, tried to reach and grab him. And, just as Momo predicted, Luffy managed to grab his arm and deliver a quick and painful knee to his tummy, making Todoroki momentarily fall to the ground. Note to self, don't try to catch Luffy off guard. Said Yuraka, which managed to make some of her classmates laugh a little, and Izuku began writing in his notebook. Hey, I got a fire attack of my own wanna see it. Said Luffy as he began activating gear second. He's planning to use the attack he used at the USJ Todoroki thought, as he put all his effort into making a very concentrated ice barrage. Gomu Gomu no Luffy said as he threw back his now blackened hand. This made his classmates and Izawa have a little deja vu. Slowly his arm became engulfed in flames. Red Hawk and Luffy threw a fiery punch forward at the same time as Todoroki's attack. A clash for power began to see whose attack would be stronger, but it didn't last very long, and Todoroki felt a punch hit him square in the ribs, granted this punch was heavily slowed and watered down by the clash, but it still hurt. Amazing I wasn't able to get a good look at it before said Izuku as he watched in admiration. The fire punch. That could be interesting. Thought Endeavor with an impassive expression. Wow what was that? It looked like Luffy had a fire quirk there for a second present Mick asked his co-host. He used a friction in the air to ignite his fist, lighting it on fire. Said Izawa. That literally doesn't make any sense. Said present Mick, thinking Izawa was lying. It doesn't need to make sense, as long as it's effective. Said Izawa, which earned him a touche from present Mick. After a bit more back and forth, Luffy was starting to get bored of just dodging and occasionally hitting Todoroki. Hey, so you gonna use your fireside? Cuz if not, then Ima just ended now. Todoroki, now tired, in quite a bit of pain, and mostly frustrated at not being able to land a hit on Luffy, started to get irritated. Shut up I'm not going to listen to that monster he said as he looked at Endeavor. I'm going to deny him the pleasure of seeing me use my fireside. But, didn't you already use it? said Luffy to a panting Todoroki who was having a hard time thinking clearly. Besides, who cares what he thinks? He's not forcing you to fight right now, is he? Of course he is Todoroki said with hatred. Really? Then why not surrender? Said Luffy which made Todoroki pause and evaluate what he just said. Because I have to win without using his part of my quirk. Todoroki said as he tried to stop his shivering, after that he conjured some of his remaining strength to throw another ice attack. Well, I can tell you this much. Luffy said before delivering one quick blow to Todoroki's stomach, making him fall to his knees. You're not winning anything, without your full power. Woo, this is getting hard to watch. If only Todoroki wasn't limiting himself. Present Mick said. As Luffy got ready to deliver the finishing blow, he suddenly felt the air spike a couple of degrees, he also saw Todoroki's left side become engulfed in flames. Burning the frost from his right side. Wow, is Todoroki really about to use his fireside? Mineta asked, slightly scared at the possibility of another huge explosion occurring. There you go Todoroki. Izuku quietly said, proud that his friend is getting used to that side of him. Yes Shoto I see you have fully embraced yourself and ever said in the crowd. Okay, now we're talking, I'm getting axed, huh? Said Luffy, very confused. I surrender. Todoroki said as he did a 180 and left the arena. 
He didn't even acknowledge the fact that Luffy knew what he was about to do. I need time to think. Um, Monkey D. Luffy wins midnight said as she whipped her whip, declaring Luffy the winner. She was, like everyone else, confused but still tried to maintain her showmanship. Talk about anticlimactic. Said Kirishima with a couple of his other classmates nodding along. I wonder what happened between the two of them. Ask Yuraka just as confused as everyone else. Todoroki, why? Izuku asked himself the question he already knew but didn't want to believe the answer. What's the meaning of this? Asked Endeavor as he followed his son. After 20 minutes, every participant was once again in the arena, will everybody besides the top three contestants. So when will they show up? Asked Asui, and that's exactly when they showed up. They were on three pillars, each one having the numbers one to three. On the NR. Three pillar was a sulking Bakugou. Man, I thought Bakugou would lash out right now. But instead, he is so. Kirishima said as he noticed Bakugou's gaze linger on him. Mild, I'll kill you lashed Bakugou at his friend. There he is Kirishima said, which just made Bakugou angrier. In truth, Bakugou knew the gap between him and Luffy was larger than he liked to admit, so he decided that he'll devote himself even more to training. On the second pillar, there was Todoroki. Nothing really to be said here, he just continued to look with his cold stare of his and occasionally look at his arm. And on the first pillar, there was none other than Luffy, who was enjoying himself way too much right. He was waving his arms around. Well, Luffy seems to be in a good mood. Momo said as she proudly looked at her friend. There was no doubt in her mind that Luffy would win, but she still liked seeing him there and hoped that one day she'll catch up. He did win the sports festival. Kaminari said. And I doubt he knew what was going on half the time, and you knew the whole thing and still lost. That makes it way worse. Said Jiru to a now offended and sulking Kaminari. Alright, time to bring out the hardware said Midnight as she pointed her hand at the edge of the roof. Of course, there is only one person worthy of disturbing the awards. Ahahaha laughed all might in his buffed form as he appeared on the edge of the stadium. After a failed introduction, Midnight pulled out the medals and gave them to All Might, who started handing the medals over. Young Bakugou, you showed the whole world your strength and fire, but be sure not to forget that training and experience are still very important. It's not enough just to have a flashy quirk. All Might said as he put the bronze medal around his head. Whatever. Bakugou sounded pissed, but deep down, those words took seed. Young Todoroki, congratulations. I'm assuming there is a reason why you surrendered, even though it cost you the final. I'm sure whatever problems you may have gotten over or discovered will soon be resolved and you'll try your best at being a hero. All Might said as he hugged Todoroki and gave him the silver medal. He didn't hug Bakugou for the same reason you wouldn't hug a raccoon. And last but definitely not least, young Luffy. Congratulations on first place, you stayed true to your pledge and managed to secure the top spot, bravo. All Might said as he handed him the gold medal and hugged him. Who shiny Luffy said as he looked at the medal. Ow, it is not chocolate, so you cannot eat it all might lightly scolded Luffy who was sulking. But leaving those aside, I am glad that you showed such promising skills, strength, and teamwork. But remember that heroism isn't all about fighting, you must also have a good soul. I'm not sharing my meat with anyone. Luffy said it very matter-of-factly, this got a thumbs up and a quick laugh from all might. Take a good look everyone this is this year's winners, but remember every single one of you could have taken a spot here. If you work hard and devote yourself then I do not doubt that you could take home the gold medal. I think the next generation of heroes is proving to be the most promising one yet All Might said as he pointed to the sky. So I have one more thing to say you know what it is. Great job everyone plus ultra the crowd and All Might said at the same time, this made the crowd very mad at All Might for ruining such a perfect moment. Boy Momo Luffy said as he jumped off the pillar and ran to Momo. Look what I got. That's very nice Luffy. Momo said like she was congratulating her son on a good grade that he's gotten. The paparazzi didn't fail to catch this moment. In their classroom, Azawa told them that the school needed two days to count all the new request forms that they have gotten from hero agencies, so that means that they have two days off. At the mansion. Oh come on I even won if that doesn't deserve a party, then I don't know what does Luffy pleaded with Momo's dad for a new party. The days off were pretty relaxing at the Aoi Rozu residence, well as relaxing as it could be with Luffy let loose. You going away, that deserves a party. Momo's dad said as he was going back to his office. Look I'm happy you won, really I am. But you just had a party, you have to wait more before another one, how long? Luffy said baffled at the fact that there were more rules when it came to partying. Until my headache is gone. Momo's dad said as he shut his office door in Luffy's face. This sucks. Luffy pouted as he went to the living room where Momo was located. Sup Momo. Hey Luffy. Momo greeted without looking away from her phone. She was constantly checking her phone for any news article and or gossip going around about the sports festival especially where her and Luffy were concerned. 
Luffy, did you know that because of your little stunt people are calling us either a couple or family, and honestly, I don't know which is worse. Hey, hey, who cares what some people think? Luffy said as he turned on the TV. We are lucky that we have our own limousine, I probably wouldn't be able to take the train to school. Said Momo exasperated at the fact that Luffy isn't taking her seriously. Oh, and there is something else I wanted to talk to you about, yeah? Luffy asked. I'm pretty sure I felt some hockey during my fight with Tokoyami. Momo said as she put down her phone. I felt pins and needles and some sort of image in my head. Yeah, that's observation hockey. Congrats you've awakened it Luffy said, which made Momo very happy. Now we have to train it so that you learn how to use it for yourself instead of your body using it for you. And just like that Momo's happiness washed away. So, more training? Momo asked. Yeah, way more training. Luffy answered. In class 1A, it's so weird that people recognize us from TV. Said Mina to Ajiro, Kirishima, and Toru. Right now they were waiting for the first bell to start. Everyone wanted to talk to me. Yeah me too Kirishima said eagerly. People on the street were staring at me, it was pretty embarrassing. Toru sounded more happy than embarrassed. Well, I feel like I know how you guys feel. What do you mean? Luffy asked completely oblivious, which made Momo lightly bang her head on the desk. Haven't you guys seen the news articles? They love you Kirishima said while showing them a news article. More precisely they love talking about you too. Asui said from the front. Your guys' statuses switch from relationship to brother and sister on a dime, sometimes, at the same time. Mineta said while imagining something not suitable for children. Morning. Said Azawa as he entered the class. Good morning. Said most of the class. Today we have a harder class on hero informatics. This put the whole class on high alert thinking the worst. You need to pick a code name, today's class will be on your hero identities. After a bit more explaining on what the drafts are, how they work, and all the boring stuff. Azawa pulled a remote and showed on the TV the people with the most drafts. 5572. Is that a lot? Luffy asked as he squinted his eyes at the TV. Holy crap I didn't even know there were this many agencies in Japan, Siro said as he looked at Luffy's number. And believe I got less than the rubber brain and icy hot. Bakugu said as rage filled his body. You have 3852 drafts, what are you complaining about? Kaminari asked only to get a small blast in his face as an answer. Nice one Todoroki with 4302, you are sure to have a great deal of good choices. Izuku cheered his new friend on. I will only choose one. Todoroki said as he thought of his father. Hey, how many did you get Momo? Luffy asked. I got 257, not nearly as much as you. Momo said only to receive a smug laugh in return. After some more boring talk about drafts, they got back on track to choosing their codenames, with Midnight coming in and helping them choose. The hero's name represents what you stand for, take All Might for example. As always said as he handed out little whiteboards and markers for everyone in the class. Oi Momo, do you know the answer? Luffy asked his friend thinking this was somehow one of those pop quizzes. He hated those tests, not that he actually studied for any of them. You just have to write a hero name, something that tells people about you. Momo said and received a quick thank you from Luffy. After everybody came up with a name, they had to present it to everyone in the class. After some good, some bad, and some basic names it was Luffy's turn. So what do you think? Luffy asked excitedly as he showed everybody his hero name and terrible handwriting. Oh try again. Midnight said with a disappointed sigh and expression on her face. Huh? What's wrong with Meat Lover? Luffy asked, genuinely confused. This joke is so stupid it makes me laugh. The fact that you don't know what that symbolized shows that something seriously wrong went on in your childhood. Said Asui bluntly, but it mostly flies over Luffy's head. Look, I love meat as much as the next R-rated heroine. This got a few raised eyebrows from the class. But you need something else, something that everybody will know you by. After some more names and another failed try from Bakugu, Luffy went back in front of the class. Well, it's better than your last one, that's for sure. Kirishima said as he looked at the oddly fitting name. Straw Hat is that the best you can do? Midnight asked wondering if she could come up with a better code name. I dunno, you said a name that everybody used to call me. Back home everybody used to call me this. Luffy said as he pointed at the whiteboard. Um, sure. Until we find you a better one, then that's the one you'll use. Midnight said, which made Luffy's smile grow from ear to ear. Break time. Wait Luffy Momo stopped Luffy in his tracks from going to the cafeteria. We need to choose a hero agency. But what now? Luffy asked as he went back to his backpack to grab one of his lunches. The hero who will teach you for a week. Asui simplified it for him. The hero huh? Luffy said as he went deep in thought, his head slowly becoming red and steam starting to pour out of his ears. Yeah, I got nothing. Well, I for one will be interning with Mount Lady. Mineta said while taking out his phone. Are you thinking perverted thoughts again? Jiru asked as she looked over her list. 
Maybe, I mean how can I not when she looks like this. Mineta said as he picked a random pic of her from the internet. This managed to catch Luffy's eye for a split second. Bim that for a sec. Luffy said as he borrowed Mineta's phone. Wah? Hey give it back Mineta said, more so scared of what Luffy could find. Unfortunately for him, Luffy was barely even paying any attention to him. Momo who is this? Luffy asked Momo as he showed her the pic of Mount Lady. Oh, this is that heroine you fought before the sports festival. Momo answered Luffy's question. Why? Oh nothing, I think I just found who I'm interning with. Luffy said. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.